Hey chat. Having a good day. It's Azzy Pants time. Chat says, Happy Election Day, Finnish people. Very true. Shoutouts to Finland. Suomi. A nation known for <laughs> liking Azzy Pants. I don't know. Fucking know. Um, okay, cool. Uh, okay, I gotta... <laughs> Rosa raids immediately on this. Uh, I gotta tell everyone that the Umris book is back on sale. Yep, okay. Um, if anyone remembers what Umris is, it's the... It's, it's where uh, Umi the Umris girl is from. You know, she's from Umris. The, <laughs> the Umris ending compilation is once again back on sale in physical form. Uh, it was reposted after being taken down a while back. I guess I guess now you know. It, it's, I'm I'm not personally selling it to be clear. It's a it's just a, a non-profit thing that someone on the server did. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm assuming you all know the drill by now. <laughs> Maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe you're just coming in from the string of like fan game streams, and you're like, "Wow, I sure love this." Undertale Deltarune fan game streamer Andrew Cunningham, who streams my favorite fan games all the time, and that's all he does. Uh, well, sorry, that's not all I do. I actually occasionally um, a critical mass of Azzy Pants uh, fan fiction builds up on my Discord server, and I gotta read that. So that's how it works. Um, I'll do a, a sort of a brief intro for any neophytes as to what an Azzy Pant is, just in case I'm missing anyone. Um, basically, it was back during the Delta Traveler streams, I believe, the original ones I did. Um, we were just kind of bantering a bit, talking about, uh, Delta Rune, and I said that it'd be nice, it would be nice to see how, um, Asriel and Pizza Pants interact in Delta Rune once Asriel's back in town, because they're friends and they have a, I think it could be a really funny dynamic. And then Dork swoops in and says something along the lines of Asriel x Pizza Pants, just in chat. Just Dork says that. That was it. It was a slippery slope. I said it was, it, the ship would be called Azzy Pants, and then people started writing lots and lots of fan fiction about it. Uh, and this is now the fourth stream of reading it. And it'll be the last one for a while, I think. The Azzy Pants streams tend to come in pairs, then there's a, I leave a, a long kind of gap. Yeah, so, yeah, nowadays we're, it's festered past the point of just Asriel and Pizza Pants, like, kissing or whatever. It's now, people have, like, personified the concept of Azzy Pants fandom into, like, a Gajinka Fujoshi girl named Lizzie, um, who's on the thumbnail. And, and also there's, there's a similar one of those named Umi, the Umris girl, who, who personifies Umris, and they, and they also kiss now and vomit on each other, apparently. That's a big running theme, I don't know why. I didn't tell anyone to make them vomit on each other, they all just did. So, that's the kind of shit we're dealing with. It's like, weirdo Gajinka Yuri where they puke on each other. Um, and also Azzy Pants, that's, that's what the stream is about. Uh, yeah. Hmm, oh, Toby points out that the Pacific Drive is in a couple weeks. Yeah, I might stream that actually, that was a cool game at PAX. We talked to the devs slightly about that. You're learning about Azzy Pants, yeah. Yeah, oh no, I got the bingo cards, Rosa Raid. We're good. Um, I'll, I'll reveal the what we've got today. So this is a curated list that's made by uh, Pidge, I believe, or the the Azzy Pants thread on my server kind of handles itself at this point. Um, it's very convenient. It has like check boxes and everything. I don't even know you could do that on a Google document, but shows that I know. Um, yeah. So we got these to go through. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish them all today because there's a lot of them and they're kind of long. Um, but I'll do my best, you know. It, uh, I can only go until my voice gives out. Uh, a pidge will not be attending today? That is an F indeed. That's too bad. Pidge is in large part the instigator of this whole Azzy Pants craze. 
Um, about Sunny, I was I was wondering about yours. Um, that was like an Umris thing, wasn't it? Mostly, and you didn't finish it, which is too bad. Hmm. Well, maybe one day, Oats, and I, I'm not sure I'm going to do another one of these, but hopefully not, well, not, <laughs> hopefully not for a little while. That's not what I mean. Probably not for a little while, though. Um, yeah, so we got like a, we're going to be reading this shit. We got this bingo card here. Crucial. Um, the bingo card wasn't really going so well last time, but there's always hope for this time, right? Is that... Uh, I think it, it's not really calibrated for the Umrizi pants fix, which was the problem. It's it's mostly Azzy pants, but... Hey, look. Five bucks in chat from Autumn Wolverton. Thank you. I had a fic I wanted to write for this, but another fic I was writing kind of spiraled out of control, so I didn't have time. Instead, have five monies. Uh, I like that just as well. Uh, thank you, Autumn Wolverton. As it is, we're probably gonna, not going to have time to get through all the fix here anyway, so... Um... Wait, uh, f yeah, frankly, I'm, I'm not too concerned about the fact that we won't be getting even more. Um, okay, someone's telling me to look in the thread because they have a revised version of the fic that I have to look at. Okay. Um, sure. Sure, I'll do that. Um, that's just a picture of Gex the Gecko. That's not a fanfic. Um... Oh, it's a bing new bingo card. Uh, let's try this one. Yeah, good idea. This one looks fancy. And it's also Valentine's themed. Check it out. Uh, perfect. What do we got? OC character, homophobic Toriel, gaster cameo, sloppy kissing, lewd handholding, night mention, chubby pants, they eat pizza, pizza pants envy, chubby pizza pants. <laughs> Wait, are these different? They're like the same thing. Where's my brush gun? Like, what's the difference between chubby pizza pants and chubby pants? <laughs> those are like the same thing. I don't know, man. I guess that's like a free space. Whatever. Too late for revisions now. Wait, there's also a new Mrizzy Pants bingo? The fuck? Okay, god damn it. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll bust that one out when you get to the Mrizzy Pants. How about that? I'll, I'll, I'll save that until we get there. Um, I'd like to start reading a fanfic at some point here before my voice wears out just doing the intro. Okay, pouring more tea. I'm gonna do a tea refill this stream. I'm gonna commit to that because I ran out of tea last time and I was kind of suffering for it. Um, all right, let's just start with the shortest one. Catfishing and Goat Tripping by Panicked and Distressed, a relatively new Discord server member. Only 2,000 words. That's like a snack by the standards of Azzy Pants. So let's go. How late are you? Barely. I haven't started reading anything yet. Wait, it got an update. Where's the update? Uh, this is the problem with linking your fix as PDFs is that they don't automatically update. Okay, I'll look for it. Okay, that's Vow is Made in Cheese. That's another bingo card. That's my profile picture. How far up did you link this? Oh, there it is. Uh, let's do this. Here we are. That's better, right? How do you subconsciously change your tone from sophisticated to sleepy scrunkly every third quarter hour? What do you mean? Are you, are you talking to me? <laughs> That's an insane question to ask on a live stream. Um, I guess it's, it's if it's subconscious, it's probably subconscious is the answer. <laughs> answer the question, Andrew. <laughs> I wasn't going for it. It's a, a, a vocal transition. I might just be sleepy and scrunkly, I don't know. You don't know my life. AO3 formatted PDF. Yeah, were you waiting for like a 
an invite link or something. AO3 has this weird waiting list policy that wants to seem exclusive, so you can go on there and write about, like, you know, licking your OTP's feet or whatever. It's it's kind of strange. Um, sorry for this strangely specific example. It was just, you know, AO3 has a vibe to it. Um, okay, can we zoom in a bit? Boop, boop. That's a good level of zoom. Ooh, I'm as he pantsing out. Oh, yeah. Let's, um, let's read it. Okay, we got tags. You can read the tags if you feel like it. Uh, it doesn't seem like anything horrible. The, uh, the, the fix are safe for work, by the way. They can get a bit lewd, but they're not going to be explicit, so... Okay, um... Do we need a synopsis? No, I'm gonna read it anyway. Uh, notes. Hi, Andrew and chat. Uh, Dand here. Hi, Dand. Uh, the whole thing is just me trying to make Azzy pants, except Azreal is the disaster this time. I also never wrote anything before, so it might suck, and it's all over the place. Uh, excellent. That's the vibe we want for, uh, Azzy pants. Excellent. Okay, chapter one. Not so innocent mistake. Azriel was staring straight ahead. <laughs> More like gay ahead, am I right, chat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I make jokes on stream sometimes. I'm sorry. Okay. Azriel was staring straight ahead, his heart skipping a beat and his mind pulling a complete blank. The calm before the storm, as he could already feel guilt, regret, and anxiety brewing in his guts, ready to burst and drown any sensible thought left in his brain. What had just happened? Triple asterisk. Good joke, streamer. I didn't laugh. Germ of voice. Redacting my dono. Did you even donate, Roy? I can check this, you know. Yeah, you didn't donate. Stop redacting your donations if you haven't donated yet, Roy. <clears throat> it was Friday and neither him nor Des had anything to do. They had already spent days non-stop studying, writing essays and consuming more coffee than any doctor would advise. Despite all this, Azriel was still more than willing to keep going, in hopes of getting a good score or not letting his family, ha his family, heck, his entire community down. It was Des who needed to take the initiative and forcefully drag him away from any books, laptops, or original Starbucks uh, copyright trademark before he'd work himself into an early dust bunny. Uh, I guess that's like an early grave, but, but for monsters, because they dust. That's an Undertale reference. Ow! Azriel cried out as the reindeer pulled his ears to drag him along with her. That, that's kind of cute, actually. T tugging <laughs> it's like a goat thing along by his ears. That, that's kind of a cute image. Good one. Uh, I need a Des voice? What the fuck? I didn't think Des was going to be here. Um, have I ever voiced Des before? I think I have, right? But I don't remember what the fuck I did. I should link the Umris book. Um, I, I guess I, I feel weird about linking something that you can purchase because it's not merch and it's not licensed. It's just a thing that exists that you can pursue if you want to. I don't know. Um, I, I feel kind of strange about linking that. I'm sorry, Rosary. Um, just make deer noises for deaths like... <laughs> Del Des was in Delta Traveler, yeah, but I, f I forget what I did, though. Um, I, I'm gonna have to work into the voices anyway. Uh, I, I kind of do Noel like this. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, I think I just made her May Barovsky, maybe. That, that could have been it. That sounds fine. Stop squirming, Des advised. That'll only make the pain worse. That'll only make the pain worse later. Um, gonna have to remember how to do May's voice too, but hmm. that's how it always goes at the start of the stream. Uh, hmm. Reluctantly, Asriel followed her, attempting to claw at her grip in the process. You need a break, Azzy, she groaned. How much longer are you willing to keep this up? Keep what up? Asriel inquired sheepishly, despite being fully aware of the answer and also being a goat. Death shot him a glare, a mixture of annoyance and worry, before slipping back into her usual way of communication, bold and direct. 
Oh, nothing much. She snarked, sarcasm oozing from her words. Just forcing herself to work all day, every day, without any kind of break whatsoever. Hey, that, that's not true, Asriel revolted. I take breaks every day before I sleep, at least an hour or so. Working on random side projects like indie games does not qualify as a break, December pointed out, an exception of complete, an expression of complete discontent smeared across her face. Um, so, somewhat relatable, I have to admit. And neither does making sprites, oh, trying to get into music production. Oh, that was Guess again, sorry. And neither does making sprites or trying to get into music production. Asriel blushed at that, feeling completely called out. It was true that that it had been quite a while since he did anything fun or relaxing. No video games, no comics, no sitting in the corner and staring at the wall. Doing any of that just didn't feel right to him. I will... You can't be this picky chat. Des is like the Pizza Pants voice. The the original premise of May voice in the Night of the Woods playthrough was just female Pizza Pants. So you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, but, but. Not everything you do has to be productive or achieve some bigger purpose and whatnot. Des explained, cutting off Asriel's train of thought entirely. You're treating life like a checklist of what you need to do, completely disregarding what you want to do. Maybe she was right. Maybe staying up way too late just to have some done something on his agenda wasn't the way to go. Maybe he really should focus on what actually he feels like doing instead. Perhaps you're right, he mumbled shyly. Let's do something like, uh, grabbing something to eat, Des offered quizzically. Thinking about it, Asriel had lived entirely off of coffee, adrenaline, and instant noodles for the past week. Cereal and milk if it was a good day. Taking Des up on the offer might be a good idea. That does sound quite nice, Asriel nodded. Do you have a specific place in mind? I'm dragging you there right now, Des scoffed. You're awfully predictable sometimes. Uh, oh, he stammered, an awkward silence falling between the both of them. The fanfiction streams get a lot of viewers. Uh, yeah, it's doing all right in terms of viewership, I'd say. It's better than a non-Deltarune stream game, but not as much as a, a, a fan game. That's, that's kind of my metric. Um, we've just started, don't worry if you're coming in now. This is the beginning of the first fix still. The night was chilly, a refreshing breeze blowing over the land covered in twilight. Leaves fell from a nearby tree, filling the air with an aura of serenity. It didn't take long for them to arrive at their destination, a barbecue relatively close to campus. While Des kept walking, Asriel, who had at this point managed to free himself from December's grip, stopped. He stared through the window, his fur tainted golden by the glow on the other side. You coming? Des wondered, having turned around to face him. You know, I find this a bit ironic, pondered Asriel, his expression shifting into a sly smile. You told me to only do what I wanted, and that I shouldn't I should let outside factors control my life, then proceeded to take me to a bar, the place for peer pressure and alcoholism. Oh. Des glanced at the building, looked at Azzy and narrowed her eyes. You can probably just not drink anything, right? That won't be much of a challenge. Yeah, that'll work out, hopefully, Azriel agreed meekly as they entered the door. You are allowed to not drink at a bar, you know. It's <laughs> you can order a... Uh, I, I order a cran soda. That's my go-to. Just like cranberry juice and soda water. If I'm if I don't want to drink, it works great. It's not like it's classier than like a Coke, but it's uh, it's soft still, you know. How do I stream against the Super Bowl always? Well, the Super Bowl has a habit of being on Sundays, which is already my stream day, so I blame them honestly. The NFL. I wonder if one day I can meet John Boyce and I can ask him to like change that or something. I'm assuming he has connections. Inside was exactly what one might expect from this kind of establishment. Round tables suited for standing at with a few friends or acquaintances, some cheap yet comfortable furniture such as armchairs and a couch, stained with various condiments like ketchup and mustard, random junk scattered across the walls decoration, most of it some way referencing the USA and finally dim light emitted from many sources, ranging from a television mounted on the wall to fairy lights scattered around wildly. Got that 
Joe's Crab Shack vibe. Anyone been to a Joe's Crab Shack? <laughs> it's, whenever um, my family went to like Disneyland or something in California, we always seem to end up at a Joe's Crab Shack. <laughs> it has that exact ambiance. I'm assuming this is some analog to Grillby's. Or maybe just a, a generic bar, I don't know. Oh, I got a, a cursor on screen. Oops. Just put that over here. Uh, where's the bingo? Oh yeah, I should... Okay. Um, do we have anything on the card yet, though? A Sans cameo. I don't think there's anything here yet. Nothing's happened. Nope, nothing. Um, I can't keep the bingo cart on screen, though, because it'll get sucked underneath the window. Um, Asriel felt somewhat disoriented, though he didn't know whether the main reason was the mumbling of other college students, the almost non-existent lighting, or the stuffy air, possibly originating from the kitchen right behind the counter. Des, noticing Asriel's inherent confusion, firmly placed her hand on his shoulder and shoved him toward the bar, forcing him to take a seat. She sat down right beside him. Are you sure it's okay for us to sit here? Asriel worried. Isn't this space specifically for people who only want to order drinks? I'm sure the staff will tell us if we're not supposed to sit here. Des sighed, pure exhaustion in her voice. Would you please loosen up a little? I can try, Asriel promised, nervously fidgeting with a string barely attached to his clothing. And in case of emergency, I can just... I'm not letting you starve yourself with that bowl of peanuts, Des insisted. And I'll pay the bill. I saved him enough money for my day job anyway. Is Asriel, like, super, uh... <laughs> I, I don't know, like, um... Like, ridiculously sheltered because of the Toriel aura? Is that the idea? Is like... Or is... Does he just not like drinking, or is it a, is this like an American thing where you're not allowed to drink in the first year of college legally? Which is weird to me, because in Canada the drinking age is 19, so... I don't fucking know, maybe he just doesn't want to drink. Gay? Asks Outsin. Yes, but not yet. Um, da, 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 da. Asriel wanted to protest, but quickly dropped the urge. There was nothing to gain from arguing with Des anyway. When she had a goal in mind, she would do pretty much anything to achieve it. That's how persistent, or rather stubborn, she was. Uh, who's talking? Um, the waiters are big the cat. What can I get you? Asriel nearly jumped at that, having been completely oblivious to the bartender standing in front of him, who in turn rose an eyebrow and gave both Des and Asriel a perplexed look. Oh, um, I, I wanted to ask if we could order food, even though we're sitting at the bar. Asriel forced out of his throat. That's fine! You might want to get a drink as well! First one's on the house tonight! Oh my god. First drinks on the house? That, that That's kind of a crazy deal, honestly. Like, that's a hell of a happy hour. I've never, I've never been to a bar where they give you, like, first ones free, like a, like a gateway drug. Oh, um, Asriel turned to face Des. I, I, I'm sure this one drink can't be that bad, right? Dude, this is, um, this is that one chapter of Tales Gets Trolled. It's the exact same vibe. And, and anyone who chat who's read it is going to know exactly what I'm talking about, and the rest are going to be confused, but that's okay. Um, we're, uh... It's, it's Porky Pig and Tom and, uh, what the fuck is his name? Sylvester? They all go to the bar together, and Porky's like, I, 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 I don't drink, guys. And they're like, nah, man, you can be our designated driver. You, you, you can, you don't have to drink. And, they're like, and, and then he comes grudgingly, and then, and then he gets swindled into drinking one beer, and then immediately, instantly after drinking one beer, gets, gets like, seduced, cheats on his wife, his wallet's stolen. <laughs> And he can't drive back. <laughs> it's gonna be that. Porky didn't deserve what happened to him. <laughs> no, man. He had a beer. He was a designated driver and had a beer. That's what you get. He deserved everything. <laughs> I, 
I want to elaborate on what happens later in that scene. You have to experience it yourself. I do not talk about Tails Guts trolled every stream. That was the first time I've mentioned it in a while, I think. <laughs> I'm cracking up thinking about that fucking chapter now. I gotta stop. Okay, <laughs> focus. Maybe Asriel was getting a bit drunk. Perhaps somewhat tipsy. A minuscule amount of ethanol might be in his bloodstream. He was a tiny bit high, too. Apparently the stuff he aired didn't come from the kitchen at all. He got high from... Like, weed stank? This is exactly what Porky the Pig pictured happening when he walked into a bar. He would, he would be just be, like, immediately forced to drink alcohol and get high from, like, sitting in a chair. <laughs> This is ex the exact sc scenario he was picturing. Disco Elysium Tales gets trolled. Courier New Outer Wilds Joseph Anderson. You've identified my type, yes. He's up in gas fumes. <laughs> There's just a gas leak in the restaurant. <laughs> Dessa's movements were slowly becoming sluggish. Azriel had already su started supporting his head's weight on his arm, which was sloppily placed on the counter. Well, at first they had tried to focus on keeping their topics of conversation decently vanilla, opting for college-related small talk, the dialogue had quickly devolved into persistent giggling and never-ending childhood anecdotes. Wait, uh, I just remembered. Let me just... Uh... Without hesitation, Des grabbed Asriel's already unlocked phone and started furiously tapping away at the screen, as if she was trying to beat it into a fine metal dust. Hey, what are you doing? Asriel blurted out, but to no avail. Des began cackling and kicking her hooves. <clears throat> Don't worry, this is going to be the funniest shit you've ever seen. Des cheered, beyond oblivious to Asriel's doubts. She eagerly shoved the phone into Azzy's hands, nearly toppling her drink in the process. Asriel simply stared at the screen, trying to make sense of her enthusiasm. The screen was almost completely grey, with only a thin purple bar at the top and a box containing the word, Hey. Within half a second, Asriel realized what this must be. Oh, oh no. As he slowly raised his head, his eyes met with Dess's crazed stare, the complete opposite of her usual cold expression. Wow, I... He stumbled over his words. This is really one way to say that? But I don't think I'd be good at meeting people like this. Sorry. Dessa's face underwent metamorphosis, her smile drooping, turning her de her depravity into confusion, only for it to double in intensity a moment later, finally culminating in hysterical laughter. Wait, is this a bingo? This are they getting drunk? They get drunk, there we go. It's not even Asriel and Pizza Pants, it's Azzy and Des, but good enough. And there was weed referenced, I think. University trauma? I'm going to count this on two because they've been, you know, as he's uh, working himself to the bone here. So we've already got like a, a burgeoning bingo row for some reason. Huh. This is not- this isn't Azzy X Des. It's- it's gonna turn into some catfishing thing. Well, just watch. Just watch. I can see it from a mile away. Well, also the- it says catfishing in the title, so... It's Super Bowl t today? Well, not according to the 142 people currently watching this live stream. Um... Oh my god, yeah. You really wouldn't be good at meeting people on here. She cackled. I mean, the whole app is infamous for being a cesspool. Incels, alphas, whatever the fucking umris is. You name it. What is this app, by the way? What is she talking about? Wait, isn't that German for outline? The stories about it were so bad, she continued. I just had to download it to see what it was like, and uh... Oh, oh my god. Uh, oh, no, and... Oh, oh my god, Asriel, it's true. It really is that bad, she said, a mixture of terror and thrill creeping its way onto her face. But it's so, so funny. 
It's Umris Grinder. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Umris. There we go. Hello, Andrew in chat. First time catching a fanfic stream. Congratulations. Hi, Molly. Hi. You're sure for the Azzy pants. You can't resist the siren call. We're just getting into it still. After half an hour. Ugh. Nope, just no. This was neither the time to find out nor the question that Des might be a... Uh, to find out nor question that Des might be a masochist. So Asriel just rolled with it. Is it that kind of dating app? Or does he mean something else? Um, I've already started chatting with this guy. You keep going. Des anticipated. Asriel gave in. Um, okay, here goes nothing. She was about to type up a generic pickup line until a, a thought crossed his mind. A somewhat impulsive thought, but one that was utterly hilarious as well. Hi! Is that literally... Did you, Were you referencing that, Molly, or does that just happen to be what you say anyway when you enter chat? <laughs> Asriel's literally you. Azriel felt severe embarrassment for even debating writing this, but the message had already been sent by this point, and the guy had already started writing back. <laughs> Azriel realized in shock and horror, realizing that he would never be able to leave the house again out of pure shame. Lol. Huh, maybe this wasn't going badly after all. Oh, you're so in, buddy, you're so in. He's into you. The rest of the night continued in the same vein as this exchange. Asriel wanted to write something he deemed inappropriate. The guy responded positively or patiently, and Des provided encouragement from the sidelines. Over time, Asriel had gradually come to appreciate talking to this mystery man, da ba ba ba, and being able to let off some of, let go of some of his worries. Although the alcohol shouldn't receive any praise, especially as over time they drank more and more until. Oh, fuck. Asriel groaned, absolutely hungover. Yesterday was a mistake. It most certainly was. He barely remembered anything, then possibly made a fool of himself in public, getting dangerously drunk in a random barbecue. Wait, is that a pun? Is that a- that's- there's no way that's a term people actually- I've never heard of this before. Like a- a bar- it's a bar and grill. Like a- a barbecue? <laughs> is that a real thing? He didn't even know how he got back into his bed. Did Des carry him? Or one of the monsters she started playing beer pong with at one point. They had beer pong in a bar? That That's news to me. That sounds expensive. Where do they even get stuff to set that up in the first place? Does Mystery Man count as a Gaster reference? Nah, my standards aren't that low. Oh, beer pong? You don't you don't have beer pong in wherever you live, Outsin? It's a oh no, expensive. I mean, like at a bar, is you have to keep buying the beer to to play it. It's not like a house party. Honestly, getting hammered at a bar sounds like an expensive hobby, like they charge up the ass compared to a... Well, I don't know. I don't know what the, the economical way to get smashed off your ass is if you're like an alcoholic. I, I, I probably don't want to know, honestly. Yeah, just like just like doing vodka shots at home on, on your couch or something is, is what I'd picture. <laughs> Um, distill your own alcohol from like toilet paper, like Nile Red. Confirmed for not alcoholic. I, I, I basically drink beer for uh, special occasions at this point, and nothing else. Yeah. Special occasions being um. Discord uh, glitch tail watch parties, apparently. Okay. 
Um, none of that really matters now, though, so Asriel decided to check what he'd planned to do today. He reached out to grab his phone, his limbs strained and aching. At least he could take refuge in the fact that he'd never have to feel like this again, since it would take more than one night out to get hooked on drinking. Or smoking, alternately. Was that his, like, first time drinking? He just got absolutely hammered at a bar? I mean, that's kind of my experience, but at a house party, too. It's just really funny the picture going out to a bar for the first time that is getting completely blackout drunk. <laughs> um, he had finally managed to get a hold of his phone and unlocked it, only to be greeted by yesterday's chat. Oh god, he totally repressed that. But he still needed to check what he'd said regardless, just to make sure he didn't dox himself or something. He began from the top, but the further down he scrolled, the more obviously drunk he became. It started out with light-hearted banter, only for everything to decay into obnoxious flirting, with autocorrect trying his damnedest, uh, trying its damned hardest to keep anything logical. The catalyst had presumably been beer pong, and the result was an image simply titled, You thinking that look good? Wink, with an image of a fresh pizza attached. Where did he even get that image from? Did that place have pizza? Or was his stupid hand just aimlessly pressing around his phone gallery, trying to... Blick. What the fuck? What's a blick? Last Christmas chat says, I got blackout drunk, came out as gay, and threatened people to play Outer Wilds and Disco Elysium. With two vodka shots. I hope you're not making that up, because that sounds fucking hilarious. I, I, like, I wish that's what happened when I got drunk after two vodka shots. It sounds way more entertaining than what, what I actually do. You're not making that up. Fucking sick. Blick is German for looking. Yeah, it's 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 the pizza JPEG. I did pick up on that. That like the person who like Pizza Pants says his new girlfriend is actually just like Asriel drunkenly texting him from college. <laughs> you think I look good? Anxious awakening. There he was, lying on bed, completely motionless, yet still panicked enough for his eyes to lose focus, darting between his phone and some arbitrary point of nothing. On the screen, an image was glowing, burning itself into Asriel's retinas. Apparently, the guy he had chatted with had become as bold as Asriel hoped to be, going from vaguely flirtatious remarks to sending full-on pictures of himself. At the beach, shirtless. Damn, risque. Pizza Pants has got his, his nipples out. That should have been the most shocking part of this whole ordeal. It really should have. Nice, good, collected Asriel getting drunk at a barbecue and hitting on some random guy on a risque dating app. Problem was, this wasn't just some guy. It was Ray. That's a, that's a bingo. Hang on. Always have to have... Where is it? Pizza Pants name reveal. Dude, they're gunning for this shit. They're gunning for this middle row here. Crazy. It seems like Asriel's like just, yeah, th there's not like a oops, I'm gay angle. It's he's already like vaguely bisexual, I assume. So. People think, okay, well, there's a theory that this is an onomatopoeia for the grinder notification. Sadly, I don't know what that actually sounds like. But. Yeah, we might get that last square if Pizza Pants is indeed being catfish and think as thinks that Asriel is a woman. Yeah, yeah, you know, we could we could go there. Two bucks from Roy. I'm gonna destroy that guy. Oh, Ray. Ray is opposed to Roy. I got you. I got you, Ray. Thanks for the dono. Um, it was the last week of high school. Asriel was eager to leave for college, mostly because the school year had been quite a mess. This is a flashback. How Umrissian. Well, it still was one, he discovered, when during one class 
uh, when during class, one of his teachers announced one last group project, which had to be completed before the school dance. Great. Asriel was more than ready to throw back his head and let out an annoyed groan, but was- Ugh! That's what he would have sounded like. Uh, but was stopped from doing so, when something, or rather, someone, bumped into his side. After a moment, his shock turned into discomfort as he realized that both Caddy and Braddy were looking at him expectantly. Oh, his sides. That, that wasn't a typo. It's two people. He should have expected this. Both of the girls had taken an interest in him, with Braddy even managing to worm her way into kissing him during a game of Truth or Dare one time. And definitely didn't just bite him behind a, a dumpster in an alley and make him have to go to the hospital. But this year, they had been especially clingy, with them sticking, uh with them either sticking to Asriel like gum or to one of the school tables uh, or engaging in cat versus gator fights. From the look of it, the latter was about to commence. Damn, sister against sister. They want that goat. Yeah, chat gets me. M More Doris in chat gets my pufferfish eating the carrot noise. It's not supposed to be lewd moaning, it's just a pufferfish. Ugh. Ugh. Um, like, you're totally gonna team up with me for our project, right, Asriel? Caddy asked confidently. Like hell, Azzy, we'd go for a copycat like you, Braddy snapped back. Copycat? Caddy gasped. Isn't calling me that kinda right set? Okay, Asriel cheered in d desperate attempt at de-escalation. How about we just calm down and work something out? Catty and Braddy's heads simultaneously perked up at that, both of them prepared to scream at each other. Oz, if we'd ever get along with us. Would you mind giving that guy some space already? Uh, yo, 1069 pounds from JD. That's almost as heavy as half of my ex-dog, who's dead now. Sorry, but that was a weird example. Um, Good night, sweet prince. I had to stop by to give money to Tuber. Oh, thanks, JD. I appreciate that. And also, good night to, uh, I don't know, British people. Mark the racism square in bingo? Was there a racism square? I didn't check. I don't see a racism. You're gonna have to make your own bingo card for that, Outsin. All three of them turned their heads. Uh, oh wait, no, this is an, a new party. I, I, without the dialogue indicators, I can't. I can't. I can't know. Um. All three of them turned their heads, searching for where the voice had come from, only to be met with none other than Ray, also more commonly known as Pizza Pants. Him speaking up like this was strange, since he was never someone Asriel actively took notice of. Sure, he knew he was there, but Ray mostly seemed to. Uh, keep quiet and focus on simply making it through the school day. Pessimistic side remark here and there. Afterwards, he'd go to work at Icy's PIZZA, and rather, a rather depressing little establishment he got his nickname from. Despite all this, he seemed content enough, never causing too much commotion in class. What do you know? Caddy snarked. Azriel is like totally fine with us being her. Yeah, Braddy joined in. So, like, mind your own business and leave Azzy alone. Well, so much for that. Pizza Pants could try as he might, but the girls insisted on staying by Asriel's side, both metaphorically and physically, and he doubted that would stop anytime soon. <laughs> How about you, Azzy? Uh, <coughs> uh, Pizza Pants voice. It's always an adventure. Um, hang on. Big sip of tea. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Azzy, ha, uh, voice, ha, uh, one time uh, I went to Chili's, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, how about you, Azzy? Pizza Pants parroted. Are you really fine with them being around you like that? Um, that's not very good. Uh, how about you, Azzy? Are you really fine with them being around you like that? Uh, uh. I'll work into it. Oh, um, Azriel stammered, directing his attention toward the girls. Y you guys are, are being a bit touchy right now, sorry. 
With that, both Braddy and Caddy backed off a bit from Asriel, who was now able to fully move again and felt a lot better about the situation. So, like, who do you want to team up with, Azzy? Braddy demanded. Uh, right back to it, huh? Uh, yeah, the Pizza Pants voice doesn't really hurt my throat, it's just, like, kind of hard to, to do. It, it's, it's nuanced. Asriel took some time to reconsider his options. Pizza Pants was right in the corner of his eye, but he had already helped him enough, so that was out of the question. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Just disqualifies himself. Not to mention how he might have already had a partner. Branny had already kissed Asriel once, which was beyond awkward, and Caddy lost fur everywhere she went. This was a tough decision to make. I would guess I'd go with Caddy, Asriel decided, Braddy throwing him a glare. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have, like, so much fun together. Caddy shouted excitedly, nearly tackling Asriel in the process. He looked over at Braddy, who was standing to the side. Well, don't worry, Azzy, she proclaimed, sounding a bit too bubbly. We can always hang out some other time. Azriel simply nodded at that, already debating how he could thank Pizza Pants for getting him out of this later. Uh, I can think of uh, a couple ways, Azzy. <laughs> I need to actually smoke 30 packs to get the Pizza Pants voice to be authentic, you're right, but I don't have any packs. <sighs> the week had gone by way quicker than Asriel had anticipated, with even the group project not being too much of a slog to get through. Caddy was acting more considerately than Braddy had been previously, even though he'd still coaxed her way into getting Asriel to take her to the school dance. Oh god, this is going to end terribly, Asriel groaned, letting himself sink into the car's back seat. No, it's going to be fine, Asriel, Toriel reassured. Despite the school being within walking distance, she decided to drive her family there, since getting there with everyone clean and dry would be too much of a hassle. They would also be a lot faster, since Asriel couldn't pace around wildly, fully stressed out. That, that's very in character for Toriel. Now you don't get it, Catty is... I am aware she is a very unique girl, but I believe you can put your differences aside for now, Toriel interjected. Oh god, I hope Bratty doesn't... Asriel? It's, I haven't had to alternate between Toriel voice and Asriel voice before, it's kind of hard actually. At this point, Toriel had a stern look on her face, likely tired of her son's unusual antics. Everything will just be fine. Will be just fine. But just fine, she repeated for emphasis. Yeah, Toriel just hates the environment. She never misses a chance to, like, fart hydrocarbons into the atmosphere. <laughs> it's like the the Wonder Bread deforestation deviantart guy. Um, if, if you don't know what that means, I'm not explaining it. It's just a string of words. As much as Asriel wanted to go on and on about things that could escalate into something truly horrendous, his mother was still right. There was already enough bad things in life to begin with, so there was truly no reason to dwell on the dance. Especially because this was simply a problem of the future. Is Chris in the car, by the way? Oh, they just parked, so parked outside the school. Time to go, Toriel said gleefully, turning off the engine. Asriel dragged himself out of the car, with Chris additionally pushing him as well. He flung for forward, losing his balance for a moment, barely not face-planting onto the grass and staining his suit immediately. Toriel's the number one producer of methane in hometown. <laughs> Don't ask. Okay, no time for skulking or panicking. He had to brace himself to make sure he couldn't mess anything up. With a sharp inhale, his body grew tense, no longer chugging along groggily. There was already a long list of conversation topics at the back of his mind, ranging from possible college courses to family matters. Fully focused, he passed through the school's front door. It was it weighed heavily on him that one time a week ago where Chris Axe nearly came close to stabbing him to death with a jello knife in the closet. Um, as the family entered the gym, a typical place for bigger school events such as this one, Caddy practically lunged at Asriel. Oh my god, you finally showed up, she screeched as Asriel wished she could cover his ears. Come on, people are already dancing. Well, um, bye, Mom, Asriel yelped as he was dragged to the dance floor. Remember to try to have fun, Toriel reminded before her attention was drawn to Chris. 
there's no way that Toriel will be hands off here. Toriel's gonna be like stalking them with like a wooden spoon in case Caddy tries to make a move. What did you miss? Uh, we're in a. I uh, said uh, Adzriel uh, got drunk and uh, Des accidentally caused him to like start flirting with pizza pants on an anon anonymous dating app. Uh, and now we're in a flashback to high school. Oh, Chris is on stalking duty. That's fine. Oh, and Chris, she sighed. Please do not attempt to scare Noelle tonight, all right? I heard she joined her sister for the festivities. With that, Toriel went over to a table dedicated to teachers, leaving Chris on their own. Before long, they entered Noelle, uh, they encountered Noelle and her sister, Des, who was busy trying to convince her to do something. Come on, Noelle, I know you're amazing at. She stopped in her tracks as she noticed Chris standing in the middle of the room, oblivious to any attention she might, uh, they might draw to themselves. Oh, hi, Chris, Des greeted. I didn't know you were coming to the dance. She turned to face Noel. See, this is great. Now Chris can watch you. N no, I'm, I'm fine, really, Noel stammered, blushing heavily. I, I, I don't feel like dancing anyway. But you took lessons and everything, Des reminded. You have to come out of that shell of yours eventually. Chris, back me up here. Eh, Noel squeaked. Hey, d don't drag Chris into this. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's a second proceed. Yeah. Toriel sits in a conveniently placed bush on the dance floor watching Azriel through binoculars. <laughs> I mean, she's a she's part of the uh like the um the the staff at the school, right? She could probably arrange for that to happen. People would be too afraid to question it. Yeah, the background music is Cafe de Toho. It gets the stream demonetized, but I don't monetize the stream anyway, so it's a moot point. Um, where was I? Chris, you wouldn't... Uh Chris, you wouldn't judge Noelle, even if her dancing was mediocre, right? Des asked. There's like a dozen other awkward people anyway, so... Des drifted off, with her only silently staring at something in the distance a while later. Chris turned to face whatever it was, only to be met, only to be met with a horrifying display. <laughs> Caddy was swinging around her body erratically, possibly obliterating anything that stood in her path, as most of the students and other guests seems to distance themselves from her. The only exception was Asriel, who was awkwardly shuffling beside her, which didn't quite classify as dancing, but barely made it into the moving body rhythmically to music category. Caddy appeared to have taken issue with that, encouraging Asriel to keep going, before walking over to a table displaying food and drinks. There, she promptly ignored the ladle, opting to carry the entire bowl of fruit punch over to where Asriel was moving, most likely to get him to loosen up a little. Before she could do so, she accidentally slipped over a small white dog sleeping on the ground, which no one had taken notice of before. As Caddy came crashing down, the bowl slipped out of her grip, its contents landing all over Azriel's suit. After a moment of shock, Azriel, um, followed by one of hesitation, he helped Caddy get up, excused himself while brushing strawberries off of his suit, and finally hurried over to the restroom. Damn, it'd be like that. This is gonna be like, um, take the let that sink in route of explaining Asriel's like complex, uh, like childhood traumas, but instead of like a culminating in a bite fetish, it's gonna come into like a, a weird like phobia of alcoholic beverages. It'll all be explained in the end. Yet, <laughs> you're right, Roy. Toby had to, to cut off the straight romance. There, there's <laughs> the vibes in the room were getting too hetero, so we intervened. Um, just as expected, Asriel stood in front of the restroom mirror, his eyes fixated on the soggy stain on his suit. He desperately clawed at it, trying to wash it away, but to no avail. The cold water and cheap pink soap simply wasn't enough to clean it properly. After a while, he stopped rubbing the stain, instead looking for a way to get his clothes to dry at the very least. He hastily looked around the room, only to be met with absolutely no good options. Uh, paper towels were sparse. 
I'm, I'm trying to picture some bullshit in like a in like a weird anime where he'd, he'd devise some MacGyver scheme to like strip his clothes off and like put them over a heating vent and then like hide on the a ceiling vent or some shit and then he'd be like discovered there and it would get really awkward and it would escalate past the point of all reason. Um, probably not going to happen but I can picture it. If it's just a suit jacket, take it off. It, it sounded like a whole bowl of punch. I think it's the whole suit. Asriel's venting, yeah. Uh, paper towels were sparse. Why provide the students with resources anyways? He didn't want or need to know where the toilet paper had been. And just like towels, it would barely absorb any fluid. I think the toilet paper, the idea is that it, it's been in a roll and a dispenser until you use it, but okay. Um, he quickly shuddered at the thought of scenarios where it would have to do so. Um, wasn't that a gag on like a fucking ancient diary of a wimpy kid book? I, I just remembered that from like my memory vaults. It's like Greg Heffley hides in a, a locker room and wraps himself in toilet paper to stave off hypothermia. <laughs> I'm picturing some shit like that. Using heat to remove any liquid would be a lot more bothersome. Come on, pull out fire magic, Azzy. Just randomly canonize fire magic and delta rune. Not that that mattered, though, since the dryers did nothing but dispense bacteria in the first place, and the radiator could realistically light his suit. Is Azriel like a germaphobe as well? We're, we're building an interesting mental profile. The radiator could realistically light his suit, and by extension, the entire building on fire. Damn, Asriel, it sounds like you don't want solutions. You just want problems. I don't know how to help you. The night was already so bad, no need to make it worse. Eventually, he settled for sighing and releasing his clothes from his grasp, then letting them pla plaster themselves all over his fur. He was almost instantly filled with the uncomfortable sensation of them sticking to it, likely from being completely waterlogged, which led to his sigh growing into a loud groan of annoyance. Oh, oh. That's what he sounds like. He was just about to let himself fall against the wall, with his forehead hitting it gently when he heard a voice behind him. It's okay, Azriel. Just pretend you're at like an ICP concert, where they, they spray the audience with Fago and everyone's just sticky for like three days straight of like a, a festival in the middle of the desert. You just go to bed covered in like a, a litter of dried soda and wake up also covered in dried soda. And then that gets covered in dirt and sweat and then you get another litter of soda on top that seals it in. Um, so I've heard. I've never been to an Insane Cloud Posse concert. Yeah, that's a... Behind the one locked door in the hometown school, we have the gym, the cafeteria, bathroom, the auditorium. <laughs> There's a lot. Uh, it's Pizza Pants, right? You doing okay over there? You are. <clears throat> Maybe lean into the the Brooklyn vibe. Ah, so Azzy, that so that uh, uh, well, one time Azzy, I was at Chili's and uh, I got every drink on the menu. <clears throat> you uh, doing okay over there? Azrael spun around in shock, only to see Ray standing right behind him, seemingly having observed him struggle for a while. Oh, um, hi. Azrael drifted off, his face turning red with shame. She had no idea whether to call him Ray Pizza Pants or an unknown third thing. <laughs> You. That was the only thing he could think of, and coincidentally, also the worst response by far. What did he ask? Oh, you doing okay? I, I thought maybe he asked, can I, can I do anything to help? And this would have been a very leading response, but, um, anyway. You? Ray pondered, raising an eyebrow in confusion. I, I... Asriel felt caught, looking away from Ray's face and blushing slightly. I don't really know what name to call you, he admitted. I mean, your actual name is Ray, I know that much, but people just call you, a uh... Pizza Pants. He cut him off, his face tense. Y yeah, Asriel confirmed. But I don't know if you're fine with it. I mean, I, I don't want to assume, but when other people use it, it sounds a bit demeaning. Sure, but you weren't trying to be an ass or anything about it. I'm fine with it. Pizza Pants reassured. It's not your fault some people are jerks, Azzy. Azriel felt a wave of relief washing over him before he noticed what he had just been called. Damn. Yeah, that was quick. He turned to face Pizza Pants, who was wearing an extremely smug expression. 
Asriel felt himself heat up a bit, but didn't mind his, this nickname too much. You weren't kidding about Azzy being the, uh, the disaster in this version. The pizza pants seems downright suave in comparison. The background music is in 11.8? Currently it's it's just 4.4 I think. Maybe the previous song? I didn't notice. Uh, talking about jokes, Pizza Pants continued. Kenny doesn't seem like she's giving you a break anytime soon, huh? Asriel felt the smile drop a bit at that. Had he really seemed so helpless near Caddy that Pizza Pants felt the need to intervene? Uh, uh, there's no need to worry about her. He forcefully, he forced out shyly. She's a bit much, but she isn't out, out, outright malicious or anything. Pizza Pants let out a sigh and rested a hand on Azzy's shoulder. Damn, he's really moving in. He's encroaching. Listen, if she does anything weird, just talk to me, okay? He offered, sympathy and sincerity clear in his voice. Azriel carefully removed Pizza Pants's hand and flashed him a reassuring smile. I'll be fine on my own, but thanks regardless. Yep, Azzy's British, always has been. It started as a request in one of the, the first Azzy Pants stream, I think. Um, that I I do like a... I think Bakura or something? Yu-Gi-Oh guy. Um, and it just sort of stuck. Uh, yeah, anyway. With that, he left the restroom, intending to return to Caddy on the dance floor. She had apparently been waiting for him as well, nearly tackling him to the ground upon seeing him return. There you are! Now let's get back! I'm excited! At last, they were back on the dance floor. Everything was going exactly as it did before. Caddy shook her body hard enough to lose fur everywhere, and Asriel was awkwardly standing beside her, barely even moving at all. <laughs> that was until a specific song came on. Asriel's eyes widened as he heard the first few notes of it. Bada ba 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 no. Oh, oh no. Filled with nothing but sheer terror, he nudged his head over in Caddy's direction. He'd stop completely, her eyes unblinking, as if in some state of disbelief. Ba 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 da ba da ba ba. <laughs> Sorry. I have a uh, brain rot. He saw himself slowly reach over to, sh to her, unsure whether he was really moving. Before he could evade, Caddy sunk her claws deep into his arm. He tried not to wince in pain, clenching his teeth together. Oh my god, Caddy murmured, barely containing her excitement. I love this song! She exploded, spinning around, nearly jerking Asriel to the ground. S sorry she blurted out, blurted out a half-hearted apology before stepping further away from him. What is the song, dude? What is it? Does this mean Chris is also British accent, or are they immune? Um, let's say canonically that they were um, adopted by the Dreamers after the uh, they'd already developed their own accent, so they, they don't have to be British. Hmm. It's a song that has a gaster quote. <laughs> <clears throat> Asriel watched carefully, body stiff and mind overtaken by anticipation and dread. Caddy seemed to be getting into a position of sorts. Was she about to perform her own choreography? Hopefully it wasn't of any sort of romantic nature. That would cause the fireballs to start. Well, he would be flattered, he wasn't really interested in her in that regard and didn't expect her to accept the rejection easily. What is the song, though? Is it just like, <laughs> Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen? Like, what is it? Let's go with a uh, wet ass pussy, just just as a placeholder. His look of curiosity, however, was quickly turned into one of sheer horror when she began dancing. Her dance style involved a lot of hip movement. That was the best way to put it, without getting overly graphic. That is, she twerking. I've played Lethal Company. She twerking on him. It's, uh, Bustin' Make Me Feel Good by, uh, Lemon Demon, or whatever it is. <laughs> mm. 
Witcher Dance most definitely, certainly was, no doubt about it. Toriel's Naruto running toward toward them right now. Toriel is, like, en route. Eventually, Azrael managed to pull his eyes away from the heroine display, focusing behind it instead. In the distance, his mother stood, expression fully unreadable, stuck somewhere between shame, sympathy, confusion, shock, and finally apathy. <laughs> She's just T-posing on him. Azrael is, like, completely horrified by the sight. Lemon demon when lime angel enters the function, yeah. Wait, do Azrael in a super thick British accent? You mean like some cockney shit? What does he even say? There's no Azrael lines on, on the page right now. He sheepishly raised his hand and waved to her, giving her a look which communicated something between I told you so and everything's perfectly fine and under control. He proceeded to do so absentmindedly, ignoring the stares uh, of judgment and general discontent. Hey, the eyes of judgment. <laughs> Remember that? Death's about to snap and commit a murder and Noel keeping Chris from taking several unneeded pictures of the whole ordeal unsuccessfully. Who's Desk going to murder? Just someone unrelated to this, I hope. Just kind of wants to kill someone passively. I can respect that. In this state, Asriel almost didn't notice Pizza Pants approaching Caddy and him. Nice moves you got there. Pizza Pants grinned at Caddy, holding back any possible sarcasm. Yeah, I know, right? Caddy mused. I've spent so long thinking of them. Asriel felt a bit guilty hearing that. Had Caddy really been that excited for tonight, going out of her way to invent a bunch of dance practices, only to make an embarrassment of herself publicly? Joke's on you, Asriel. Everyone in the room except you thinks it's really hot. Well, uh, Toriel accepted, but, you know. Pizza Pants, however, didn't dwell on that possibility for long. Swiftly moving on. Too bad Betty seems to be taking your spotlight, huh? He uttered, a somewhat sadistic smile creeping its way on his face. <laughs> Brad, he's included, though, yeah. Yeah, P Pizza Pants be downright Machiavellian in this this canon. This is an AU. Caddy came to a halt almost immediately, still in an odd pose that had been part of her dance. From there, she nearly mechanically angled her body so she could stare Pizza Pants directly in the eye. After a second or so of glittering emptily, she spoke. What? There was no exp implication of emotion in her voice. It sounded cold and empty. And yet Asriel felt that there was something very, very wrong at this moment. Pizza Pants only gestured behind Caddy, who luckily turned around to face whoever, it, whatever it was normally, instead of somehow rotating her head 180 degrees. That would have been impressive, I gotta say. Um... There she was, bratty, moving in a manner eerily similar to Caddy's dance. Well, similar, allegedly, since both girls' dancing consisted mostly of panicked, chaotic twirls and hip movements. The ambiguity of the situation wasn't enough to stop Caddy, though. Wait, I'd almost forgotten. Isn't isn't bratty and Caddy's a bit in Deltarune that, like, they don't really even know each other? Or they're not friends and they just, like accidentally um like run into each other constantly and and rip off each other's style i actually forgot about that like they're copycats what the fuck is a beige mom why is chat talking about a beige mom oriel's white i believe Ch chromatically like wh what does that term mean Um. Hmm. Before long, she had run over to Braddy, complaining to her aggressively. Braddy responded with pure resentment, causing Caddy to lash out even further. Oddly enough, being stuck in their own bubble of toxicity made them less of a distraction, with most attendees swiftly returning to their own business. Huh, Asriel exclaimed. That went better than expected. 
You think they'll be fine over there? Pizza Pants sighed in apathy. Man, I think they'll be busy for a while. I don't really know what their deal is, but mostly they seem okay with screaming at each other. Ezreal felt himself calm down a bit, though heat was still rising in his cheeks out of embarrassment. He was fully ready to obsess over this for the rest of the night, but something that Pizza Pants apparently took issue with. You still feel like dancing a bit? Eh, Asriel left, let out in exhaustion. None of these songs really catch my appeal, really. I've had already had enough stress tonight, so no need for any more hectic music on top of that. As if on cue, new music came on. It was slower, more jazzy, and overall felt the atmosphere of the room way better. To Asriel's irritation, it was a song he knew too well. Did did Chris manage to bribe the school into playing More Dangerous Guys from Mother 3? Wait, what? I gotta look this shit up. I've played Mother 3, but I, I don't know the soundtrack, uh, the songs by name. Oh, yeah. This is a bop. Let's have this for a while. Pizza Pants shrugged. I don't know, Azzy. Beats me. At this point, he should just accept it. Whether it was a gift from the angel or Chris's way of apologizing for taking pictures earlier, he was glad it happened. It was a reason to finally have some fun tonight, and an excuse for spending more time with Pizza Pants, who had already begun tilting back and forth to the rhythm of the song. <laughs> Keep in mind, chat, this is the key to Azriel's heart. If you want to get in the mood on the dance floor, you gotta play the Mother 3 soundtrack. <laughs> He'll only dance to songs from games about dead moms. It's great. As he quickly joined in, though his dance style was still reminiscent of awkwardly shuffling along and tapping his paws with the occasional twirl here and there. Not that really mattered though, as he had already been, he'd already been embarrassed enough tonight to not care that much. He was simply going to make out, uh, make what he could out of today. And then it, uh, the scene ends. Tea break. <laughs> Wait, what's that, um... You know that one song from the meme? Uh, how the fuck do I describe this? It's some copy pasta. Uh... What even was the context? Like, the... <laughs> The fucked up sex music from like Reddit or whatever that the guy would always put on to set the mood, but it was just like weird, like noises and shit. <laughs> CBAT? Oh, is that the one? I'll play it briefly in case the copyright's an issue. Let me look that up. Oh, that doesn't sound like it. Oh, here it is. <laughs> it was- they were just dancing to that. It sounds like Lisa music, actually. Holy shit. Yeah, I've never heard the drop. I, I don't want to play too much of that, though, in case it, like, they, uh, run ads on the stream or something. Despite everything, it's still you, uh, despite everything, the night had been pretty nice all around, Azzy and Pizza Pants hanging out, dancing and eating some of the provided food. But over time, the gym had become more stuffy, not to mention incredibly crowded, so Azzy uh, was more than fine with joining Pizza Pants as he went outside to smoke a cigarette. Damn. Picked up the habit in high school, devastating. It was a bit chilly out, although it was nice after being stuck inside for most of the event. A soft breeze caught some of the weaker branches to sway a bit, rustling any leaves attached to them. As he immediately noticed the pickup truck, which belonged to his dad, apparently he'd come to join the occasion as well, with Azzy simply being too caught up in everything to realize. While he felt a bit awkward thinking about how his dad had to deal with his mom on his own, he quickly turned his attention back to Pizza Pants. What is Asgore doing at the school dance? <laughs> is it a just come to like 
try to hang out with Toriel or, or see Chris or something, I guess. He's probably having his own awkward as fuck time in there right now. He's just there, standing on the sideline. He was busy rummaging through his pockets, cigarettes already in hand, uh, most likely trying to find a lighter or matches. His face lit up for a second before triumphantly pulling out said lighter. As he was fidgeting with it, and attempting to create a spark, his eyes shot over to Azzy. You want one? He offered it a politeness. Uh, uh, no thanks, I don't really smoke, Azzy declined, but nice of you to, nice of you to offer. Uh -huh. Pizza Pants guided the now lit cigarette to his mouth before stopping and staring at his hand for a moment, reconsidering what to do next. You wanna sit somewhere? He asked awkwardly. Standing's gotta be a bit annoying, right? Uh, sure. Azri responded briefly. My dad's truck is over there. I'm sure its bed is clean enough. This is the, the way back on like the first Azzy Pants stream. I think we had a a fic where Azzy and, and Pants like were token it up in Asgore's truck. <laughs> That was the thing. Um. He quickly grimaced at his words choice, with Pete the Pants fortunately uh, sparing him from any odd looks. Already having sat down, he patted the spot next to him expectantly. As he sat down near instantly, letting his shoulders drop quite a bit. I, I assume they're on like the, the tailgate or something? This night kind of sucks, huh? Pizza Pants inquired somewhat teasingly. Maybe it had been an invitation to rant as well. To be honest, it's kind of a mixed bag, Asriel sighed. Pizza Pants raised an eyebrow at that. Mixed bag? Yeah, the whole stuff with Catty might be terrible, but I still appreciate spending time with you, Asriel admitted. Really? Pizza Pants wondered. Don't I seem kind of standoffish? No, not at all, actually. It actually seems rather like you're quite rapidly flirting with me or something, trying to escalate our relationship. You're being very suave about it right now. Um, you helped me out two times already and even let me thank you last week. Uh, I think that's quite commendable, as he empathized. Even let me thank you. Interesting word choice. Pizza Pants just shrugged. I mean, was I supposed to just let you get squished to death between Caddy and Braddy? Besides, I was fed up with them constantly being at each other's throats as well. Also, as he continued, I don't think you need to say anything for me to enjoy your company. You being there is enough. That, as he, that's rude as fuck. You're just gonna think you're telling him to shut up. <laughs> you get, that's, that's gotta come off as like, please stop talking. Oof. Apparently my Azrael is an older femboy Stevie. I don't know who Stevie is, but... It's it's definitely uh, British femboy is like a a fair categorization. Oh Stewie, oh Stewie <laughs> from Family Guy. How does Stewie talk? It's like this, right? Stewie kind of talks like this. Um, I, I've never never actually watched Family Guy, but I I vaguely know how Stewie talks. Something like that. Um, that last line seemed a bit too sappy, since Pizza Pants did nothing except stare at the night sky in a simple a realization exiting his lips. Asriel elected to join in stargazing, letting his back drop onto the cold metal covered in dirt. His suit was already ruined anyway, why I care about something so trivial right now? They've already got, like, hella chemistry, I gotta say. Like, I, I think Pants is like premeditated this extensively, and also as he seems immediately into it. Uh, it, it seems like a shoe in is what I'm saying. They spent what felt like an eternity looking for constellations in the sky before Asriel chose to break the serene silence. This really is a pretty night now that I think about it. Why do you think that you broke the silence, says he? It's because you told Burger Pants that you you were fine if you didn't talk anymore. That's really funny. Um, Just now? Come on, it's been like this the whole time. I guess, but... But? When we were inside, I I couldn't really see it. That uh, never crossed my mind, sorry. It's fine. 
ellipsis ellipsis uh wait which one is it's uh, uh pizza pizza pants as real you think we should go back now uh i guess so oh my god Asriel snapped out of the calm daze and catapulted his body upward, facing an extraordinarily upset Caddy. Oh, that was Caddy speaking. She looked somewhere between tearing up herself and tearing his face apart. Oh, tearing up. Oh, that's not fair. Making me pronounce, like, tearing and tearing <laughs> in the same sentence. That That's a trap. Someone fill me in on the Azzy Pants fic. Well, it was originally, it's, this is, chapter two went in a completely different direction. Chapter one was like, Des makes Asriel accidentally catfish Pizza Pants on an anonymous dating app. But now chapter two has been a whole flashback about the their uh, apparently budding romance in high school that was, I assume, cut short by something. Him leaving for college or something like, something like that. And I think there's only two chapters, so we're not going to see how it goes back to the uh, the catfishing plot. I get catty, Asriel shrieked out. It, 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 it's almost what it looks like. Oh, well, you shot it. I don't need to have excuses, Caddy protested. But I can't believe this, she gasped. First, Braddy tries to steal my dance moves, and now my date ditched me while I was busy telling her to go screw herself. At this point, Pizza Pants spoke up as well. Hey, would you cut it out? You've been really overbearing tonight. No wonder as he wanted to have some time to himself. Or, uh, yeah, to me, if you know what I mean. All of a sudden, Caddy went pale, her retinas completely still. She stayed frozen for a while, her mouth agape until she carefully spoke again. Her voice was quiet and slow, yet contained a natural amount of shock and venom. Yo. Yeah. Yoto did not just... Asriel's eyes widened at the implications. What? No, of course not. That would be... Yo, that's me here all alone, just so you could be with this douche. Two bucks from Roy. He slash... Sh he slash she slash they were left all alone. <clears throat> is that a reference? I forget, Roy. I forget what the reference is to. Uh, sorry, I got... I spaced out for a sec there. Oh, it's a line from your effect that I fucked up three times. Well, no wonder. It's a fucking tongue twister. I can't even pronounce it in the donation. He slash she slash... She sells seashells on the seashore. He, sh he slash she slash they sell seashores on the seashell shore. You know. Where was I? So Caddy thinks they've been snogging it in the back of Asgore's truck or something. Hey, Pizza Pants called out. I might have not been the nicest to you, sure, but I would never do that with your date or whatever. Honestly, what did I expect? Her voice was now trembling. Of course you'd pull this kind of shit after your weird emo phase, aggressively making out on your dad's truck of all places, you cheap disgusting slu- Wait, young lady, is this Toriel? Young lady. Apparently, Caddy's disappearance hadn't gone unnoticed among the guests, particularly Toriel, who was Naruto running across the parking lot. I mean, who stood behind her, eyes twitching out of sheer frustration. Asgore was also there. <laughs> Although she was more focused on trying to keep Chris calm while Toriel. <laughs> I wish the sentence just ended here. This is me speaking as the author of Election Truckung, but I would have put the period here and started a new paragraph. You know? <laughs> Heterophobic Toriel. <laughs> we have to put like a, a negative pick on the bingo card here. Wait a minute. Uh, where is it? <laughs> there we go. And Sans was also there. Caddy spun around. What do you want? Not my fault your son is a man <laughs> Oh god. 
Caddy, Jesus Christ. Can you tone it down? That is more than enough. Uh, Toriel stopped being British for some reason. She was supposed to be kind of... That is more than enough, Toriel interjected. I am certain my son did none of those things you accused him of. Now please leave him and my family alone. As F, Caddy scoffed. I'll be more than happy to stay here all night if I have to. You're gonna get, like, barbecued, Caddy. Like, Toriel's actually just going to kill you in the parking lot at this rate. She wore a somewhat smug expression, which managed to bleed its way through any pent-up rage and anguish. Well, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> Toriel didn't murder her. She Karen'd her ass. She called the cops. <laughs> That's somehow even more in character. We got Caddy arrested for calling her son names. So fucking funny. Oh yeah, Pizza Pants has already been like implicitly accepted into the family. Oh wait, Caddy did get arrested in the- oh my god, this is canon. I actually forgot. I, I forgot all the details about Caddy lore in Deltarune. Yeah, she got arrested. <laughs> all right. Uh, fair enough. Apparently this is all completely canon compliant. But also Burger Pants was there. I mean, Pizza Pants. Yeah, the only solution to this is if Braddy and Caddy just actually hook up. It you're not you're not wrong that would solve the problem but yeah I, I remember the punch bowl and the inappropriate dancing um I, I forgot about the parking lot uh, arrest though yeah the, the crime she was accused of was a uh, obstruction of azzy pants Thankfully, Undyne arrived relatively quickly that night to take Caddy over to the police station. Asriel's friendship with Pizza Pants also somehow managed to persist further, with them meeting up to talk, hang out a lot before I finally went to college. You know, their friendship. You know, their friendship. But here he was, months later, seemingly having messed up everything. Sure, it might not have been intended, but unknowingly flirting with your friends was still beyond awkward. Tricking them into doing something like that was outright despicable. Y you don't think he's into it, Azzy? I I think I think he'll be okay with it somehow, Azzy. Just just a hunch though. He'd have to fix this. He needed to return to hometown after his exams to talk to Pizza Pants personally and explain that chatting with him was an accident, that he didn't want to betray his trust. So but Pizza Pants at this point still doesn't actually know it's Azzy though, is the thing. I guess he just he would feel bad if he kept it a secret. The viewer count is currently 143, which is not quite 413, but it's close enough. It's still the same fit. Yeah, this one, I thought it was short, but it had a second chapter patched in before the word count was updated, or after it was updated, so it was actually like three times longer than I thought. Oh well, it's fine. Oh, 413 is I love you? Oh, no way! Wait, why though? I... L Wait, what makes it I love you? I don't I don't get it. Oh, it's the letters in each word. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. It's a powerful Valentine's omen. Um, having said that, the stream has lost a viewer, so it's broken now, but, uh, oh well, we'll be fine. Um, ahem, buh, buh, buh. 
Just because he didn't want to didn't mean he didn't feel horrible regardless. Guilty and ashamed, not to mention near paranoid. It didn't help that seeing Pizza Pants again after so long made a feeling well up in his chest, one that he likely didn't reciprocate. Nah, there's no way, Azzy. There's no way that he could reciprocate. Nah, no, no chance. No chance. Don't, don't be silly, Azzy. There's no way that he's into you. Uh, yeah. Before his mind could spiral and turn, uh, feeling this way into some absurd Freudian meaning. <laughs> a Freudian slip. Oh, I'm kind of feeling like I, uh, that Pizza Pants is really hot, uh, but I, that, I don't, don't, I don't mean that in a lewd way. I, I just mean that I'm kind of into him on, like, in, uh, on a sexual level, but not in, like, a Freudian way. He heard a knock on the door. Even though he jumped slightly, he quickly recovered upon hearing Dess's voice through the wood. Are you okay? She asked, sounding slightly worried. You were really out of it yesterday. Um, yeah, sure, I'm fine. He tried to assure. Wait, when does Des go missing in this canon? This this must be like, cause Pizza Pants getting that fucking pizza text. Uh, unless unless Pizza Pants has been gooning over that that text for like a year. Then that implies that Des went missing like a week before Delta Rune started. It, it, that's that's not really a. A big deal to complain about canon compliance. It's just funny. Um, oh, she just doesn't in this canon. Sure. Okay. It's general. <laughs> no, it's explained perfectly. It's uh, Des has been at college for three years, but no one knows, and they think that <laughs> that she's dead. It's the reverse Jaru gambit. Yeah. Where everyone thinks Asriel's at college, but he's actually been dead the whole time, and Asriel, everyone thinks that Des has been dead for years, but she's actually been at college. <laughs> it's just no one knows. It's like a black hole. Once you pass beyond the college event horizon, no information can propagate back to hometown. That ex it explains everything. Wow, okay, that's good. Um... Um, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm fine. He tried to reassure. Well, get ready then. We still need to go to the library, remember? The words got stuck in his throat. Um, yeah, give me some time to get dressed first, all right? Sure. With that, the voice grew silent, and Asriel left, let his head drop back on the pillows, exhaling sharply. This was gonna be a long week. Uh, end of fic for now. Thanks for reading. I hope it was nice. I honestly don't have enough energy to rewrite or expand upon this, but... I think letting it stay open-ended like this is fine. Uh, it was nice. It was some good classic Azzy pant. Uh, DES is an acronym for- uh, DA- It's for DES Ember, uh... Secretly Student. That's the conspiracy, is that she's been at, at college the whole time. The D and E stand for DES Ember. Like in, uh, let that sink in canon. You're liking the current lack of him Rizzy pants? Well, this is still the first, uh, three, or uh, first fic. <laughs> We've barely started. Oh, also, your, your player Carter, I recognize you. I shouted out your thing in, uh, uh, in that post yesterday. You made one of those videos. Um, I'd reckon if people watch player Carter's new Delta Rune video, it's cool. Um, where was I? Okay, we should do a new new one that was catfishing and goat not goat tipping goat tripping which is more like I'm just gonna kind of update this to like that's that's more realistic I think I don't actually know the word count all right what's next death stands for death stranding sucks god -eam. Umrizi pants next? Um, are they tagged as Umrizi pants or not? Not this time, apparently. Study of Umris? This might be an Umrizi pants. It says read later, though. Okay. Um, th this is the only one that looks like, like Umrizi pants. Does anyone know what this fic is? Oh, I can read yours? Okay. Let's read, yeah, VT Holmes's Study of Umris. Um, did we get a bingo, by the way? 
We don't have any repressed gay. No one was- no one seemed repressed. So, no bingo, unfortunately. Uh... Asgore divorce, not really, not really, not really, uh, so close, so close, but Pizza Pants was, he was, uh, a little bit too flaming, I think, the count here. Well, not, not really, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> uh, okay. Let us begin. This is a proper AO3 upload. Oh, we need a Mrizzy Pants bingo. You're you're right. Yeah, okay. Hang on. Um, I guess I'll get a second MS Paint window for this. Can I do that? I hope none of these are going to dox me or something. Uh, Rich Evans kills himself. What the fuck is that picture? Huh. Best not to think about it. Can I, how do I make a new window of this Windows Explorer? Just let me make a new MS Paint window. There we go. You want me to open Rich Evans Kills Himself? Okay, I'll, I'll make sure it's safe for work first. Wait, it's like... <laughs> it, it's not opening. What? PNG not found. I guess it doesn't exist. Oh well. What do you mean Gaster gets milk? That wasn't one, was it? It's Gaster gets milk, not milked. Just milk. He's buying milk, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, this, for some reason, the Umrizi Pants bingo is like uh, 100 pixels wide, but we'll, we'll deal with it. We can cope. Uh, yeah, so this looks auspicious, doesn't it? It, it looks great. Um... But... Wait, no, I need a brush. Big big mode, smaller, smaller mode. That's good. All right. Puke is the free space, as it should be. Okay. Pouring tea, and then we can get into this. <clears throat> Notes. Real people who make an appearance had given explicit permission to be featured as cameos. Also showed it to AO3 user Bookkeep, who made the Discord work skin, so I didn't have to reverse engineer it myself. We got, like, pester logs on Discord, that's gonna be great. Uh, see the end of the work for more notes. This is where Courier New links you to a, a topical but otherwise unrelated uh, song that you haven't heard before, and it's really, really nice. Like, uh, Paradiso from Wolf's Rain OST, love that one. Um, anyway. Okay, what is... What's going on? What is this? Read the tags? Uh, Deltarune, Umris, Umris Girl, that's Umrizi Pants, Pizza, or Azzy Pants, um, Rivals to Lovers Discord chat logs, Swearing, Implied Domestic Violence, alright, great, that sounds cool, um, let's go. Oh, I think I, I remember what Rich Evan kills himself that PNG was. I was trying to find this, that part from one of their Christmas, like the Red Letter Media Christmas specials, where it just cuts to Rich Evan trying to, like, choke himself to death with a candy cane. Um, I, I really wanted that that image as, like, a reaction for some reason, but I guess it, I, I never found it, maybe. Uh, who's talking here? You are so cute. I think what you mean is mysterious and dangerous. Nah, I definitely mean cute. Asriel blushed and looked up at Pizza Pants, whose lap he was resting his head on. A smile 
A small smile appeared on the cat boy's face, and his brown eyes were sparkling in sunlight. So this is like a meta fanfiction, another layer deep. I get it. Lizzie could feel someone staring, intently judging the words on her screen. She hastily pushed the screen down, leaving the laptop ajar as she swung around to get a good look at who was snooping at her writing. I'll reiterate once again, by the way, that Lizzie is the Lizzie the Azzy Pants Fujoshi is is a, a personification of the Azzy Pants fandom itself. She's a gajinka that that my Discord server made up. So th this is like advanced Azzy Pants meta now, right? And uh, and they, and they ship her with the manifestation of Umris, who is Umris girl, Umi the Umris girl. So. Um, if if you're wondering who these original characters are, that's it. <laughs> Jill, Lizzie's kind of just pitch a little bit. That's fine. Um, yeah, I, I came up with voices for these two, I remember. I, I can't for the life of me remember what the voices were like. Wasn't, uh, Lizzie was just kind of manic, right? Stop staring! Or, um... Stop staring! OMG, bestie! And, and then, and then, enemies to lovers, coded car! OMG! Yowie! I love Yowie! This is toxic, Yuri! Uh, something like that? Yeah, something like that. Right, and Umi was like a, a, a slightly higher pitched birdly, but not as high pitched as as uh, Martlet from Undertale Yellow. Uh, okay, that's about right. Stop staring, she demanded. The girl's stare, blocked only by her glasses that were surely responsible for making her eyes, or, or making sure her eyes wouldn't melt what she was looking at, redirected itself from Lizzie's laptop toward Lizzie herself. Her expression was blank and partially obstructed by her chin length hair. And Lizzie couldn't help but think that she looked kind of snobby. Is it the waste of your disk space? She responded, her voice direct, plain and harsh. Both one sentence paragraphs, sickly sweet fluff won't entertain anyone. Lizzie rolled her eyes, now on full offensive. And when do you know? Have you considered that Azzy and Pants deserve a cute little moment in the pe a park under the trees? Frankly, this sucks. Besides, I only just started. This is for Valentine's Day stream, isn't it? You'll want something with a stronger punch than whatever this is. Lizzie stopped in her tracks. Could it be that the girl was another ACDS member <laughs> she was meeting in the wild? As much as University Library counted as in the wild it is. Oh god, it's one of these. I, I forget how meta the, the Umrizi fence fix get. Like, they're really degenerate. Like, in a... In a non-judgmental sense, but like, this is a degen as fuck. Excellent. That's for Bingo? What's the the bingo looking at? Um, overly detailed description of fucked up kissing. That that's a good one. Well, by the way, I should ask. It, the stream doesn't look crusty, does it? Because the last stream I fucked up the um, the OBS scaling filter and it looked pixelated and weird. But I think I fixed it. It should be smooth and not pixely. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, Lizzie talks about Yaoi death. Umi simps for Birdly. Andrew is canon. I think that counts. If they're referencing ACDS. Uh, why is Mel on the bingo card? <laughs> like in chat? Mel, if Mel does something in chat, then this gets ticked off. If Mel says I can fix her. Okay. Uh, good shit. Umi is misogynistic. It's it's a common trend. Um. <clears throat> okay, so they're they're ACDS members meeting in a university library. I assume I'm working the desk. That so. Unprompted, the girl took a seat at the desk Lizzie was writing at, and this gave the fellow Azzy Pantser a moment to take a better look at her. 
She was wearing fairly plain clothes, with a maxi skirt, a jacket, and Crocs. The only thing that was at least somewhat uh, that at least somewhat stood out was her T-shirt, which proudly displayed the Umrus Books cover. <laughs> Imagine getting a T-shirt with like a, a, a handmade uh, novelization of a fan fiction that sold like six copies ever. That's dedication. Ah, she was one of those. There is potential in this scene, the girl continued, not giving Lizzie the chance to speak. But you need to reach into the psyche of those characters. What are they thinking? Which founding father is their favorite? Would they throw up on the outside of a hospital if they learned one of them was infertile? What brand of whiskey would they drink? But simple matters. Do you understand? Of course you don't. Azzy pantsers have only fluffed the brain. No sense of tension or understanding of quiet moments mean. Lizzie's eye twitched. If she was not in full Lolita cord, <laughs> one that she's sewn and assembled mostly by herself, disclaimer for chat, this is just a type of Japanese fashion, it doesn't have to mean that other thing. Um, and if they weren't in a library, she would have beaten the hell out of this asshole. The girl leaned her left hand on the desk, then rested uh, the side of her head on her hand. For a while, she quietly observed Lizzie, who le was left completely speechless and furious by how this Umrus head inserted herself in her little world without invitation. This is awkward as fuck. What level of cringe or excellence has been achieved so far? High right now, Toby. This is really high. This is already toxic Yuri Roserade votes. Okay. Like, immediately. Just like walks up so a rando in a library and starts like shitting on her fan fiction because it's it's not a ship that she likes. That that in itself counts as toxic Yuri. Uh, time for the RAM plug. <laughs> yeah, I got a wishlist RAM, says Toby. Um, then suddenly and bizarrely, as if the girl had no idea what personal boundaries were, she reached over to Lizzie's face and rested her hand on her cheek. Okay, now it's definitely toxic, Yuri. It's a good thing I'm here. Lizzie, Lizzie finally got enough control over herself to swat away the weirdo's hand and stood up. Fuck off, she said, knowing that if she didn't, she would simply have punched her. Library be damned. She fully closed her laptop, grabbed her bag, and rushed out. Wait, what is this shit? Why are there pester logs? So someone- is this some like ARG shit where like you were live posting an ACDS as an alt account to get like uh, candid reactions to your Lizzie roleplay? This is advanced. <laughs> okay, cool. You guys, you wouldn't believe what happened to me just now. What the fuck happened? If it's more bullshit, I'm at my limit, bestie, please. <laughs> Lizzie was still absolutely livid. She was shaking as she typed, deleting sentences over and over again, trying to type something that made sense. How dare that woman interact with her like that? Absolute insane behavior. Not that she expected anything better from an Umris head. <laughs> Is everything alright? Are you manually co copying your fanfic here again? <laughs> it's so much bullshit, don't even get me started. I'm sitting in the library minding my own business, writing an Azzy Pants, right? And this Umris head bitch shows up, criticizing my thing. Then she to totally fucking touched my face, completely unprompted. That creepy weirdo asshole does that. Let me fucking write in peace. Jesus Christ, if you can't tell I'm so, 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 so pissed off, I'll show her. I'll write the most insane as he pants for the next stream. Several people are typing. <laughs> this is fascinating. This is so advanced. Lizzie would have gotten banned in ACDS. I think both of these people would be banned in ACDS. Unhinged. <laughs> that was all the ranting she had in herself for the day, and with that said, she stretched her fingers and opened up Microsoft Office. After a moment of consideration, she highlighted the text she had already written and deleted it completely. It was time to write a motherfucking fanfic. Fluff without plot could wait. 
The wind rustled the leaves, throwing deep shadows over his lover's face. He inhaled the smoke of his cigarette and looked up at the sky. Something about how vast it was made him feel small and insignificant. <laughs> Jeremiah? <laughs> he made his name fucking Jerma with extra steps. Great. Hey, Asriel. Jeremiah spoke. Do you ever regret it? Regret what? He said, exhaling the smoke. It was the same song and dance as it always had been. Jeremiah would ask the question that awoke the memories of his younger self's aspirations. The silhouette of the past chasing after him, threatening to consume his soul and leave him a hollow husk of a person. This is like Umrus narration being written by, by Lizzie. This is already a crossover. You'd agree, he said, as many times before. No, Azriel responded. Jeremiah was never satisfied with the answer. He'd always ask over again, as if that would lead Asriel back out of the world of finance and into the world of game development. It was almost like Jeremiah was not asking about his career path, but rather Asriel's entire life. Ping. Boop. Lizzie was about to start writing a new sentence when the un unmistakable sound of Discord notifications shook her out of her writer's trance. Bloop. This is just Homestuck at this point. We're, we're going between, like, uh, like present tense um, goings on and like just chat logs that are twice as long as the actual rest of the story. You're loving the stream, Doc. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, no, I, th I think Germ is supposed to be short for Jeremy, which like also isn't his real name though. I don't fucking know. I, I don't I don't know what Germa is or, or what the name is from. I've heard that Jeremy Elbertson is also a fake name, though. Oh, it's it's Umi again. Umi Rissa. Hello, it's my understanding that I've said to you earlier today. If so, I apologize. Trust me when I say I certainly wanted the help. Are you fucking stalking me? Give me one reason not to report you to the mods for this. I'm serious. Like, super serious. You're actually totally unkawaii. Go to fucking hell. Of course I had to... Of course I had to find the densest one of you. Surely you can see why your brainless fanfics would not work. Am I not correct? Have you considered that not everything is fucking umorous and that some people like tooth riding fluffy yaoi's? Also, you still didn't give me a reason not to report you to the mods. Fine, sorry, won't happen again, whatever. Still, you should really consider my advice. As an intellectual, I have a deep understanding of sip fiction that others simply don't understand fully. I don't need your advice. I'm capable of writing a fanfic all on my own. You should not... You should... Also, you should not fucking touch people out of nowhere. What the fuck is wrong with you? I thought we had something going on. Please consider my aid. I promise it should be fruitful collaboration. If you DM me again, I'll just talk to some birdly ki Um... If you DM me again just to talk like some birdly kinny, I'm blocking you. Sorry. Damn. You have to have a pretty high guy you to understand Umrits. <laughs> unkawaii. If you like unkawaii, you should watch the last stream. The whole, um, I think it was Rosa Raid's it, it, insane, uh, Lizzie paragraph. Where, like, she hadn't had any dialogue up until that point, and then she just, like, unloads for a full page. <laughs> it goes absolutely insane. Yeah, she'd better be, Lizzie thought to herself. The conversation reminded her of how angry she'd been just earlier. In all truthfulness, the most unrealistic part of this, this fanfic is that you'd meet someone in real life who's also on ECDS. Not conceivable. Uh, in all truthfulness, she'd prefer to write a cute little fluff without plot, but somehow she felt like she had to show this asshole uh, that she could write an Umrissian fanfic without anyone else's input. Anzi and Pizza Pants were definitely uniquely adaptive to that sort of storytelling. <laughs> uniquely. No one else would work. Only them. If Roy met someone from ACDS IRL, they'd immediately start fighting. <laughs> like throwing punches. Don't even, don't even like reply with words, just immediately swing.
um, terminal brain rot. The, this is a very, I don't know, Discord server type of interaction though, is like <laughs> getting super heated because someone said your fanfic didn't have enough plot. <laughs> and there's like weird sexual tension and they and they're just like, they hate each other so much. It's great. Do you have a favorite Umis ending? Why are you asking me this? I just like the chat. Fine, I, I, guess, I guess. It's a bit of a basic answer, but I did enjoy Obris. That's an alright answer. Personally, I preferred Obris. It hit the fidelity of Umis perfectly. Isn't that ending by that hack, VT Holmes? Didn't even show up for the latest stream. I skipped it for Bob Psycho 99, or whatever the title of that stupid enemy is. That uh, what true Azzy Pantcher does that? Ah. This is um some very specific <laughs> occurrences being referenced. I thought about FBS stuck with them right now. Are they really a true anything anymore? Finally something we can agree on. What emoji that's like a I can't pronounce that. Toxic Discord Yuri. It's like normal toxic Yuri, but worse somehow. Character assassination, says Doc. Lizzie's favorite would be a Rosa Raid strip club edit. Birdley! That was pretty good. Radioactive Yuri. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't start using cow emoji with me just because we have similar stances on some ATS rando. D I, yeah. Ah. Uh. Lizzie chuckled to herself. The girl still pissed her off, obviously, and she was still not entirely sure if she would leave Umi Rissa unreported when she did literally harass her IRL just earlier. For future reference chat, if, if someone, if you meet someone in a library and have an uncomfortable conversation and, and you take that up as like server drama, I'm not going to be happy, okay? I, that's, that, that's not really a situation that the server moderators are equipped to handle. I'm not sure what how we would, what we would do in that situation. Like if we if we ban Umirissa from the server, you're still gonna have to be in the library together, is what I'm saying. We, we can't we can't ban Umirissa from real life. That's not how it works. Uh, yo, twenty bucks from a witch bird. Thank you very much. That's a generous donation. Hope everything, or hope everyone is uniquely adaptive to the sort of storytelling this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, well, I don't know about uniquely. I don't know if, uh, what, 146 people can do something uniquely, but we try. Kill <laughs> Marissa. I'll send Roy to do a hit in real life. My shooter a crackhead. Look like a Discord admin. Yeah. New user is talking crazy. Shot him in the mouth. That that's kind of thing. Can you ban this guy who bullies me at school from real life? I'm counting on you here. Yeah. And then become irate when I can't do anything about it. It's uh Yeah. Let's let's not dwell on it. You're going to bait me into venting or some shit. Um, Lizzie chuckled to herself. The girl still pissed her off, obviously, and she was not entirely sure if she should leave Umirissa unreported when she literally harassed her IRL just earlier. But at least she had annoyed her back now, which meant that the girl uh, could be annoyed, could be annoyed, and which additionally meant that if she wrote a decent enough fanfic, she could erase the smugness off her face completely. So because they can mutually torment each other, it is now officially a ship, is what she's saying. She flopped back onto her dorm's bed, so Azzy Carr, and sighed as she repositioned the laptop on her thighs and alt tabbed back into her fan fiction. This is uh, the ideal college dorm room lifestyle. The truth was, as much as Azrael wanted to keep denying it, he did in fact regret his entire life. <laughs> Damn, that's heavy. The shadows of his past haunted him incessantly, 
daily, never stopping and never completely catching up. He was left jaded and emotionless, and if the shadows caught up to him, he would have become a vessel for a far more cruel and worthless... Uh, a for a being far mo more cruel and worthless than what Jeremiah had deserved to witness from him. Yes, Jeremiah, his delicate form was but a silhouette in the fading light of the setting sun. Azriel couldn't help but only think of how the two of them fit together like two puzzle pieces, Jeremiah perfectly shaped to be held by him when they embraced, and when they went further from an embrace. Then Jeremiah spoke again. Ezreal, you are a great ass. I think that's, uh, is implied gex on here? That was implied gex. There it is. Um, what else do we have? A big twist. Orchan, no, no weird rant. No hand holding. Talks about Yaoi. I guess, I guess she's mentioned Yaoi. Umi is simping for Birdly. Uh, not, not explicitly yet. No crime, no yaoi paddle, no more gajinkas. Okay. Oh, Pidge is canon? Well, I guess implicitly if ACDS is canon, you mean, I guess that's true. Where is it? There we go. It was a couple of days since Umirissa approached Lizzie in the library. So Lizzie thought she was free from seeing that girl in person ever again. Unfortunately, she was not that lucky. It was just a bit over noon and she was queuing in front of the sushi place on campus to grab herself lunch uh, to get her th through out the rest of the day when she heard a familiar voice come from behind her. Have you considered my author? She rolled her eyes and without turning to look at Umirissa, so she only knows her by her Discord handle. What a vibe. How long is it going to be till you ask her name? Maybe never. <laughs> responded with a... Um, no. Without turning to look at Umirissa, responded with, I don't need your help. Lizzie could feel her breath right next to her ear as she responded in a stage whisper. By the same. It smelled like cigarette smoke. Lizzie's really, honestly creepy. She's like, <laughs> immediately just encroaching on personal space every time. Touchy and weird. Lizzie, her face warped in disgust, turned around, grabbed Umirissa's shoulders, and pushed her a full arm's length away from herself. Dude, boundaries, she exclaimed. You can't just do that creepy bullshit with people you barely know. Some people in the queue and walking past gave her curious looks. I mean, I don't even know your name. She added. It's Umi, the girl responded. Here, now you know my name is Lizzie. Uh, now you know my name, Lizzie. There we go. Ah, uh, you're acting like a creepy stalker. Stop fucking doing that. Oh, uh, miss? The person at the counter of the sushi place interrupted their conversation. You're holding up the queue. Aussie says, I've met up with Discord pals on um, online, and we just refer to each other by our handles, even IRL, so it's it's correct. Um, I, I could picture that. It is it is awkward sometimes, I've encountered that, when you learn someone's real name after knowing them by a handle for a long time. And it's like, it's, it feels strange no matter what you do, because it's like, well, if I know your name, why am I calling you by your Discord handle? But also, you're not used to using the disc, uh, the You're used to using the handle, so it's weird to call them by the real name, too. It can become a bit of a paradox. Um. Wait a minute, holding up the cue, there it was. <clears throat> Lizzie realized that she'd still been grabbing, gripping Umi's shoulders and let go of her. She took a step back before turning toward the counter. Sorry about that. She ap apologetically rubbed the back of her head. Um, I'll have... With her order in hand and $10 less for a... For burando purchases in her pocket. I don't know what a burando is. Lizzie walked away from the sushi place, intending to find a nice spot to eat her meal and continue writing her fanfic. $10 campus sushi, what a vibe.
Life hack, make your online handle your new name when you transition. Or, I guess that works. Another life hack is just to make your online handle your name. <laughs> it's, it's really not a very good idea, but apparently I, I committed to that uh, and I can't back out now. So. Mm. <clears> hmm. <throat> I'm starting to get a bit of a frog in my throat. Um, I might try to chug some tea real quick before continuing. What, $5 foot long no one knows extra money? You're saying that's not your real name? You should consider it. Pro tip, make your handle your social security number. With <laughs> Brilliant advice. And your credit card number. Put them both back to back. Dio Burando. Goodbye, Jojo. That's, uh, yeah, D Dio Burando's online storefront is what she's referring to. Oh, it just means brand? What does that mean? $10 left for brand purchases. Is this- this is some Fujoshi shit, isn't it? This must be some, like, fu Fujoshi. Oh, big Japanese Lolita brands. Okay, it's lingo. I got it. It's like- it's like Gucci. It's- it's designer, you know? Okay. <clears throat> My yaoi paddle Gucci. Keep it at the Vatican. Um, <clears throat> the unmistakable voice of Umi. Where was I? W wait up! The unmistakable voice of Umi stopped in her tracks. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> she rolled her eyes, but did wait for the other girl to catch up. What do you want now? She asked. She was slowly losing her patience. I suppose I'd like to keep you company. Is that not allowed? We could get to know each other better, if not knowing my- If not knowing me bothers you that much. I'm not bothered by the fact that I don't know you well. I'm bothered by the fact that you're acting as if we're close enough for you to touch me unprompted. The solution is the same, is it not? The solution is for you to keep your fucking distance. They walked quietly for a moment. I thought you were all lovely. I surely did not expect you to be that aggressive. Lizzie's eye twitched. My sort? What the hell did Umi mean by that? You know, Lalita. Two bucks from Roy. Two bucks from Roy. Two bucks from Roy. Two bucks from Roy. Uh, two bucks from Roy. If she was not holding sushi in her hands, Lizzie would have strangled Umi at this very instant. So she thought she was going to interact with an agreeable girl who would have listened to anything she had to say. Of course. Fucking birdly Umi skinny. <laughs> Looking for a Susie Umris girl. No questions about that. <laughs> Susie Umris girlfriend. If you see someone posting about that in RuneScape, back off. Buying Susie Umris girlfriend. <laughs> it's like all the red flags at once. It's just one big universal red flag. Is that that counts as a misogyny moment in some complex way, probably. Safe to say. There's a reason big brand releases are called blood baths, she simply responded, hoping that Umi got the hint on how close Lizzie was to being filled with nothing but murderous intent directed towards her. Ah. They didn't speak much after that and parted ways without saying a word when Lizzie had to rush to her Japanese 101 lecture. <laughs> Perfect. No one's puked yet. Such restraint by the author. I know, I know. Maybe the, the gas station... Sushi is going to have something to say about that later on, though. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'd trust sushi from, like, a, a campus cafeteria, although my university didn't have the best, um, 
food places. It was kind of all... It was like, they had like a, a food union on campus. Everything was like regulated. It was kind of weird. Like there was different cafes and stuff, but they all sold the same like stock from a, a catering place. Highly overpriced, of course. It's great. <clears throat> um, yeah, university food kind of sucks. That's not the cafeteria food, by the way. I wasn't on the meal plan. I was just, uh, I went to the cafeteria once to get a coffee when everything else was closed and I was truly desperate. Like I was doing a late shift at the library and I was falling asleep. And so I had to use my 15 minute break to literally like run to the campus cafeteria and back. And it was the worst cup of coffee I've ever had in my entire life. That shit tasted like a cigarette tray. It was horrible. I don't know how they made it that bad, honestly. It was, um, it wasn't as weak as like hotel coffee, but it tasted worse. Jeremiah's question was still echoing in Azriel's mind weeks later, joining the shadows that loomed over his jaded existence. It was one of those days where he downed a bottle of whiskey before work just to get through the day, then two more throughout the evening once he returned to- oh, she's on it! <laughs> the three bottles a day grind set. Holy shit, pizza pants. That, that's what his entire salary goes to her. He just works and then buys three bottles of whiskey and it's like a net zero gain and he doesn't pay rent. That's all he does. Oh wait, this is Azzy? Oh, I, I referenced Jeremiah, but yeah, Azriel was the actual person in question. God damn, Azriel's even worse than Pizza Pants ever has been. <laughs> three bottles of whiskey. <laughs> Excellent. Maybe he was just Asgore sized in this canon, like it's a it's a bara as you take. Where like that's actually just how much it takes to get himself buzzed. Oh he uses the same like uh funding that opioid pants used in uh, election trucking. Where Pizza Pants just invested in Bitcoin and has like a million dollars now. But he spends it all on drug money so regularly that he still has to work a minimum wage job to pay rent. It all makes sense. Uh, so I'm assuming this is like Azzy Pants Umris. This is like they're both aged up and they're like married or some shit. That, that was just dawning on me now. Instead of a cigarette, he reached for the weed Jeremiah had stashed in their sock drawer and tried to seek solace in his husband's body. They had lamb steak for dinner that night. I think Pizza Pants had goat steak, if you know what I mean. Azriel didn't know which of these facts kept him up that night. Perhaps it was a combination of everything. Uh, I dropped the voice, sorry. He stumbled onto the porch of their house at the edge of hometown, where he collapsed onto one of the garden chairs. The cold air of cloudless night sharpened his senses, and for a brief moment, he could breathe. Shadows inside cut deeper yet deeper, photon readings negative, and he felt like if he stayed inside, one of them might cut right through him and leave him to bleed out. It was suffocating. Somewhat a uh, courier core, honestly. That's that's sort of <laughs> how Courier New writes in his more recent Deltarune fanfictions. Um, he hated that he hadn't, he didn't need any unreality-filled dissertation manuscripts or five and a half minute hallways inside his house to feel that way. It was all him, losing grip of himself in the regret and longing for something more. Like um, uh, as he pants Umris AU, where Azriel becomes a financier and regrets losing his game dev aspirations. Uh, weirdly targeted and relatable. Is that a House of Leaves reference? Oh yeah, you're right! I was wondering what this was at. Five and a half minute hallways. I didn't catch that. Good, good catch, Rosa Raid. Courier New should write as he <laughs> One day. One day. It's not as insane as it may seem. I think uh, on his alt account, actually, 
he has some more romantic stuff. Um, it's it's not about Delta Rune. It's it's like other stuff, but he does go there. Um. Lizzie had to pause her typing and nibble a matcha-flavored pocky as she considered the last couple paragraphs. Maybe this reference was too heavy-handed, but she couldn't help that House of Leaves had somehow uh, had some of the tastiest shadow-related imagery she ever read in a book, and a birdly kinny like Umi was sure to appreciate it too. She reached for another pocky from the packet and, mid-motion, realized that she had no idea if Umi even read House of Leaves. It's an interesting bit of a background. It's part of the, the Azzy Pants canon literature. You have to read House of Leaves. Interesting. Who's mentioning Drunk Kara? <laughs> get, get an interview with Kara, then just keep pressuring him to read Azzy Pants. No. Any update on the Kara interview? It's kind of been, um... It, it, I feel like, well, I, I can't actually start production on the video yet is the problem. It, I, I'm not totally sure myself, to be honest, um, but I, I, I'm sort of committed to doing RAM work up until like the end of March at this rate. And after that, I was going to swap into like video production mode. And, and it's, it's weird to like start lining up interviews now, but I wanted to get like confirmation. So, um... I'm not sure. Basically, no interview yet, but uh, he, he did express tentative um, agreement to do one. Fandrew just retweeted Michael Caine thrice. Fandrew... Which one's Fandrew? Do you mean like the, the, the Twitter dude or... Uh... Fake Andrew, yeah, that one. Cunningham UTDR, my favorite guy. Um, she's getting gay now, points out chat, trying to impress toxic yaoi love interest. Or toxic Yuri, you mean. She reached for another, oh wait. Uh, she alt tapped the discord and looked through the rest of her direct messages. <clears throat> Sorry for messaging you so late. I was just wondering if you've read House of Leaves. Are you struggling with comprehending its greatness? Not really. Just curious. <laughs> Do not hold the line very line for too long. I've been waiting in line for months to reread it. No, I'm not reading it at the moment. I've also been waiting to reread it for months now. Whatever, I'm going to sleep. Okie dokie. Sleepy pillow and blanky EP time. Ah, can you just say goodnight like a normal person? Where's the silly and whimsy in that? Eepy, eepy, sleepy pillow blanket time. This is just how people on my server talk. It's not even a joke. They just do that shit. I've seen it. Was Drunk Kara mentioned in the fic or was that just in chat? This is so accurate to Discord dating since Rosary. Are they dating? Is this already dating? Is this what it looks like? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Right. It was almost midnight and she had 9am lecture the following day. If the pull of Azzy Pants wasn't so strong, she would have headed to sleep by now. She finally put the, po uh, put the pocky she reached for earlier in her mouth, holding it in the corner of her lips like one would do with a cigarette. <laughs> It's like the four kids dub. They replace the cigarettes with, uh, well, pockies in this case. I think they'd get soggy. You'd need a lollipop instead. Imagine holding a pocky in your mouth for so long that it just got soggy and wilted over time. That'd be sad. Hi, Andrew, says chat member. Hi, chat member, says Andrew. Yeah, this is like kiss missus dating. Discord dating where one of them talks with whimsy and the other talks like a depressed English major. <laughs> it's uh, it's an aesthetic, trust me. Yeah, she was gonna write some more Azzy Pants before it was sleepy pillow in blanky EP time for her. 
Not that he hated this life he had with Jeremiah, but the thought of what could have been had Des not been lost to the kidnapping case that went unsolved since they were kids made his stomach churn uncomfortably. Asriel let out a long sigh and buried his face in his hands, leaving his elbows on his knees. He was so tired of caring. He wanted to. Flowey core? Flowey reference? Have you, have you played Undertale, Umi? Asriel inhaled sharply. No, he couldn't slip into that state of complete indifference. He knew that if he did, there was no question who the first person to fall victim to his whims would be once you could afford not to care anymore. Uh, he's talking about going flowey mode, or maybe removing his soul in the way that, that Chris also does. It's a Deltarune reference and an Undertale reference, Asriel being soulless. It all makes sense. It all clicks. Aussie on that lollipop grind. You love to see it. Umi thinks Undertale is too positive, only cares about Geno. Yeah, pretty much. She's one of those people who she goes on long tirades about how, like, it's the whole uh, genocide would just self-defense and that it's unrealistic to think that Frisk could spare the monsters in a fight-or-flight situation. None of these characters have ever heard of Undertale. Also possible. Lizzie had not slept very well that night. Thanks to the fact that she had spent most of it writing, her absolute monster of a fanfic, and the rest of it thinking about writing it. She almost missed the beginning of her 9am lecture. On her way there, she had to stop by the store and buy herself a Monster Energy Zero Sugar Ultra Peachy Keen. Um, there, there's no bingo square for Mel reference. There is one for... Uh, Mel Goes Gaga. That doesn't count. That is a Mel reference, though. Um... If she hadn't done so, she would have fallen asleep at the lecture and gotten nothing out of it. Even then, she could barely pay attention to whatever the lecture on Mythology 109 East Asian Myths and Culture <laughs> You're gonna need this to study, um, let that sink in, it's all worth it, okay? Was talking about. She was gonna have to review the lecture slides when she wasn't so fucking tired. Once the lecture was over, she trailed out of the lecture hall, holding the new, now halfway emptied can of Monster. It was a good thing she had a decently large gap between this and her next lecture, so she could go back to her dorm room and get some rest. Then, from the lecture hall to the next one she just left, a known figure emerged. Great. Day immediately ruined. And she didn't even have a moment to try to avoid Umi because the exit to the building was straight ahead from both lecture halls. Fucking perfect. Uber Eats driver succumbed to the elements. Fucking perfect. Just what I needed. Just peachy. Just like her monster energy drink. Um, by the way, it, it was never the early lectures that got me falling asleep in, in school. It was the late ones. It was like 7 o'clock. Like an um, hour and a half, three hour long, 7 o'clock lecture. It's like I, I'd be falling asleep during those. I only actually fell asleep once in class, but it, it was during like a 7 p.m. Uh, like database systems lecture. Straight up conked out. Uh, Umi caught up to Lizzie, who tried really hard to pretend she couldn't recognize the Umris head. He was wearing the exact same outfit as the other couple days they had met, and Lizzie couldn't help wonder if the other, if the uh, girl had a single outfit, or if it was a cartoon type of thing where she opened a wardrobe with a bunch of the exact same birdly t-shirts, <laughs> or she just doesn't wash it. Either way, she couldn't help but notice that she smelled strongly like cigarettes when she approached with a how do you do, Liddy? As she's hugged her across her shoulders. She was actually quite forceful about that in a weird anime-ass way that um, pushed Lizzie's torso to bend forward. It's weird that um, you'd think that Lizzie, the, the stereotype Fujoshi girl, would be the one who's like uh, creepily glomping people and being overly touchy, but it, the roles have been inverted in this case. which caused her glasses to slide down her nose and she almost spilled her drink. Obviously, she swatted Umi's hand away, still weirded out by how chummy Umi acted despite the fact they'd only interacted in person two times beforehand. Watch it! I'll glomp you to death if you do that ever again! She pushed her glasses back up to her nose, so she does know how to glomp. She was trained in the school of, uh, glomp chun or whatever. 
Glomp Chenibio. It's like a Star Wars character. <laughs> Glup shit. <laughs> uh. D, so sensitive. Umi rolled her eyes. I suppose she's still insisting on writing Azzy Pants all by herself. Yeah, now leave me alone. You're even more pissy than usual. I don't want to be a... I don't want to see a creepy stalker's face at 10 a.m. right after a lecture. Lizzie responded and took a sip of her monster. That's an unfair assessment of my character. It seems pretty fair and deserved to me. You're all touchy with me as if we've met before, and you're pushy, and we've talked over Discord. Lizzie could feel a headache developing as she tried to form a response. We've talked in the stream chat. Umi would be a tier 3 stub. A migraine, even. <laughs> How does one make toxic unity yet more toxic? Lizzie could feel a headache developing as she tried to form a response. A migraine, even. She pinched the bridge of her nose and took a deep breath before stopping in her tracks. It, can you pinch the bridge of your nose wearing glasses? I just had that thought. Cause it just mentioned glasses. Like, d does the... Did the glasses, like, armor the bridge? Did they, did they render it unpinchable? Or is there enough room to pinch it still? I've never thought about it. I guess there's probably enough room above above the glasses still to pinch the bridge of your nose. Or you lift them up, I see. Umi, she spoke. Despite the annoyance and anger bubbling inside her, her voice was calm and measured, if not slightly cold. She could notice the girl's expression shift from her usual smugness to confusion. I had told you to leave me alone and stop being so fucking pushy so many times, and yet you keep doing what I tell you not to do. Quit your birdly kinny bullshit or I'll call the cops on you and tell the ACDS mods that you're harassing me, and I'm not fucking kidding. Are we clear? A moment of silence passed between them. Umi swatted Lizzie's hands off her shoulder, but kept her distance and let out a pensive sigh. You didn't have to call me a birdly kinny to my face. Am I wrong? Lizzie asked, lifting her eyebrow. I mean, no, but still, you didn't have to do it. <laughs> what makes you act less like that? Lizzie shrugged. Oh, whatever makes you act less like that. Anyway, if you'll excuse me, I want to go to the dorms and get a proper nap now. She started walking away when a hand weakly grabbed her elbow of her jacket. Hmm? She turned around to see Umi standing there, deflated. It, it, is it alright if I come with you? I promise I'll be quiet. It, it's only that my other lecture today is at 5 p.m. and she sighed and let her hand fall down and hang next to her body. Lizzie stared, starred at the other girl in disbelief for what felt like an infinity, even though it realistically took her only a moment or two to recognize her thoughts, or reorganize her thoughts rather. Fine, she spoke, but you'll have to, but you'll have to pretend you don't exist while we're there. I don't mind doing that. Umi responded. I think this Umi is actually like more of a of a birdly kinny than than she realizes. She she's actually acting kind of uh well it's it's not quite like Umris birdly. It's she's like p pursuing the romance via being pathetic. I guess it's a different take on an Umi for sure. At least she's not a spammed in PFP. Too true, chat. Uh, I gotta take a quick uh, piss break here before we continue. Um, we're about two thirds of the way down the fic, it looks like. Going very slowly today. I'll be the first to admit. I'm taking it, I think, a bit more um, at a leisurely pace. I'm responding more to chat, but whatever. Um, as long as the streams are enjoyable. Okay, I'll be back in a few minutes.
All right, chat, how many long piss jokes are gonna be in chat? I also got a croissant for the record. I, I got some food. Delicious croissant. Hmm. People really are talking about piss in chat. Cool. You love to see it. You made a cherry pie, chat member. Good for you. Happy for you. I've never made a pie myself. Um, I've made... I tend to make a cheesecake if I need to make a baked good, because they're easy. And, and very good, honestly. <laughs> they're kind of my favorite type of cake overall, I'd say. Give me a sec to chew on the croissant for a shot. Oh, and the tea, of course. I never thought of cheesecake as a cake. Yeah, it's like... It's basically a cake. I don't know. It's... It's something. I don't fucking know what a cheesecake is, dude. You know what type of cake is really good? Uh, I don't know if it's a universally recognized cake type, but uh, hummingbird cake. My grandma often makes it, but it's um, it's really fucking good. It's it's like a, a normal cake, but with um, pineapple and coconut mixed into it, and maybe something else. It's but it's very moist because of a. Uh, all the pineapple distributed throughout it, and then cream cheese icing on top. So it's, it kind of tastes like a pina colada, and it's really sweet. Real banger. Yes, pineapple in a cake. No, it's not chunky. It's like blended up into the batter. It's like atomized pineapple fragments. I don't want to talk to you if you don't like cream cheese icing. I just don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, quantum pineapple slices. Piano during the break? I don't know anything romantic. Nothing Valentine's core. I could do Birdly's theme, I guess. That's vaguely related. I, I can't actually play Hopes and Dreams, really. Well, not like a, a an impressive arrangement of it, particularly. <laughs> Gwyn's theme. Maybe I'll take a brief stab at Birdly's theme just for shits and giggles. Birdly's theme is very romantic, true. Let's try it.
enough. I'm not going to go on an extensive piano tangent today. Just casual piano. Okay, finish the croissant, sorry. I just had to get that down real quick. <clears throat> and now we can resume. Um, and I, I don't know any more of Mother's Love Spell, by the way. Um, I haven't really... Uh, I've been distracted this week. Worrying about other stuff. Okay. Resume Umrizi Pant. Birdly's theme sounds like a normal non-VGM song on piano. I, it was like a vaguely Latin jazz kind of take on it. Not that I really know how to do Latin jazz piano. It's just um, mildly flavored like that. Okay. <clears throat> Lizzie unlocked the door to let Umi enter before she followed her inside. Umi stood still at the entrance, uh, taking in Lizzie's room decor. Lizzie didn't really pay attention to any of the anime posters or cute items she had arranged around the room. She was too used to it to be surprised by cute yaois, <laughs> Sanrio items, or even her placeless, um, priceless Usakuyama plush. H who is this? Who is this twink? Usakuyama. Um... What, like, a yokai? Google says it's a yokai. Did I type it in wrong? Oh no, U -usak Usakumia. It's not Yama, Usakumia. Oh, it's like a little... Well, that's nothing too exciting. Um, wait. It's sending me to, to eBay. Wait, no, I just want the image. Just show me the image, please. Apparently that's an Usakumia. I, I don't know what it is, but that's it. Cool. Oh, the music, sorry. Um, oh yeah, uh, Aussie, you're not wrong. The, uh, the reaction tubers have taken to my videos for some reason in the last, like, week or two. Uh, there's these, there's two of them. Um, and yeah, one of the, one of the guys who reacted to the Gaster's theme video, he made the thumbnail the fucking rant Sona, uh, which is great. Perfect. Thank you for that. I love, I love you. Um, for doing that. All right. Instead, she unceremoniously kicked her shoes off her feet, Crocs rather, threw the now empty can of monster into the trash, dropped her bag, no, this is a, uh, sorry, Lizzie's feet, uh, and dropped her bag down next to the chair and flopped under her bed. She invited Umi in to watch her sleep. I would I would not have agreed to this detail, but maybe as as Rosa Raids pointed out, they're already dating in both of their minds implicitly, so maybe this is okay. This is just what Discord dating is like. You, you talk about Azzy pants in a forum, and you tell each other that you're annoying, 
you accuse each other of being stalkers, and then your first date is watching one one person sleep. Classic girl behavior. This is what girls do. This is what it means to be female, yes. Sit wherever, she told me. After another moment, the awkward girl standing... After another moment of the girl awkwardly standing at the door, Umi finally sat down. On her fucking bed. Wow, she told me I could sit wherever, Umi said before Lizzie could say anything. I can move if it... No, it's fine. Umi lifted her eyebrow, glancing down at Lizzie. I'm too tired to get properly pissed off at you. Just keep your fucking distance. Right. Umi was sitting strangely stiffly, her back too straight, her legs and hands folded together too politely. Why did- why is Umi even want to do this? This- this sounds just fucking horrible for everyone. This is the worst way to spend time together. Lizzie was actually quite surprised about that. The girl really didn't give her any reason to think she would actually listen. Whatever. Lizzie snuggled into her pillow and closed her eyes. She was just about to slip into proper sleep when Umi spoke up. Do you mind if I smoke here? Lizzie shut her eyes open and sprung up to a sitting position. Don't you fucking dare! I suppose it's not allowed in the dorms anyway. Yeah, but also I'd kill you if you smoke- if your smoking made my stuff smell like shit because of your chain smoking addiction bullshit. I bet I get it. Do you? Because you've already ha had a really time getting stuff and I've told you to quit it before. Umi shrugged in a manner that Lizzie would describe as apologetic, which she immediately attributed to the fact that she was too tired to think straight. A moment of silence passed. Chat says, Umi knows the source code, she knows the Toxic Yuri playbook, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> this is in the playbook? Convince a girl you're a stalker, then sit on her bed while she sleeps and get her to not mind? I guess that's a play. In the same way that, I don't know, kicking the soccer ball toward your own net as hard as you can is. She can't think straight because she's thinking gay. Very true. Um, a moment of silence passed. Do you want a pocky? She finally spoke, grabbing the packet she was nibbling on the, that she was nibbling on the day before and offering it to Umi. Thank you, Umi responded and took one of the matcha-flavored breadsticks. It's very green. <laughs> Azzy colored, Lizzie nodded. Of course you would buy stuff that would be Azzy Pants themed. Umi sighed and rolled her eyes. Do you really think of nothing but Delta Rin Yaoi? Um, I sometimes think about Undertale Yaoi. Right. It's not like they're much different. Lizzie vaguely gestured at Umi. You're all Umers themed. Where do you even get that t-shirt? Custom made. I really like the book cover. I hope Outson's getting royalties and he didn't just get that off fucking Redbubble. Lizzie hummed. That made sense. Yeah, which Undertale Yaoi's? This is, um... We're in like a post-alarm clock world. It's probably some shit like Asgore and Rudy. Classic. <laughs> you think it's King Dings? Okay, a bit older school. Nice. <laughs> nice pants. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <clears throat> It might just be like sans self-cest or something, you never know. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Another moment of silence followed as Umi quietly nibbled on the Pocky. Then she spoke again. I've heard that this Yabi trap where the two guys eat the Pocky eat, uh, from each side, then they kiss. You mean the Pocky game? Lizzie flatly responded, not entirely sure where all this was going. Right, is that why you keep Pocky around? Lizzie glanced at her trash bin. Besides the monster can, it contained a bunch of matcha pocky boxes. What the hell are you implying? She exclaimed, feeling blood rush to her cheeks. Nothing, nothing, this curious. 
Lizzie could have sworn that Umi's cheeks turned a brighter shade of pink. It's a party game. Yes, it involves kissing. Yes, kissing happens in Yaoi. Hmm. Umi looked pensive as she continued to nibble on her pocky. She looked kind of cute like that. Damn. That's basically third base for toxic Yaoi, admitting that someone is cute, maybe. Lizzie grimaced. Did she really just think about how Umi was cute? Nuh-uh. Not now. Not ever. You a blessing, Lily. Umi pointed out blankly. Fuck. Who's blushing? I'm not blushing, you're blushing. He stammered out. Um, anyway, I mean, if you wanted to try and figure out how to share a Pocky that way, I, I could show you. I could show you. I could, I could demonstrate. I could demonstrate how maybe this would happen hypothetically if we were in a toxic Gabby relationship, which we're not. I could show you. That's the play. Okay. I thought we were into subtlety. I thought this was gonna be this was gonna be like a slow burn. Nah, -uh. I'm gonna show you how if I was gay, I would kiss you with a pocky. Holy shit. I guess that'll have to do if I can't light my own cigarette. Uh, if I can't light my cigarette with your cigarette. Umi shrugged. She didn't complain at all. Well, yeah, I don't smoke. That made Umi giggle, and the pocky she was nibbling on fell out of her mouth onto Lizzie's back. Before Lizzie could rethink this whole ordeal, she shifted from sitting to kneeling on her knees, picked up the pocky, and placed it in Umi's end back between her ajar lips. That's a really interesting sentence, just overall. She then leaned closer and took the other end between her own. Um, this is where, and wait for it chat, they puke on each other, maybe. I don't know. I feel like this is where they would puke on each other, following the standard Umrizi pants kind of flowchart. The girl was uh, was surprised but didn't move away, letting Lizzie nibble her way closer to her lips, possibly stunned by the sudden development. She only moved when Lizzie snapped the snack in half with her teeth, a single hair of space between them, to close the distance and kiss her. Lizzie returned the kiss, pushing back into the bed where the kiss kept going. Damn, you weren't even right, Rosaray. They were dating. That was like all just elaborate foreplay like they were actually like both super mutually into each other the whole time that's just how you express it i guess fascinating like this wasn't even hard to see coming if, if you're genre savvy i assume uh figuring out that their glasses were in the way uh lizzie took both hers and umi's off and placed them vaguely aside before long, Lizzie found herself straddling Umi, bowing down to keep savoring the kiss. Holy shit. <laughs> Zero to a million. This is hilarious. Umi's hands were wrapped around her neck, pulling her closer. <laughs> Spades emotes in chat. Jesus Christ, get the bucket. Get like a Umi chewing tobacco spittoon spit bucket out here. And they can really take the shit to the next level. When does Sans get involved? Hopefully not. The kiss fizzled out as the two started gasping for air that was not plentiful while they were making out. Lizzie laid her torso down onto Umi's, her hand weakly grasping the duvet on both sides of Umi's head. Umi's hands moved toward her waist, now gently resting on her hips. Wow, she heard Umi cat. <laughs> Cut to fan fiction. Jesus Christ, the escalation is cracking me up here. Like, there was not even a transition. It's just like they hit each other to then they're kissing. <laughs> nothing, nothing else happened. Bingo? What's happening? Um. Overly detailed description of fucked up kissing. Uh, I, it wasn't that fucked up, but it was pretty detailed. Lewd hand holding? Nah. Uh, no. No puking. Still not much. Say gex? There, was, there wasn't implied gex. They just kissed a lot. Come on. 
Surely nothing else happened in this conspicuously placed horizontal line break. Nothing's happening. It's just a line. Asriel, oh sorry, this is a uh, narration. Asriel was slumping on the garden chair when Jeremiah found him inside. His husband's concern was deep-rooted in his face, shaping an emotion he could not quite comprehend. He let Jeremiah drag him around the house, first feeding him a hearty breakfast that Asriel would have not touched at all otherwise, then to their garden where he settled them under the tree, Jeremiah leaning on the trunk, Asriel laying down, resting his head on his lap. Azrael felt like he was floating the entire time, not entirely grounded in where he was going, but what was going on. I was worried this would happen, Jeremiah said to nobody in particular. You've been denying yourself the negative feelings. I can see it in your eyes, Azrael. It was, it was almost like a switch had turned off inside Azrael's soul. No, he realized, I cannot feel anything. No regret, no grief, no love, no remorse. Do you... Asriel asked, raising to, s raising to sit in front of Jeremiah. A part of him deep inside was screaming for himself to stop, but he was realizing he did not care about it one bit. A cruel smile grew on his face. What do you see, Jeremiah? Jeremiah's face contorted into a shape of fear, no doubt seeing the emptiness within Asriel, just as clearly as he could feel it. What do you see? I... I see you, screaming for help. He breathed out. His face told a different story. Asriel rose to his feet, now standing above his husband. His muscular frame- it is Bara, Asriel. His muscular frame threatening compared to the delicate form of the man he had married years ago. There is nothing of me left anymore, Jeremiah. Jeremiah crawled to his feet, his back pinned to the tree by sheer uh, fear inside. Asriel slammed his hands into the tree, right next to Jer Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm forgetting the voice. Asriel slammed his hands into the tree, right next to Jeremiah's head, then dug his fingers into the wood. A wave of pain shot through his arm bones, first from his palms, then from his fingernails, when splinters from the bark dug deep, uh, dug between them and into his flesh. Asriel, Jeremiah let out, leaning his hands on his chest. For a moment it seemed like he would say more, but he gave up only moments later. There was no doubt in Asriel's mind what his soul was ex that his soul was expiring now. He felt like he was filled with immense power and incredibly weak both at once, and there was only one thing still driving him onward. He wanted to feel one last thing, and Jeremiah was going to give it to him. His mind went blank. When he came back to his senses, Jeremiah was gone. Instead, dust covered his hands and the ground. Maybe he made a mistake, but he couldn't tell. He still couldn't feel anything. He fell to his knees, letting the final shadows within him finally win. Damn. Damn, he fucking killed him. I think that implies gay sex. I think that counts. Literally just killing you. I think that counts. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Wait, it's already crossed off. What are you talking about, Chad? It was already crossed off the whole time. Um, yeah, that that's a good point, Roy. Really. This is basically a let that sink in reference. Even though you'd barely know that if you've read the fic. You have to be like a scholar. You have to be like a, a deep lore let that sink in, like PhD level expert um, to recognize that, but yeah. Very LTSI coded. Uh, and that's the end. Lizzie Pants. It's done. It's a bit different than my other stuff, but enjoy. A study of Umris. Oh, that's the fucking name of the fanfic. Goddamn. Several people are typing. I think that's an actual post on my server, by the looks of it. Like, that's- that's all candid. Fascinating. 
Like every Sunday, Lizzie turned on her computer slightly before she expected the stream to begin. This is always irrationally embarrassing when I get to the part where, like, my own stream is called out. It's very strange. Umi seemed to be online, which was good, because it meant that she was going to watch the stream as well, and so she was going to be there to witness Lizzie's fic. All according to Kaikaku. I didn't make the joke. Before long, the ping she was waiting for popped up. Wait, what? Wait, what? What are you- <laughs> No fucking- This was like- <laughs> You live patched this, you asshole. That's fucked up. I don't like it. The snake is eating itself. I don't like it. That's weird. She could not wait to see what Umi thought. <laughs> It was three hours ago, but still, you think of, like, a fanfic as, like, a finished work when you get it, right? It's not gonna change as you're reading it. She could not wait to see what Umi thought. Lily, Lily, what the fuck? What the fuck did you write, Lily? To be clear, I think what you wrote is peak fiction that can be compared to the Umith. I cannot say it is better than Umith, but it does come incredibly close. I suppose our collaboration did not have to be of the writing nature after all. Love you! Lizzie smirked, satisfied by the reaction her fanfic got out of Umi. She just had to absorb the Umris, like, aura directly out of Umi's body. That That's what it boiled down to. It was like, it was literally radioactive yaoi. It's like the ionizing radiation just altered her DNA slightly and so she could write that um, via exposure to Umi. The Umra Sludge. Yeah. Highly infectious. Lizzie smirked, satisfied by the reaction her fanfic got out of Umi. It was, after all, always written to impress her. With a sigh, she opened an empty Word document. She really felt like writing some fluff without plot now that this was all over. Her girlfriend's love of Umris be damned. She was feeling pretty gay. <laughs> she had to write something cuter, she'd die. It's the whole fuck everyone in the Azzy Pants to read at all times, all day long. For months. That's it. Uh, who's talking? Uh. You are so cute. I think what you mean is, uh, mysterious and dangerous. Nah, I definitely mean cute. Azriel blushed and looked up at Pizza Pants, whose lap he was resting his head on. A smile, a small smile appeared on the catboy's face, and his brown eyes were sparkling in the sunlight. It all wraps back around. It wraps back around, it wraps back around. Have I seen the new Toby Fox tweet? Nope, I don't have Twitter. People repost that shit to my Discord server, and then I see it. Should I live react to it on stream? Is it that important? Did, did he canonize that Spamton, like, fucked Jevil or something? Oh, it's at, it's at the newsletters this week. I mean, people were already saying it was Valentine's. I just assumed that was known somehow. I don't really... I, I'm not that concerned one way or another. I'll read it when it comes out. Oh, there's a Funny Sans gif, though? That is pretty important. Um, let me see if anyone's posted about it on the server. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, can I... Will this open in a new tab? Will Twitter let me view it? Oh, apparently. Uh, yes. This is the gif. Oh, this is all the Valentine's Day chocolate that Sans buys back from, uh, from Chris, I guess. He's got to do something with it. He pushes it into a landfill in the Mojave Desert, along with, like, the alien corpses and all the copies of E.T. Uh, for the Atari. What a cool guy.
uh, notes. Hi, Andrew. Thanks for reading. I'll remove the stream announcement uh, cord log from the fic after this if you don't want it to stay in here, but know that I spent the first 30 or so minutes of the stream in the HTML mines to recreate it as faithfully as possible. I don't care. You can keep it. It's fucking surreal. Like, the stream URL is, like, actually accept- I can click this. Does this- this will open? Apparently not. It's weird, it looks like a link, but I can't actually click on it. Whatever. Uh, wonderful work, VT Homes. Oh boy. Yeah, that was interesting. That was a wacky one, holy shit. So that was about as high comp sent as it gets. Uh, I think we should do something simpler now. Back to basics, as he pent, you know? Um, okay, I was excited for this one. This is the the part two, the sequel, the, the, the ending, hopefully, um, to when I read last stream, Going Home Again, which I believe was the, uh, was already a continuation. This is the, the crossover AU where they have like Alex Eagleston and May Barovsky and Hiro Amori guy uh, are all like uh, Asriel's roommates at college and they come back to town uh, and now they they got sucked into like an Icy's Pizza Dark World and that's where it was like a cliffhanger. Oh wait, that's not this? I thought that was going home again. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, you're right. Homebound. It had the word home in it. You're right. You're right. Um, in which case, I want to read this. This is what I want to read. Homebound. Let's do it. Going homebound again, yeah. This work could have adult content. Oh no. What's it tagged with? Maybe Alex Eagleston bumps it up to the uh, adult content rating, I guess. Not rated. Is it because there's no archive warnings? Maybe that it gives you a disclaimer? Yeah, whatever. I do not have sex. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, they're all really long now. Which, I, I, I can't get through all of them on stream. Like, that's just a, an inevitability. Like, I can only read so many. Yeah, this was the one with Tomota, the Pizza Pants' troll Sona that he, he sketched on a napkin at Icy's and then got sucked into a dark fountain. And so now there's like just Pizza Pants' literal troll Sona running around as a character. Cool. Summary, for first time readers, a crossover fan fiction disguised as Azzy Pants, starring all your favorite college age indie game heroes such as Azriel Deltarune, Hiro Omori, May Night in the Woods, and Alex Yeek. When Azriel and his new college friends return to hometown during school vacation, Azriel must confront his conflicting feelings about his best friend Pizza Pants and the town that he's lived in his whole life. But soon, the stakes are raised as Azriel and his friends are faced with a threat that threatens to destroy the whole world. <laughs> Story includes awkward adolescent kissing, underage drinking, heart pounding action, heartfelt drama, homestuck, and more. Uh, excellent. And then there's a recap. This is last time on Dragon Ball. I kind of summarized it. They they all went to Icy's Pizza, but someone made a dark world, and now they're in an Icy's Pizza hellscape with Tomota the Troll Sona. Oh yeah, the the best part about the Troll Sona. Um, I should show this off actually. I think that the drawing is here. Yeah, this is the troll sona. The sexuality is listed as gay and straight. <laughs> that was like the, the funniest thing to me in the previous stream. So good. <laughs> Ideal. It's still the funniest, yeah. Gate. Only attracted to boy girls. Uh. Okay, what the fuck was I doing for this guy's voice? I think it was, uh. Oh. Alright, now that you idiots know deeds, you can we please get a move on? 
That's what I'm going for. It was horrible. It's like ultra fucked up uh, Chris from the Subspace Emissary World's Conquest. Asriel sat on the floor of Ices, wrapping his head around everything that had happened. After they had discovered what had happened to the world outside, May asked Tomota to explain what exactly was going on here, and that meant she had, had pinned him to the ground and threatened to beat him to a pulp unless Tomota brought them back to hometown. Tomota said there was no time for that, but Hiro, always the quick thinker, had promised that they would give him a cigarette if he explained himself, after which he was quick to agree to their terms. His explanation was a little hard to follow, as it eventually broke down to an incoherent rant about things called fetch modai and class facts that only Alex seemed to be able to understand. <laughs> That's good. But from what Asriel could gather, they were currently in a magical dark world created from Ices, brought to life by someone called the Knight, and they couldn't get out unless the dark fountain that was the source of the dark world was sealed. Checks out. Honestly, I, I doubt that though. Alex is like an English major, and uh, the fetch modi are all like very computer science major coded type nerd of devices. Oh boy. <laughs> Tomoda's great, says Roy, because he's five seconds from getting beaten to death at all times, just like a real troll sona. How was it opened by the knight? Is Pizza Pants the knight? I actually forget, did Pizza Pants open the fountain? Shout out to the time, says Outsin, uh, that Andrew Allenson got written into a Homestuck fanfic. A Homestuck Yaoi fanfic by his ex-girlfriend. Please tell me that's real, Outsin, please. Y y I I'm sure it is. You know all of the Andrew Allenson details. Uh, that That is one of the best bits of lore I've ever heard about him, actually. Does Andrew Allenson have as many ex-girlfriends as Alex does in the game? Does he have like just a, a bunch of them that all have funny stories? Is he one of those kind of guys? Oh, that was in the thread? I might have missed that one, I apologize. Sick. Look at that guy pissed off again. What, for talking about Andrew Allenson? Last time I checked that was allowed. Okay, Utsin assures me that uh, Andrew Allenson does not actually have, like, seven ex-girlfriends. That would be funny, though. Uh, funny story, yeah, so, uh, so this one time, uh, I, my, my girlfriend, my, my ex-girlfriend, rather, she was, uh, it's kind of, kind of a funny story. She was, um, uh, she was, uh, the Donkey Kong. Nice one, Doc. Hmm. Um, right. Chris and another person named Susie, who Asriel was unfamiliar with, had found and gone into the Dark World on purpose last night in order to seal the fountain. However, they were ambushed in the pizzeria by a monster that Tomota refused to talk about, and Chris and Susie were defeated and taken away by the creature. Tomota seemed very annoyed by the situation, as apparently guiding the HEROES OF PROPHECY as he called Chris and Susie, was the purpose of my existence. Asriel's brain felt like it was about to melt. So we have a Darkner Homestuck troll. Perfect. Uh, and it didn't help that Tomoda's voice sounded like he was constantly hacking up phlegm. What, what do you mean? I can't... How, how am I supposed to sound like that? The purpose of my existence. No, I, I'm not doing that. <clears throat> Chris was the type of kid to eat the moss behind the church during Sunday Mass while making loud rat noises and perform occult rituals with loud satanic chanting ASMR videos <laughs> playing in the back. Say, that's what I haven't seen. Say, satanic chanting ASMR. I've seen and uh, in, you get you get recommended all sorts of fun ASMR stuff. If you've, if you've touched any of those videos in your life. There's like Thanos roleplay ASMR. I've seen like uh, free protogen maintenance ASMR. Those are good. I've seen like uh, barefoot ear licking, obviously just porn ASMR. They got some interesting ones. 
Um, I have not seen satanic chanting, though. Dagoth 6 house ASMR. Okay, Dagoth ASMR, he'd be good at that. He, he could start, like, a, a Patreon. Come, Moon and Star, and gaze upon the heart. Yeah. Well, the, the best ASMR was, um... What was it? Uh... Like, tender and emotionally intelligent Funky Kong consoles you about your divorce while driving you home from the airport. It was something like that. It was amazing. Uh, I'd recommend that to everyone, actually. Uh, Asriel loved his sibling, but they didn't really strike him as a world-saving hero like Tomoda was saying. And who is this Susie girl? Had Chris finally made a new friend? Pizza Pants, on the other hand, had been a completely frozen and nostalgia-based delirium ever since he realized Tomoda was his own creation. He'd spent so long trying to forget his his past fandom experiences that to be literally looking one of them in the face was quite jarring. He thought he remembered vomiting halfway through Tomoda's monologue, but that might have just been his brain vomiting due to the overload of information he just received. Um, is there vomit? Epidem. He didn't literally puke, but he mentally puked, so I'm going to count that. He thought about puking. Alright, I'm about to flip the flip out if I don't get a joint within the next 10 seconds. All of <laughs> I love this guy. I need my fentanyl-laced cereal milk. All of the Lightners looked at May, who was looking off into the distance and whistling like a cartoon character trying to be inconspicuous. May? Alex said sternly. Ah, uh, yeah. May answered innocently. Hand over the joint to the weird ogre thing. <laughs> Instead of a troll, Alex put his hand out. You'll never take me alive, May hissed as she gracefully hopped up on top of an eight-foot-tall stack of pizza boxes in one leap. She does have that vert. I don't doubt it. Pizza Pants ASMR. Damn, that would be good. Roy's DM Suilus the Funky Kong ASMR video four times. I think that might count as harassment. I might have to talk about that. Um, eventually, May was brought down to the ground and had to be restrained, kicking and screaming as Alex took the last blunt she had on her and gave it to Tomoda who started frothing at the mouth as soon as he saw the weed. This is like an adventure game, you have to give weed to the NPC to progress. He snatched it out of Alex's hands. <laughs> D Detective Halligan would jerry-rig a blunt out of, like, gunpowder and uh, drain cleaner or something and kill Tomoda instantly to take his money. But... He snatched it out of Alex's hand and took a single puff of the devil's lettuce. Instantly, his whole demeanor seemed to relax as he loosened his shoulders and straightened the sunglasses on his face. Even his voice sounded different now, as now he seemed to be doing leet speak with a New York accent. Don't tell me his typing quirk changes when he's fucking high, that's not fair. Gamzee's quirk doesn't change when he's high. Is that because he's always high though? Oh god. Um, with a New York accent. Well, th thanks homie, if, uh, if I don't get a hit of that zone, I might have to get down on business and open a can of uh, pizza. Uh, uh. What? What is, what's happening? A New York, New York. It takes sunlight to get the plant to work. Richard Feynman is the only way I know to do a New York accent. Hey, thanks, homie. If I didn't get a get a hit on zone, I hit zone, I might have had to get back down in the business and open a can of whoop ass on you. Foles. Foles. You feel me? Anyway, let's roll out of this joint and cook, coke these pizza freaks. This is... I, I don't care. The warranty is void. Anything that comes out of my mouth when I'm reading this, you'll have to deal with. I'm not apologizing. Gamzee's quirk literally does change when he's high. You forgot. Hey man, I can't be worrying about all the typing quirks. It's all motherfucking miracles. You get it, man? You get it. I promise I've read Homestuck. I promise I've actually read it. It was um, several years ago, though. Uh, 
where the fuck was I? With that, Pizza Pants suddenly vomited for real. Yay! For the next 10 minutes, he was hunched over the bathroom toilet, puking, while Asriel held his hair back out of his face. Yeah, man, get it all out, man. Pizza Pants felt so sick that he didn't even register that Asriel was touching him, which also might have made him vomit. Is this a common reaction to gay? You just vomit? Interesting. Why had he repressed his memories of Tomoda for so long? Now that he thought about it, he couldn't really think about any of his high school interests for too long or he would get splitting headaches, so the trauma he endured in these fandoms, especially Homestuck, must have been too scaring to overcome. It kind of reminded him of his postmodern, this postmodern RPG he played once, oh my god. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Pizza Pants has like a literal repression demon in his head who, who was like blocking out his Homestuck fandom. trailed off. Pizza Pants decided he could absolutely not tell anyone where Tomoda came from. It would be a bad idea to have to explain to the troll that he was his dad. <laughs> is, it, is it okay if Pizza Pants is your dad now? Hey, Pizza Pants, Asriel asked once Pizza Pants was feeling a little better. What was that one webcomic you used to be a big fan of? Um, control out delete pizza pants scrambled <laughs> trying to dodge the question as he looked down to icy's face printed onto the toilet bowl with his mouth being placed right over the hole no not that one it's just i think i recognized tomoto from somewhere it's like one of those 10 million page long comics you were a fan of in high school asriel tried to think about what tomoto reminded him of yet nothing was coming to mind say higarashi uh, uh control out delete's pretty long pizza pants had begun to sweat but unfortunately for him, it wasn't noticeable that the layer of pizza grease that had accumulated on him over time. <laughs> Wait, how would you see sweat underneath the fur anyway? I guess you, you do in a sprite work, so whatever. At the moda, I'm your ectobiological father. Never mind, maybe I'm just overthinking things, but if this place is supposed to be based off of objects and ICs, then what is Tomota supposed to be? Asriel sighed. He couldn't handle thinking about anything too hard right now when his whole world had just been turned upside down. Flip turned upside down! For the first time in his life, he wished he could be like Alex, whose reaction to everything was to put his arms on his head while making this weird face and freak out for five minutes. At least he had some consistency. Hmm. While Pizza Pants was hur hurling his guts out, the rest of the group was investigating outside the pizzeria in the cheese dunes while passing around the blunt. Uh, Hero's voice was just completely my normal voice, I think. So like, yeah, my girlfriend died uh, and, and that's why I want to be a doctor, you know? I want to help people so I can like save the people I care about and stuff. Hero lamented as he stared off into the endless sands of mozzarella. Hiro only smoked during emergencies, and it was understandable why, as he'd become ridiculously high after a single hit. <laughs> How do you throw up on weed, man? Hey, dude, cool it with that. All we care about right... Oh, wait. <laughs> I got baited. I got baited. Hey, dude, don't cool it with that. We all care about you right now. Alex put a hand on Hiro's shoulder in solidarity. He typically suddenly gained empathy for others after a few puffs of weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> he typically did this. Evil Alex smoking his empathy weed. Careful, he's gonna bite Spyro's dog in a second. Damn it! Why they never warned about Zdeos until it's too late? Tomoda made a fist and shook it at the sky, waving around his uh, around his knife in his other hand. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, she didn't die by falling downstairs, Hiro glared at Tomoda. No, no! Trust me, guy! It's always the stairs! Tomoda gave a knowing wink to Hiro despite the tears accumulating in his eyes. Mei was sobbing at Hiro's story and with her own life. 
and her, at her own life while drinking the vape juice from the jewel pods she had in her pocket because she didn't have anything left to smoke them with. I wish I had a girlfriend. She choked out between tears. She typically suddenly lost empathy for others after a few puffs of weed. <laughs> Uh, th this fic is like barely about Azzy Pants at all, but it's just like this this stupid like crack group of friends is really funny. What the hell's going on here? I don't think there's any direct reference to uh the, to drugs in Night in the Woods that I can recall. Like May gets drunk and goes crazy, but never actually smokes apparently. I warned you about stairs, bro. Well, yeah, there was the meth lab, but none of the characters were taking drugs, I mean. Uh, Pizza Pants and Asriel emerged from the pizzeria to see this tomfoolery unfolding. As Azriel looked at his bumbling group of comrades, he realized that his group probably needed the leader, and if they wanted to save Chris, he didn't exactly believe in the leadership of the grey monster that was currently on the ground poking a bunch of icy ants with a knife. Alright guys, Azriel clapped his hands together and was about to give a really motivational speech, but before he could say anything else, Nemoda began loudly talking over him. All right, y'all. We're about to ascend into the night layer of corporate hell. We're talking some real bored, posed scratch megalovania double mobius sweet bro Ella Jeff Conair baby is you off the uh, off the hook off the hook type shit that would make some of the coolest motherfuckers in paradox space turn heel and r uh, run crying home to the Lulus like an idiot baby still zuckling on troll zigs. <laughs> yeah. It's the whole paragraph is his quote. No fucking no. <laughs> you men gotta be strapped to the teeth if you wanna make it out of here alive. Back in some wicked sweet eat like I got here. He pulled out his he pulled out a second kitchen knife and somehow twirled it around his fingers like a butterfly knife. My knives are known as the wood fired blades of Yakuzaka. I, I no, I uh Ayahuasca? The wood fired blades of Ayahuasca. I personally crafted and decorated them myself for maximum ass beaten. You don't so you don't have to worry about getting your ass handed to you, as long as you can at least uh zo the lock in during the battle or riz up the enemy. He proudly showed off the knives, which were just store-bought kitchen knives with the words Wood Fired Blades of Ayahuasca Why Ayahuasca? Why is that? <laughs> Scrawled onto each of them with Sharpie. One of them still had a Walmart price tag attached to it. Try and keep up with me, and we might actually live through this shit and save the universes. Then we're gonna celebrate by going troll Disney World to shake up Obama's hand and kick Mickey Mouse right up the ass since we just saved the fat corporate rad's ass from total multiversal destruction. Let's pull up on all those gones. Go-go-gones. What? This implies Riz was a term when Pizza Pants was a child. Stop, stop, Roy, stop poking holes in it. That was fucking delirious. Okay. Thanks for specifying a New York accent leet speak. That was great. It's like a. The voice I'm doing is like how I'd picture Richard Feynman talking if he was like on a, a near lethal dose of morphine but was still trying to give a physics lecture. They're goons. Uh, it's okay. Typing quirks don't have to make sense or be pronounceable. Just replace the vowels with eight. I don't know. Fuck it. The speech was a lot more inspiring and a lot more nonsensical than the one Asriel had planned to say. And May gave a standing ovation for him once he finished. Tomoda, uh, dapped up May. Dapped? Uh, and the two of them promptly charged at the giant gate of the pizza tower, with May's oversized hoodie flapping in the wind behind her like a cape as she screamed a battle cry. Wait, isn't May wearing uh, a giant hoodie with pictures of like motivational cat posters on it or something? 
there, there was it was implied that like she and Alex got so fucked up the previous night that they like had some weird kind of hookup but don't remember it properly but they actually were sober the whole time and didn't realize it it's something like that uh and Alex hurriedly followed her to not be left out. Asriel and Pizza Pants moved to follow them, but Pizza Pants stumbled as soon as he tried to take another step. He was seeing spots in his vision that were suspiciously shaped like sweet bro as pages of Homestuck danced in and out of his mind. The sudden flooding of Homestuck back into Pizza Pants' consciousness seemed to be overloading his mind as 8,129 pages of webcomic returned to his memories. <laughs> His face turned the shade of Tomoda's skin as the sweat on his face began to show through the pizza grease. Pizza Pants, what did you do? But whatever memories he has of Homestuck are so traumatic he literally repressed them. Like, what happened, Pizza Pants? Holy shit. Did you donate your college fund to the Hive Swap Kickstarter or something? Like, what's, what's your deal? He prayed he wouldn't once again contribute to the overarching theme of vomit in this story. He was the Sharpie bath guy. <laughs> he was one of the- in the spit bucket video. He was the guy holding the camera. I don't know any other Homestuck uh, fandom meme stories, unfortunately. Pizza pants? Asriel bleated as he moved to catch the ragdolling pizza pants. He fell straight into Asriel's arms, and as he looked up, he could see Asriel's beautiful face through the gif. Through the gifts of various children falling downstairs, clouding his mind. He's got poisoned. You're just hallucinating spaz, it's really bad. As Pizza Pants realized that Asriel was holding him, he suddenly came to his senses and intended to make a sound that sounded like an apology. Yet it sounded more like a cross between a purr and a moan. Ugh, ugh, ugh. At this noise, Asriel started blushing furiously and forgot that he was holding onto Pizza Pants, dropping him onto the cheesy st sands. Ah, ah, I'm sorry, Pizza Pants. Are you alright? Asriel cried as Pizza Pants slowly picked himself off the ground and brushed the strands of mozzarella off of his Zelda shirt. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's alright, Azzy. I'm just feeling a little woozy right now. Pizza Pants tried to give a smooth, nonchalant shrug, yet instead his arms looked like they were doing the wave. I hope you know I cry whenever you make that sound. Oh. 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 Are you sure? I can help you walk over there if you want. Asriel reached out a hand for Pizza Pants to hold, being smooth and nonchalant without even trying to be. At this move, Pizza Pants tried his best to look as ill as possible, which wasn't very hard for him to do as he tended to look sick whenever he talked to Asriel. <laughs> Well, uh, actually, I think my uh, allergies are flaring up or something. Pizza Pants took Asriel's hand in his own, which was hard due to how greasy his hand was. And the two of them were hand-holding in a slightly lewd way. Oh, come on, you're fishing. You're fishing. Uh, where is it? What even is this lewd hand-holding meme? I've seen it before on, like, online spaces, but I don't know the origin of it. As they walked toward the rest of their party, Hiro, completely baked, was forgotten about and left behind as he stared blankly off toward the sun, which was contorted into looking like the sun baby thing from Teletubbies, with Icy's face instead. Excellent. I like how that's the most efficient description. It's true, though. Went to prison once after my, after my wind hand touched an atom of another person on the street. Whoa. Teletubbies is canon to Undertale. Alfie's makes a uh, tubby custard in her bedroom. I don't know what she does with it, but she she's got the machine. Oh, it's like the ankle picks. It's the same vibe as lewd hand holding, maybe. I, I assumed it would be, be more specific than that. She gives it to Undyne. What does Undyne do with it? It's food, I assume, right? 
Or is that just the ice cream that she talks about? It's probably the ice cream. The rest of the group stood at the giant JPEG of Icy as it adorned the tower's gates. Alex looked up at it inquisitively, or at least he would have if he knew that the words if he knew what the word inquisitive meant. He's an English major. You can't you can't diss Alex's vocabulary at least. So, uh, how are we going to get this thing open? Asriel asked. Komoda chuckled and straightened his aviators up on his nose even though they were perfectly in place already. Just let me out cook on this one, Twink! <laughs> Fucking Tomoda. <laughs> That's right, you newbie in Delph! Tomoda grinned. Asriel and Pizza Pants looked at each other, unsure of which one of them was the Twink. <laughs> Tomoda was referring to... Don't worry, both. In a flash, Tomoda pulled out his knives, took a deep breath in and out within a single second, and completely slashed the door to ribbons, leaving it in bits and pieces. Uh, hmm, well, never mind. As it was destroyed, the door made a sound that sounded like the low-quality screams you would expect during an analog horror series jump scare. Okay. However, what was behind the door was even stranger. Behind the gate was another gate that looked exactly the same as the last one. Um... Timota looked confusedly at everyone else. That isn't normally here! The eyes of the Icy's JPEG suddenly darted down toward the group, and the devilish face opened its mouth to reveal a gaping void within. As the party stared into the abyss of Icy's, a vortex suddenly began to pull the group into the mouth of the monster. Timota was the first to be pulled in. As he leapt into the mouth of the beast without hesitation, knives drawn, screaming for something along the lines of, Remember me! Gojo Zenzai! Uh, that's probably a reference to some anime. To me, I'm getting a Pirates of the Caribbean vibes, you know, when Jack Sparrow jumps into the Kraken. It's basically the same. Oh, it's Jujutsu Kaisen. Which was the uh, the favorite anime of the uh, ex Ozeki sumo wrestler Shodai, by the way. That's a known fact. Probably still is. I don't know why I said was. Uh, I'm reading a fanfic in honor of the upcoming fifth anniversary of Silk Song's announcement. Uh, is it the fifth or um? When did they announce it? Like, Valentine's Day? <laughs> it's supposed to be a Valentine's Day stream, but... Uh, yeah, happy birthday, Silk Song. It's definitely tomorrow. They're definitely going to reveal the release date tomorrow. Along with the Elden Ring DLC. Oh. Okay, where the fuck are we at here? May leapt into Alex's arms instinctively like a frightened cat, and the two of them fought against the pull of the vortex, and each other simultaneously, as they were dragged into the abyss together. Pizza Pants, still holding on to Asriel's hand, managed to react quickly, even though his homestuck brain rot, even through his homestuck brain rot, by grabbing onto a convenient tree branch that was sticking out of the ground and holding on for dear life. The suction was now so great that the two of them were floating off the ground as Pizza Pants tried to hold on. As Pizza Pants looked back toward his beloved, he could tell that the vortex was sucking Asriel harder than Pizza Pants ever had, and that was really saying something. <laughs> I think that same line was in the first chapter, too. Fucking nice callback. Uh, very good. Wait a minute. That's on the bingo. Where is it here? There we go. Um, I guess retroactively we have all this shit too to fill in weed. Um, did they eat pizza previously? There was a night. There's an OC. Burger Pants is OC. Divorce, Sans, Umris. That's, that's fine. Seems fine. They did eat pizza? Okay. There we go. Should this be ongoing from previously? Because they, they did get drunk earlier. Oh, but no, they didn't. Sans was just giving them water the whole time and they got placeboed. So never mind. 
It was the adult soda from uh, Undertale Yellow. Oh yeah, Sans cameo. Right you are. Oops, wrong one. Do we know Pizza Pants' name yet? How's that come up? I cannot remember. Okay. When Pizza Pants awoke, the first thing he noticed was that Tomoda was standing over him. The second thing he noticed was that there was a blunt in his mouth. He spit the blunt out and sat up to survey his surroundings. The good news was that it seemed like there was, like they were somewhere inside of the pizza tower. Yet the bad news was that they were in the pizza tower. The place that Pizza Pants was in could only be described as liminal. The layout looked similar to the back rooms itself, from TikTok, yet instead of the randomly placed infinite walls being covered with dull yellow wallpaper, they were adorned with endless advertisements of varying quality, from BUY YOUR PIZZAS PLEASE, to I SEES BURNING 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 TO SHOW YOU HIS SAUCE, with various distorted images of ICs attached to them. The floor pattern was what appeared to be a blue blob. Yet Pizza Pants somehow registered that this was another JPEG of Icy stretched to cover the entire floor plan of the area. However, Pizza Pants quickly stopped caring about where he was, because he realized that Asriel was nowhere to be seen. It was Rory? Oh god. Fuck me, yeah. Uh, quite carefully avoiding all the bingos, I gotta say. My, my tea consumption is accelerating here as my voice starts to get a little bit tired. Um, I may have to refill it before too long, and then I can keep going for longer. Wait, what? asks out Sin. Uh, what about what? I don't think they've kissed yet, have they? I don't recall that. As Pizza Pants frantically looked around, the only other people he could see nearby were Hiro, who currently seemed to be in a marijuana-induced catatonic state, his unmoving eyes looking up at the ceiling, and Tomoda, who was currently smoking the blunt that Pizza Pants had spit out. Pizza Pants briefly wondered why Tomoda hadn't just smoked that blunt in the first place instead of taking mates. Thank Jesus! Wait, who's Jigus? Is that some homestrip lore I forgot about? Probably. Thank Jeez Jigus, you woke up! I was starting to worry that the medical marijuana wasn't working! Tomoda sighed as he took another drag. You're lucky that I always carry an emergency smoke for healing! Damn, I'm tired of all these knights of Jam M Knight Jamaland wizards up in this bitch! Bitch, bitch, bitch. Where the hell is Asriel? Pizza Pants shouted, almost frantic with worry. Oh, Angel, if only he'd ever held- if, if only he'd just held on to Asriel as it got pulled into this place. This was his own fault, and now who knows where Asriel could be, if he even managed to make it out of- Don't worry, guy! Your bottom made it out safely! Jesus Christ, Tomoda. This guy was just designed to be the most horrifying presence possible in the narrative. Respectable. He's, he's, he kind of fills the role of Spamton in election trucking. The, there's, there's a parallel there. Just an extra dimensional entity designed to be a disaster. Tomoda replied, answering the question of who the twink he was referring to earlier was. How do you know that? Pizza Pants chattered, as if he was biting his nails to the point where, um, as he was biting his nails to the point where they were the most smooth they'd been since Asriel left for college. Cause I hit up that hipster asshole, and he said that Azriel and that cat thing were chillin' with them elsewhere in this joint. Oh, he didn't mean the bottom thing, he just meant how do you know where he is. Okay. How are you able to call them? There's no service here, and I tried when we got here. Pizza Pants grumbled, unconvinced. Show me your phone, I showed it to the- 
that the others are way to communicate in this place before, and you didn't. Uh, you and the twink went outside. Before Pizza Pants could respond, Timota yanked his phone out of his hands and began looking for something on it. We're lucky that this vacuum thing spit us out here. This is like the hub between the various zones in the tower, where there should be a friendly village for us to get up camp or village for us to, to get up camp at nearby if we look around and investigate like Scooby Doo, smoking on Scooby Doo dick, and this donut dude he always cracking the, open the cold one with. Oh shit! You already got the best to jump on your phone. I'll slide your handle over. The, I'll slide your handle over the others. He tossed Pizza Pants' phone back to him. I hate this character. I hate reading his dialogue. I hate this guy. This this is sucks. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm getting lightheaded. Zdobi do is not an easy word in the typing quirk, no. Pestercha. Pizza Pants could remember it somehow. It seemed as if the Homestuck inspired messaging app was slightly disconnected from his memories of Homestuck enough for it to not be suppressed with the rest of his fandom memories, because Pizza Pants knew that a lot of his old online friends came from there. Pizza Pants had mostly forgotten about it and the people he hung out with there. Uh, half out of the Homestuck memory repression, but also simply because he didn't have time to larp as his troll Sona on the internet anymore. He thought he remembered being really good friends with one girl there, yet he couldn't seem to remember anything else about her. Uh, what's that a reference to? I don't know. As Pizza Pants booted up the Pestershem mobile app, he was immediately hit with a wave of nostalgia. And this time, this one didn't make him vomit. Second after refamiliarizing re himself with the interface, he was immediately greeted by a message from an unknown account. Pizza Pants immediately prepared to act nonchalant and unworried about the situation if it was Asriel. Because Asriel wouldn't be able to tell that Pizza Pants was hyperventilating through the phone screen if he styled his typing style after his childhood hero Dave Strider. <laughs> this has just become the Homestuck fanfic now. I see. I see how it is. Florist Hyperdeath began pestering Saucy Tragedy. <laughs> Not bad. I feel like Saucy Tragedian would be even better though. Uh, hey Andrew, what do you think of the Naive Bayes Multinomial Classification Algorithm? Uh, Bayesian classification. I think I had to program that once in a, an intro to AI course. I forget what it does though. You didn't watch the previous stream. What's happening? Uh, this is like three chapters into an ongoing fic. It's it's like Asriel goes to college with a bunch of other like um, college-aged indie game protagonists, and they all come back to hometown. Um, and then they get, now they're in a dark world, basically, and also Pizza Pants is there with his, a darkener that was created from an old Homestuck OC that he threw into the garbage there, and it's now tormenting him, it's great. Alex Yeek is here. Um, I think a, tr like, a tragedian is someone who writes tragedy, right? I I'm pretty sure that's a word. Like how, uh... Who, who's the guy who wrote the tragedies? Like Oedipus and shit. Um, it's not Sophocles, that's a different guy, I think. Uh, am I thinking of Socrates and Sophocles was the playwright? Oh, a tragedian is someone who plays in tragedies. It is Sophocles, nice. What's my opinion on the falling cat problem? I don't know it. Yeah, we're talking like Antigone by Sophocles and shit. Uh, Pizza Pants, is this you? You, you? you gotta be reading pester logs in a fucking Azzy Pants fanfic. This is fucked up. 
Ezreal, this you? Yeah, it is. Are you all right? What happened to you guys? I tried to get Alex to tell us what Tomota told him, but he wasn't making sense, and neither were Tomota's messages when I looked at them. Sounds about right for him. I know, right? So, seriously, where are you guys? Me, Tomoda, and that lightweight friend of yours are in, like, the back rooms area of the town. What are the back rooms? Uh, uh, uh don't worry about it. Point is, uh, point is, I think we're safe for now. Tomoda can probably handle things with this, like, weird troll magic or whatever. I'm not scared at all right now. Uh, where you at? We gotta find each other. Uh, I'm not really sure. It looks like pizzeria. It looks like the pizzeria, but something's definitely wrong with it. What do you mean? It's hard to explain, but there's something really eerie in the air. Oh shit, I hope it's not a gas leak. We, ha we had one of those months ago, and the warrior kept trying to tell us the smell was just uh, the fresh smell of bloody warfare. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not that. Something is definitely wrong with this place, though. The doors are all locked, and I just know that something awful will happen if I try to open them. Is it FNAF? It's probably FNAF or some shit. Uh, hey, do it. Stay safe out there. Hmm. I I'll listen to that, but only if you promise me that you'll quit your job once we get out of here. What the fuck? Where did that come from? Rory, I can tell this place is a nightmare to work at, even when there isn't this demonic dimension inside of it. Remember when we were talking about just a few hours ago? You need to put yourself out there more, set higher goals for yourself. You gotta have a job, but this place is just hell on earth, and I know Isis is sucking your soul away. I care about you a lot, and I don't want you to be stuck working here forever. Come on, this is unfair. And I haven't even heard you say my real name in ages, so don't try to play with my feelings. I'm going to not stay safe if you don't agree to my terms, honey. Honey! Yo! He's going hard on it. Uh, Daniel Dunkovsky is a prime material for an Azzy Pants fic. Is that a real name? It sounds like a... A parody, like Dankovsky. I'm the dankest guy in the world. Uh, who knows? I illegally signed away my soul to work for the CEO Overlord of Ices. I can't just quit. Question your question mark? Whatever, this isn't important now. If you see each other again, I'll think about it, but you'll owe me. Let me know when you get out. Uh, sorry. Let me know when you get out of Evil Ices. Okay, if we can get out of here at all. Don't say that. I know you probably think I'm in like super scared right now, but it's actually the opposite. I don't know about the others, but uh, I know you're super tough. I can't imagine you getting your ass beat by anything uh, that could be in this nightmare. I know you can figure out your way through this. Aw, oh, thank you so much, Pizza Pants. I believe in you too, so I better see you soon. Good luck out there. Uh, hugs and kisses, Asriel. Yeah, it's getting real. I, I've honestly forgotten at this point in the fic what the status of their relationship is. I thought it was still a little bit more on the down though, but Asriel's being like real flirty. Pizza Pants' heart was racing as his conversation with Asriel concluded. Asriel had called him Honey and signed off his matches with XOXO instead of the standard XO <laughs> that he left at the end of most of his texts to friends for some strange reason, which had never been, which had to have been some sort of sign that they were getting closer, right? That's funny to specify. Um, as a conversation, uh, or, I'm starting to yawn now. That's a sign that the lightheadedness is getting chronic. Um, as of their conversation, he was kind of bullshitting when he tried to encourage Asriel, which was easy to do over the internet. Yet at the same time, he couldn't imagine never seeing Asriel again. That certainly gave him some sort of strange comfort and strength. Pizza Pants looked toward the sky, or rather, the ad-covered ceiling, and gave a silent prayer to the angel, or Jigus, or Gandalf, or whatever mythos Percy Jackson was based off of, that Asriel and him would be reunited. With his thought collected, and uh, his regained knowledge of Homestuck increasing his intelligence stat without breaking his brain anymore. <laughs> Great. 
pizza the, the the idea that pizza pants had to had to nuke his homestuck memory so hard that he gave himself like brain damage he lowered his iq he had to shut off like 20 percent of his cerebral cortex to block out the homestuck memories um with his thoughts collected and his regained knowledge of homestuck etc uh, pizza pants rose from the floor feeling braver than he had in a long time However, before he logged off Pesterchum, he noticed that he had received one more message. This one received approximately five seconds after he had opened the app for the first time. Yowie aficionado <laughs> began a pestering saucy tragedy. Is this fucking- who is this? Lizzie or some shit? This is probably Lizzie, oh god. You made her a homestuck fan. Um, this breaks new- oh god, it's Lizzie for sure. I'm Girari! Uh, who this? It's been so long, I can't believe it's really you! Uh, sorry, I think you got the wrong number, handle or whatever. Don't tell me you forgot about me, bestie! I'm Azela, remember? Ulu. Wait, is that on the, uh, Umrizi Pants bingo card? I thought it was here. It's Lizzie says UVU. I think this counts. It's close enough. Um, yeah. Wait, are you that one girl I used to talk to a lot on here? Sorry, my brain, like, repressed all my homestuck memories for, like, two years, and I'm still recovering from that. Oh, no! I'm so sorry! I can't imagine living in a world without a homestuck. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. You were the person who I first showed me homestuck. I owe you so much for that, bestie. You were like the Regan to my mob, my mentor in the ways of suburb. We were such a power ship together, but, like, in a platonic way. You mean we're friends? OMG, yeah, exactly! We used to spend so much time making troll sonas and making stories for them, and sometimes shipping them together is spicy. <laughs> With Dave and John and Carcat and Riska and all of them except Equius. I wasn't just homestuck though, we were a force to be reckoned with in every fandom, fighting for the forces of good in every internet argument together against the objectively wrong takes, like it was the battles between Jojo and Dale. Uh, sorry. I, I tried to go into the... I, I can't explain where my mind was going there. Somehow the, the Lizzie voice merged with a Dio Brando impression and it, it didn't go well. Jojo! Wow, that, uh, that actually sounds sick. I know, right? Colin. Equius is a good character. Azela needs to be shot. Uh, she could have referenced. Who's that one? Um. No, not Makara's Gamzee's last name. I'm, I'm thinking of the Dancesters. <laughs> there are some stinkers in there. Let's let's get Concrete in here. I can't believe this is really you! We have so much to catch up on! What fandoms are you into now? Do you have any new OCs? What anime are you watching? Are you caught up on One Piece yet? Did you finish the 280,000 page homesick fanfic you were working on? Did you make more art with Tomoda in it? What college did you go to? Do you have a new Tumblr now? Did you finally accept your sexuality? Are you dating that mysterious crush you kept telling me about? Have you played Deltarune? OMG, I love Deltarune! It's like the best thing ever! Maybe even better than Homestuck! I know, right? It sounds crazy, but it's true! Oh, like, so, do you have any uh, Deltarune chips? Like, I'm super, 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 super into this one! It's really obscure streamers covering! The ship between two of my favorite characters, and their names are- Wait a minute, did she just reference fucking Deltarune? <laughs> they just dawned on me. What the fuck are you doing? Stop it. Whoa, 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 slow down, we'll do one thing at a time. Uh, listen, I'd love to catch up right now, but I have to go, like, save the world or something. OMG, like in Homestuck? Yeah, but I, I don't think that was a plot of Homestuck. It's close enough. Uh, but seriously, I'd love to talk to you later about this stuff. That's kind of freaking me out. Like, I just forgot most of the memories I made online. Yay! I go for you. Thank you, bestie. Uh, no problem, dude. 
Okay, it's been so good to see you again, Rory. Uh, good luck saving the world. I appreciate it, yeah. Deltarun in Deltarun. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, Azale is like some sort of outside higher force is explaining chat. That somehow exists in Pizza Pants' reality. They only know each other online, right? Th that that doesn't preclude uh, like Azela being from a higher reality who's just communicating via this messaging app. Uh, kind of like in Homestuck, actually, come to think of it. That that's part of the course in Homestuck is is beings in different universes talking over like pester chum. That's the whole fucking comic. That's all they do. And and perceiving the other real in, perceiving the other reality through the interface of a video game. Wait a minute. It's all it's literally Homestuck again. It's all just Homestuck. It always has been. Oh God. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Is the ACDS duck versus Lizzie and Rizzy pants? I want to see that. Pizza pants closed the Pester Chum app. His headache returning to him. This girl Azela seemed like a handful, yet he could vaguely remember them having the relationship that she described to him. He felt a faint nostalgia toward the memory of spending late nights swapping fanfic ideas and crusading against enemy fandoms. I can't even lie, I've, I've been there. That was like 2016 for me basically also somewhat repressed at this point. She would have to talk to her again later. Also, what was the name of the game she mentioned? Deltarune? He'd never heard of the game before, but he thought it might be worth taking a look at when he got home, or rather, if he got back home. Pizza Pants took a deep breath in and gathered his thoughts. Then he turned to Tomoda, who had been trying to shake Hiro awake from his weed-induced coma. Ah, uh, hey. She asked Tomoda. Can we use Pesta Chum in the Dark World when there's no cell service here? He was usually an ast this was an unusually astute observation coming for him. Because the Pesta Chum service exists outside space and time. Continuum, obviously. Tomoda scoffed. Some people say the app can even reach into different universes, but I don't really buy that crap. Law Look, is this really important right now? Future Arach Arachnid's grip? What the fuck is... Was that Vriska's pester handle or something? Utra Arachnid? What is that a reference to? Ominous. Uh, Pizza Pants could tell that Tomoda was starting to get agitated again. He's entering a rage state. Do not activate him. So he told Tomoda to take another hit of the medicinal blunt, which Tomoda didn't need to be told twice to do. Communicating between universes, huh? There was no way that a messaging app could let people chat across the multiverse. But considering all the shit that Pizza Pants had seen today, it honestly wouldn't be surprising to him. Suddenly, a large object was pushed into his arms by Tomoda. This large object was Hiro, who kept repeating something about sandwiches and stares under his breath, looking off into nothing. Those are his personality traits, astute. Sorry about this, mate, but I couldn't wake this lightweight up with my medicinal blunts only gonna make things worse. So, you're gonna have to carry him around this place instead of me. No offense, but I think I'm a little more capable in a fight than you. Wait, what? Pizza Pants managed to choke out, already buckling under Hero's weight. Who are we gonna have to fight? Himoda solemn solemnly pointed toward a painting that was placed in the middle of an advertisement of the advertisement wallpaper. That bastard! This was a painting of someone Pizza Pants was all too familiar with. The break rooms and ICs were completely devoid of any furniture whatsoever, as to make sure employees didn't stay there too long. The only two things Pizza Pants had ever seen in that room were a sign that took up half the wall that proclaimed, IC says get back to work! And an exact replica of the painting Tomoda was pointing to. The man in the picture was very large, even bigger than Purple Guy, wearing a three-piece suit with a novelty clip-on tie with a design that resembled a pepperoni pizza. Around his neck was a gold chain, and on his head was icy mascot head that no one had ever seen him take off. This was none other than the award-winning rapper and CEO overlord of Icy's corporation, Ultima Nasty Master Ice. 
geek ass name. What can I say? Ultima Nasty Master Ice. I, I don't even want to dissect which ones are like first name, middle name, last name. It's just, just whatever. Yeah, that's his name. That's all first name, actually, I think. Oh yeah, H Hero from Amori is just here. He got too high and passed out. Yeah, this is the Lord English of Homebound. True. How the fuck? I don't think I can remember this. There was some, uh... This was way back before I knew what the fuck Homestuck was. This was like in 2015, when I first read, um... That one by one, the that the original career new fanfic, and there was some reference in it, I think, to Lord English, but it was like veiled in a way that I couldn't tell what the fuck it was supposed to mean, and it was described as like a muscular green guy who really hates clocks. That's his whole personality, or maybe he really liked clocks. I can't remember. That stuck with me though. Uh, now I'm usually a pretty chill dude, Komoda grimaced. But if there's one thing that really gets my ass tingling, it's when the man that people want to stick it to is picking on the little guys and whacking up their shit. And Ultima Nasty Masterize is the maniest man I ever seen, man. He's been burning this once peaceful tower all out of whack with this gopo mumbo jumbo and evil monsters everywhere ever since he came to power cause of some sort of night that bowled up recently what if in what I need is you lightness to do is to help me reach the top floor of the tower with zid ass zid his ass down oh my god I've been brewing up a rebellion in the streets to make Mazda rice down uh, and with your lightness in the mix, I think we're making this happen, capiche? We can take back my home, and also maybe uh, save the other lightness too, if Mazda Rice actually kidnapped them at all, I don't know. Are you with me, pal? <laughs> Horrible voice. Andrew, tell them about Courier New Undertale Yellow Fix. Okay, yeah, so there's actually two Courier New Fix, the two most recent ones. Are, are about Undertale Yellow, which is unusual in that, um, well, I guess it's the first time that Courier's done anything of like a, that's like a, a fanfic of a fanfic from Undertale, although he did have an earlier one that was based on a Lisa fan game, so I guess it, it's not completely unprecedented, but yeah, they're very good. They're very, very good. Um, a whole ass uh, character study on uh, Chujin. Uh, was the was the most recent one, and I was I'm very impressed by that. What's the other one? Oh, it's uh, it was just like a post-ending thing about like Martlet being sad. It's fairly straightforward, but but quality stuff. Courier is very good at writing about people being sad for long periods of time. It's a strength of his. Uh, Anyway. Pizza Pants didn't understand any of that bullshit. It, he wasn't exactly sad about having to kill the fantasy version of CEO Overlord of Ices. <laughs> and also saving Chris sounded like a good idea too. His little buddy, you know? Maybe he could be Asriel's knight in shining armor, saving his sibling from a nasty fate. He gave up on singing... Uh, he gave up on slinging Hero over his back and began to drag his body along the ground <laughs> as he walked over to Tomota. Uh, sounds good to me, Pizza Pants said. Let's get this show on the road. That was the best one-liner he could come up with. Tomoda reached out his hand, and the two of them gave each other a bro-hug bump as Hiro groaned with pain on the ground. Author's note, there may or may not be an image or two at the end of the chapter. If you don't want to be preemptively spoiled on that, maybe scroll the paragraph one at a time. Okay, I, I gotcha. Let's see where it starts. Okay, that's fine. Oh, 
a very- No, I think the bro hug bump is aggressively heterosexual. Nothing gay about it. Alright. Elsewhere, Asriel, May, and Alex were in a much worse state. They had been trapped in what seemed like an exact replica of Icy's for the past hour, and all the doors into the restaurant were completely locked. Asriel didn't want anyone to try to break the, down the door, due to what they found beyond Icy's door when they first entered the Dark World. But after an hour or three of them playing poker against each other to pass the time while they waited for help, May decided that she was at her limit after she lost a particularly high value round because she thought straight were worth more than flushes. I've had it with this place. I'm tired of all this damn pizzeria and these damn cards. And Alex was the one who wanted to come here for lunch anyway, and I hate all of you. She screamed out all in one. Uh, running to the front door and running through uh, it head first before Asriel could stop her. What she saw only proved Asriel right. She had gone through the front door of Icy's only to end up on the other side of the back door to another replica of the restaurant. It seemed as if they were stuck in infinitely looping pizzeria. Damn. The bro hug bump is aggressively gay and straight. <laughs> Too true. Yeah. I'm what you call a hetero homosexual. Yes, this is indeed the next few chapters of Homebound. Um. It keeps happening! Alex yelled, doing the arms on head and weird face thing again. Asriel simply put his palm to his forehead and wished his migraine would go away. Elsewhere, elsewhere, Pizza Pants and Tomota and a comatose hero set off on their journey through the liminal hub of the Pizza Tower. However, Pizza Pants had one more concern. Uh, so, he asked, about Ultima Nasty Master Ice. Uh, if he's the boss of this whole tower, he's got to be pretty strong, right? Tomoda thought about it for a moment. Yeah, I guess you could say he is. So if we end up fighting him, are you sure we can take him out? Tomoda grinned. I don't know about the rest of you, but personally speaking, you might give me a little trouble if we fought at full strength. Pizza Pants gave him a worried look. Would you lose? I would have chuckled. <laughs> no, I'd win. Alright, well someone is watching some JJK while they were writing this. Jesus Christ. There's another chapter? Jesus, this is long. I guess it did say, oh, that's like 8,000 words, yeah. Uh, oh, I've already left kudos. How, how long is the next chapter? Uh, it's not super long. Maybe I can read that. Oh, it's intermission one? I'm wondering if I should keep reading if I should prioritize another fic, because I'm gonna have to leave fics out anyway. Uh, it's inevitable at this point. My voice is already getting tired after four hours. It looks like it's an Umrzy Pants intermission. That's funny though. Uh, let's take stock here, okay? This one's new, I think. Awesome Nova. There's also a Pidge fic here, 10,000 words. But. Pidge is not in chat. I don't know if I can read that without Pidge actually being in chat. That would be inconsiderate. Yeah, I think I, I'm gonna prioritize some of these newer ones, the, the fresh stuff. Oh, yours wasn't read last time? Uh, oh, this one here. Okay, if that was the case, then I should prioritize this one. Let's do it. It's a Google document. Uh, yeah, this will work. Wait, the fic is done? Uh, yeah, well there was another chapter, but I decided it was like a, a Homestuck intermission, so I, I'm just gonna go to a, a new one instead. 
because I'm I have to budget my time here. I can't read all of these. There's too much. Um, okay, I'm gonna go take another quick break just to recover a bit. Um, let my brain reoxygenate after reading the Komoda dialogue. Um, but I'll be back in a few minutes.
Hello, I'm back. Oh boy, yeah. So I, I refilled my tea. That's nice. Uh, I mainly needed a break there just to kind of uh, breathe normally for a bit because I was I, I really do get lightheaded when reading some of these after long enough, and it seems like it takes a while to go away. It's kind of like becomes a persistent issue over time. Mm -hmm. I collapsed two minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. My voice is getting sore. Um, I think usually these streams have gone for like six hours. Someone was saying earlier like it's it's only been four hours. You got time to finish them all, but like, I I can't go for nine hours on on the stream like I do on Rain World sometimes, right? It, like my voice cannot speak for that long, reading constantly and doing voices. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, we need to elect someone else to be a full-time fanfic streamer to take the load off me, right? <laughs> I, can, I can just sub in, like, Gerald or something. I, maybe I can rent out one of those guys that James Rolfe pays to, like, write scripts for him. Maybe one of those guys will do it. Or get Molly on stream? Hell yeah. If, if Molly ever wants to uh, do a co-op fanfic stream, I wouldn't turn up my nose. I think she can do voices, right? That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, each person voices a character. That would be complex to uh, to coordinate, but it could be funny, I guess. Maybe for a gimmick. Like, we, the, we could swing that with the Fatal Gang or something. That would be quite funny. The voice runs out eventually, yeah. Your voice, their voice. Yeah, it's it's easy to stream Rain World for eight hours because it has two lines of dialogue <laughs> per stream. I wonder what fic we'd read though. Unless we all ganged up on fucking uh, whatever this is, the Christmas Kara. You get it's the Christmas Carol, the Christmas Kara, by Preston Cox. <laughs> it's just Pidge, by the way. I don't know. It would be funny. I'm, I'm just not sure how specifically how that would look in practice. Okay. Uh... The tea might take a little bit to steep here. I basically, I still had a little bit of lemon ginger tea and uh, I just put like a, a second peach ginger tea tea bag into it and poured more boiling water in. So it's some fucking concoction in there. I don't know. It's It's got ginger, that'll help. Uh, maybe I'll start reading, why not? I hope the music's not too loud in the VOD, by the way. I didn't really check. I think I have it turned up more than normal, but... It's not the end of the world. The music volume's a bit higher on a fanfic stream. Alright. I also have my voice volume a bit higher, too, so maybe that'll compensate. Asriel Dreamer looked over at his father, and all he could feel was guilt. It's not a good start. It's never a good start. <laughs> He'd flown from, a uh, What? Wasamoda U. What is this a reference to? I don't- I don't know. Uh, Wasamoda U to IC's International Airport, but the ride from there to hometown was still about four hours, and they had- had an hour to burn. They talked about plenty of things, like Asriel's college workload and the several eggs that kept appearing in Asgore's fridge, but not the one that was tearing him apart. So this is mid-Deltarune setting, I like that. Cool. The wind blowing through the slightly cracked trunk window... Cracked truck window uh, pushed Asgore's beard and hair back a bit like he was in a clone commercial geared toward Dad. That's good. The window wasn't ajar for any particular reason. It had just stopped working and Asgore couldn't afford to fix it, fix it and eat. 
And there was that guilt again, socking Asriel in the groin. Is that normally where you feel guilt, chat? I'm not sure about that necessarily, like maybe a little bit. The guilt smacks you right in the balls every time. Maybe Asriel just experiences guilt particularly strongly, hence his childhood fixation on sin. It's because whenever he dropped as um, he dropped Yoshi in the pit, he felt a sudden inexplicable pain in his groin. I'd, I'd feel bad too if that was if that was the deal. She churned through a dozen ways to bring up the subject before finally just deciding to ask directly. Maybe we could tell everyone, he said. How peaceful and uncontested the roads are. Uh, <clears throat> God, Asgore voice is not doing well at this point, I gotta say. Let me try that again after I drink some tea. Ouchie, ouch. The Asgore voice prefers uh, a fresh Andrew. <laughs> Jesus, this peach tea. This mixture smells like fucking wine. What did I do? Lemon, peach, ginger. It smells like it has alcohol. It's like sour. I haven't even tasted it yet. That's really weird. Ah, it's too hot to drink. Fuck. I'm gonna go blind on stream. <laughs> Fermentation alchemy. It's barely steeped yet, but it, it smells so weird. How peaceful and uncontested the roads are. Uncongested, rather. Asgore's eyebrows sink toward his eyes. Now about what happened to Des, and... Asriel picked up the duct tape holding the seat together. Just all of it. We all made a decision to tell no one, and it was the right one. He sounded sure, but his eyebrows were entering the benthic zone. But you've lost almost everything. If we could make them understand, then by golly, things might be different. By golly, Asriel, by golly indeed. We gave Hometown a simple answer, not the truth, but something they could understand and mourn. We allowed them to move on. He nodded sadly. We do not even know the truth, come to think of it, but we know that we did the right thing. You're gonna get evicted, Dad. Asriel's voice cracked like cheap porcelain. Well, if worse comes to worst, I will dust off the campaign gear and sleep, uh, the ca camping gear and sleep in the back of this old girl. Everything will be fine. These things always have a way of working out. They coasted through the north northeastern autumn for a few minutes, a world that was damp and orange, getting ready for winter. Asriel usually loved winter, but the idea of Asgore freezing to death in his, the bed of his pickup truck was. Um, pickup was all that the shedding leaves seemed to herald to him. He had to try a different approach. This isn't. I, I thought when Asriel mentioned it was gonna go like um. He wouldn't bring up the one thing that was, t uh, tearing at him. Yeah, this one. I thought he was just gonna be talking about like I I have this weird crush on on pizza pants that that weirdo, from, from the pizza store. You know that guy. I, I really think I like him actually. And this would have been devastating news to everyone, but no, it's it's, <laughs> it's it's a bit more serious than that. Yeah, campaign gear, I totally election trucking 40 and slipped there. What if we didn't stop the roaring? Wouldn't they have a right to know? Asriel finally said, ah, okay, we're going for, like, deep lore explanation. We're going deep. Okay. Asgore twitched the wheel and stopped the car on the side of the road, making the half-bare canopy cast a long, crawling shadow over the truck. He placed his cinder block of a hand on Asriel's shoulder. You've seen... You've not seen hide nor head of the night since its dark fountain. Or its dark fountain since death's debate. Hey, I'll try that again. You've seen not hide nor hair of the night, nor its dark fountains, since death defeated it, correct? A grave frown grew on the gentle giant's face. I haven't, but what if she didn't defeat it? We didn't see how it ended. She told us to run, so we did. Asriel couldn't meet his father's gaze. You were all under fifteen. 
If I could have had... If I could have, it would have been me in that bunker. Asriel slouched back into his seat. Or Asgore did. He seemed at once relieved and remorseful, his body language saying the former, but his expression seemed to be far away, like those nights when he was working the Everyman case. Damn. <laughs> this would be a hell of a twist. Uh, I should uh, reset the bingo, by the way. Um, nothing's happened yet so far. Except for the night mention, actually. That's good. Uh, this probably ties into Asgore's divorce, too. It explains that. Uh, Dark World. Yeah, sure. All the lore stuff, you know? Yeah, that's a start. I thought you said we did the right thing. About lying, Asriel. We all have our regrets. Let's change the subject, shall we? Sure. They got back on the road, the shadows releasing them. Asriel understood why Asgore wouldn't want to talk about this. At the time, Asriel was one of the last people to be seen with Des before she disappeared. Questions might have been asked and conclusions arrived at. Not to mention how it might affect his relationship with Rudy in the holidays. The last point was the main reason Asriel hadn't said anything. How we, how how was he supposed to look Noelle in the eyes after and tell her he and tell her he had left Des and lied about it for years? Asriel shook his head. There really was no good solution he could see, just increasingly bad ones. Is there anything new we haven't talked about? he said, wanting to fill the air with anything other than his own thoughts. Um I bumped into Pizza Pants at the Bone Man store, Asgore said, his smile springing back. The Bone Man? <laughs> The Bone Man store? Yes, he very much wanted to hang out with you and stroll like the old days. Something about hitting up the spots. They're not drug spots, are they? Asgore asked. The goofy question pushed a little levity into the car. No, Dad, they're not, they aren't drug spots, Asriel said with a chuckle. When I was your age. The final leg of the ride was filled with Asgore's college stories. Stories about his protesting days, about the flower picking and stolen bongs, and the wild things Rudy got up to. Okay. Maybe he was a bit of a hippie. That, that would check out. When Asgore finally stopped talking, Asriel was brought back to the sacrifices his father had made, divorced and disgraced. Every year he seemed to suffer a new indignity, all to make sure others weren't hurt. He couldn't help but feel that nothing was worth what his dad was going through. But he wasn't sure what the alternative was. He prayed things would work out, angel willing. When I was your age, Asriel, I got so much dick you wouldn't believe it. That was a chat message, by the way. I just, yeah. Good one, good one, chat. How much acid has Asgore done in his life? More than Asriel can even imagine. That's an interesting career path. Stoner, hippie to police chief. <laughs> I feel like that's probably not normal. Uh, you made it, Remnant. Nice one. Nice one. Uh... The almost setting sun burned the sky pink as they passed the familiar town landmarks at the police station, the hospital, and QC's. Not long after, they approached a pale yellow house, and they were home, or at least Asriel was. Toriel came out still clad in a batter-smeared apron. Asriel got out and snatched his bag from the bed of the truck. Asgore got out too, and just sort of stood there, staring at his once home. How has college been, my child? Toriel hugged Asriel. She smelled of butterscotch. It's been a blast. It's good to be back, though he said. Toriel grinned as he rushed through the door. He was about to investigate what she'd been baking when a thought occurred to him. The door was thin. He could listen. Asriel knew he shouldn't, but a morbid, self-flagellating curiosity came over him. So he placed a floppy ear against the door. Yeah, how does he do it? Does he, like, lift the whole ear up vertically and kind of press it into the door? Or does it work just to sort of push his head into it normally? Probably either way. It's funnier to picture him holding his whole ear up, like a foot above his head.
Neither said anything for an uncomfortable moment. Asriel was going to pull away when Asgore coughed awkwardly. I've been sober now for almost five years, he said. That is good to hear, but you should go home, Toriel said. I, I'm sorry, Tori. Asgore's voice became wobbly. I wish that made a difference, Dreamer, she said. Asriel had a trouble making out the emotion in her voice, but it was certainly present in large amounts. I see. Asgore's truck creaked as he entered. I'll take him back. I know it'll be a school day, and you have youth to educate. That would be appreciated. Good night. A second later, the door closed and the truck left. When does Asriel and Pizza Pants kiss? This is sad. <laughs> this is just sad. No, I don't think Asgore's actually... I think there's implied that he... That was like a cover story. Was that he like killed the Des in a DUI, but he made that up to remove implication from Asriel because that actually Des had been lost in a dark world or something like that. Um, Azriel left the door and approached the half pie on the counter. He hurriedly introduced a slice to his digestive tract, which he had in Delta Rune Cannon, because monsters shit now. It was a creamy butterscotch pie with hints of cinnamon. Toriel must have been creating new recipes again, he reasoned. As he lugged his bag to his room, he noticed how to draw dragons on the shelf, one of his prized possessions. He quickly shoved it into his bag. He'd meant to take it with him after all. Asriel made his way into the room, no shame, just like, he's still into that, big time. Chris was splayed out on their bed, staring at the ceiling. As normal. <laughs> Chris Corp. Everything was as it normally was, except for an empty pie of plate on Chris's dresser, and the corner cage looking especially rusty. Oh, it's Chris. Um, Howdy. Chris said, without so much moving their head. Long day. Asriel plopped the bag onto his bed. Long week. The, the bad, bad advice for Chris is still the bad advice. Then we catch up later. No, yeah, let's talk. Chris smiled. Or maybe not. Asriel still had triple telling, given how little they emoted. So is this... Still during Deltarune, or is it... Because it implied the eggs were appearing in Asgore's... Bridge a lot, which started after the game's present tense. So I'm trying to figure out if Chris is possessed currently or not. Probably not, considering how freely they're talking, though. Who knows? Oh, well, what's on your mind? I made a knife out of spaghetti. They said, swinging themselves upright and dangling their legs over the bed. Asriel smirked. Chris really liked knives. They practically had an encyclopedic knowledge of them. How did it cut? Surprisingly well. Could cut paper. Can I see it? No. A friend did it. <laughs> Chris shrugged. That's funny. I've, I've never actually seen this before. It's just casual conversation between Frisk... Uh, not Frisk. Chris and Asriel. That's very unusual, but I like it. Asriel placed a hand on their forehead. What are you doing? Chris stared blankly at Asriel with their baggy eyes. I'm making sure everything is all right. A friend, you say? No need to be cringe about it. <laughs> Chris pushed his hand away. Can I meet them? That may not be the best idea. How come? His brow became so knitted it was about to make a sweater. So this is post Delta Rune. This is Susie. How far post Delta Rune, though? Has the plot concluded? Who knows? <laughs> he has Chris cringe cameo. No need to be cringe about it. <laughs> That's such a good summary. I, I like that response, honestly. It, it really gets the job done. His brow became so knitted it was about to make a sweater. Bro, she's seen your search history from the library. They said. Why would that matter? He was genuinely perplexed why this would be an issue. Uh, pretty sure she knows about uh, hometown stuff. Uh, well, uh, um, well, uh, I'm not ashamed of my f fandom for it. 
Asriel was immediately reminded of the time he painted his horns on his troll Sona <laughs> Halloween costume. They stayed orange all winter. Oh, he painted his horns for his troll Sona. So this is the second fic in a row we've had Asriel as a canonical Homestuck fan. You'd love to see it. Oh, no, Burger Pants was a Homestuck fan in the last one, but you get the point. Didn't you hate the way it turned out? Golly, no, I, I think I missed the forest for the trees at certain points. But if I just pretend that the parts I don't like don't exist, it's rather excellent. What a good description of Homestuck! That's perfect. That's perfect. It's great as long as you ignore all the parts that make you want to jump off of a cliff. That was exactly my experience reading, well, the whole comic, honestly. And I did. I just ignored the parts that were bad and I liked it. It was perfect. And like, Homestuck is a universal constant because it's like too deeply rooted. It, uh, like Undertale wouldn't exist without Homestuck and so all the characters have to know about it tangentially. Uh, how's your social life then? Fine. Everyone at what Samota U is super friendly. The classes are so small you get to know the professors and other students. I'm also the treasurer for the GeoGuessr Club. Yeah. Yeah, sure, as real. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was um, technically one of the founding members of a, a club at my university. Although I, I did almost nothing. Um, I just I was at the at the table with the the club's leader when he like decided to make it. I was like the guy he talked to and, and I was like, yeah, it's a good idea. And so I got to be the second member despite like never participating. <laughs> it was awesome. They let you handle the money? That's part of the job, yes. Asriel nodded. They're doomed. Hey, he chuckled. Chris yawned. They were already clearly more tired than they wanted Asriel to think. Chris, you should take a nap. We can catch up later, Asriel said. Just what I need, a third parent. Let's get some sleep, Chris. In the morning we can get hot chocolate from Husey's. He smiled at them. Fine. They laid back down like they'd been left as Asriel left. Or like they had been as Asriel left. This is interesting. Chris is like very... Just, just kind of cash. Like, they seem to be doing okay. Which, I, I don't know if that fits anywhere within like post or current Deltarune canon, but it's it's a take and it's nice regardless. It's just like kind of natural Chris to Asriel communication. Uh, uh yeah, okay. Asriel walked down the hall, thinking how strangely talkative Chris had been. He knew they hadn't taken him leaving well. The months before they left became less and less talkative. Not that they, they had ever been a conversationalist, and what little social life they had stopped altogether. But Asriel only realized that in retrospect, he was focused on going to college at the time. Hardly an excuse, he thought. Conflicting with his guilt, they were now almost acting like they had before Dessa disappeared. He began going over what he could have possibly missed when Toriel interrupted his thoughts. So I think it's implied that Chris is currently possessed still, and that's why they're so talkative, which is... strange. It's uh, it's awkward to set a fic during Deltarune, because you have to, like, ignore... You either have to make, like, a, a very strong stance about, like, where the game is in future chapters, or you just have to gloss over all the details and just talk about Pizza Pants or something. It's interesting. How was the pie, Asriel? She asked. Great as always, he said, pushing uh, his Chris hang-ups out of the way. He could mull it over later. I have been experimenting, though. I'm not yet satisfied. You could say even the recipe is half-baked. That's a pretty sweet pun, Mom. He gave her a shit-eating grin. <laughs> Speaking of experimenting, have you chosen your major? I'm leaning toward creative writing. I, I know enough about coding to teach myself more, but I want to make quirky indie RPGs. <laughs> I'm probably going to want to be better at writing, he said. Ah, my little game maker. I'm so glad you're pursuing your passion. I think I've actually forgotten how I used to do my Toriel voice. It, it's just become like looks to the moon, because her voice was so similar to Toriel's, but also a little bit different. 
And so now all I know how to do is Moon's voice. How's the classroom been? Asked Asriel. <laughs> My Chris voice is your head cannon? I'm so sorry. It's just the the batter voice has to imply it to like all silent protagonists of RPGs. That's just how it works. Or, or even not silent. If you're a quirky RPG protagonist, you get the batter voice. As people will grow up to create Off, the main character based off of his sibling. As we will also grow up to become Belgian. Uh, yeah, I guess Ness would have the batter voice, probably, yeah. Uh. Wait. We've received two new students this year. Jockington's sister, Jockette, and little Philly Froggett. Jockette reminds me much of Chris. She apparently has autism. Oh, damn. Str straight up. Gone was Toriel's resting smile, instead replaced with a distant blank expression. Am I a bad parent for not having Chris checked? I I don't I don't think so, Mom. W where's this coming from? Uh, I I'm sorry, Asriel. It has been a tough few days, is all. Her smile returned, but seemed sadder than before. Someone slashed the Kungadero's tires not long ago. I have struggled to sleep since. So this is like right after Chapter Three. And Toriel's thinking like, the, <laughs> Toriel's confusing the symptoms of extra-dimensional ludonarrative possession with potential autism spectrum disorder. Um, I, I could I could see how they'd overlap, Toriel. It's okay. It's it, it's not always easy to recognize the signs. Who who wrote this one? Asks out sin. That's a good question. I also like it. Uh, this is uh, USB E U S B E E USB. It's like an, an ing-sosh abbreviation for you social be or something, I don't know. Chris gives off spectrum vibes, not surprised. That's true, I, I think Chris doesn't need to be possessed by a soul to give off the, uh... Uh, autism vibes, perhaps. They just kind of like that. Uh, what am I? Where am I? Where am I? The Kungaduros tires, yes. Are you okay? His stomach shrank and his veins freezed. Fear and outrage competed to be his primary emotion. Has anything else happened? Miss Undyne took care of it, or so I believe the matter is settled. No need to worry yourself. I'm going to bed tonight. Uh, I'm going to bed early tonight. She headed toward her room. Night. Asriel went off and collapsed on the couch. Without internet, he needed to use the cable that Toria was inexplicably still paying for. He idly began flipping through channels, the only thing even half worth watching on the reruns... Uh, watching on was reruns of New Adventures of Mimiu Kissy Cutie. <laughs> The most poorly reviewed of Mimu's adaptations. <laughs> so that was what he was watching. He turned the volume down low and watched poorly paced bright colors bounce across the screen. When he was just beginning to have enough, to have enough, his phone buzzed. It was a text from Pizza Pants. Finally, we're like eight pages in, we finally have a Pizza Pants name drop. No, I guess Asgore mentioned him previously, but. What did Asgore refer to him as, by the way? What was the name? It was the Bone Man, right? No, Pizza Pants. Asgore also calls him Pizza Pants. That's just his name. Officially. Chad interpretation. Chris becomes neurotypical when possessed. Or more neurotypical. Perhaps? Perhaps. <laughs> Some good chat messages. Kara made me non binary, and Chris made me autistic.
and may your holiday made me glad that Margaret Thatcher is dead. Uh, it's Pizza Pants. Dude, are you back? He asked. Yes, Asriel typed back. Wanna hang? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm watching reruns of Mew Mew. New Mew Mew. <laughs> new, new Mew Mew. It's like New Trek. Or, or uh, Disney Wars. It's trash. Yeah, where are we going? Uh, the church kid? Sure, I could use the steps. Asriel left a note on Cheriel's arm, telling his mother he was out with pizza pants. Put on a flannel fall jacket over his striped shirt, and made out, out for the door. A flan- Is there such a thing as a flannel jacket? I know about flannel shirts, which are kind of jacket-esque in their application. But do they make a dedicated jacket out of pure flannel? I can't quite picture what that would look like. Hmm. Anyway, sorry, I got really confused by flannel. Um, and made for the door. His walk all the way across town was full of unevents. Unevents. <laughs> That's good. The streets were nice and quiet, the rustling loose leaves being the only thing about uh, the only thing out and about with him. As he got to the town hall, he spotted his best friend. Pizza Pants sat on the curb outside the church, one hand on the dusty hoodie he'd been using since sophomore year, the other idly flicking through his phone. Pizza Pants turned as he heard the footsteps and waved. Asriel came up and sat down beside him. Here we are. Pizza Pants stuffed his phone in his pocket. Been a while. I wanted to call, but service in Wasamoto is even worse than hometown. Damn. Uh, Ralsei dust theorists are seething. Well, a Asriel's also just alive, so I guess that also torpedoes that, but you know. It's a common thing in the Midwest just to wear a flannel shirt unbuttoned as a jacket in the fall. Uh, if that's what it means, then yeah, that, that's exactly what I... I, I just wouldn't call it a jacket, it's just a wearing a flannel shirt. I recently obtained uh, my, my first shirt of that nature, it's actually quite nice. It it works as like a slightly warm second layer if it's not very cold. It, 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 I can see the appeal. According to Mel, it also uh, instantly makes you look like a lesbian regardless of your gender, so that's good to know I guess. I wouldn't say that's a Midwestern US thing either, it's just a thing, as far as I know. Uh, yeah, no problem. And I've dropped by, but I'm all out of vacation days. How are things on your end? I snagged a smoking hot babe, Azzy. Pizza Pants said with a self-satisfied grin. You've got yourself a girlfriend? I sure did. His manic expression faded as he remembered an important detail. Uh, but uh, she uh, she dumped me uh, a few days ago. Golly, I'm, I'm sorry, man. What happened? I love le really leaning into the golly as Asriel's go-to. It's the commitment is good. Uh, you know how it is, passing attractions and all that, and something about not attending to her needs. His face contorted into a grimace as his hands flew upward. What was she talking about? We never met. She barely spoke to me. Most of it was in emojis. Who does that? Well, she sounds like a real bitch then. <laughs> Asriel gave a weak pat on the back. Damn, Asriel, savage. Pizza Pants never had much luck with the ladies. The, the contrast with like, around Toriel Asriel and around Pizza Pants Asriel has been established. Um, yeah, chat. <laughs> Neurotypical is a different word than neutered. Those are different words. They don't mean the same thing. Yeah. Glad to clear that up. Uh, Pizza Pants never had much luck with the ladies. Just, I, I'm, my finger's hovering over the trigger here about the re repressed gay pants. We, we don't know yet, though. Maybe he's just, like, aggressively bisexual and really wants... A girlfriend right now. You know, there's plausible deniability, but it's it's seeming like we're cruising for a bruising there. 
Pizza Pants pulled out a cigarette from his hoodie and lit it in one movement. He smiled weakly. He had certainly spent a lot of time getting it right. I thought she was it, man. The babe and all babes. He said, smoke trailing from his mouth. If it makes you feel any better, my luck hasn't been great either, Asriel said. Asriel Dreamer, having my luck with Dayton, now that's a load of shit. Okay, I'm a bit luckier. I've been on dates, lots of first dates. None of them stuck, eh? I have a good reputation here that doesn't really carry over like I thought it would. Asriel looked back up Main Street. He felt something, some sentimentality pile up in him. Everyone loves me in hometown. It was jarring to be somewhere where everyone... Uh, where that wasn't the case, but I guess I got used to it. Uh, Pizza Pants pulled off the stunt with another cigarette and handed it to Asriel. The broken expectations, he said as the two clacked cigarettes against one another. Damn, he smokes in this one. That's crazy, dude. Asriel smoking with his buddy Pizza Pants. What a bad influence. What's he gonna do next? Turn him gay or something? Fucking hell. Asriel inhaled. Smoke tasted of midday fast food parking lot. <laughs> Perfect. It barreled down his throat, filling his lungs. He spent the following ten seconds coughing them out. What's in this? Asriel said. It's Icy's flaming Hot All Ages tobacco with cigarettes. In other words, I have no idea. Pizza Pant shrugged before taking another puff. <laughs> Icy's? You still work there, right? I owe my soul to the company store, he said. Uh, I load 16 times, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Damn, Pizza Pants be quoting the old classics. They sat there on the sidewalk outside a house of the angels, smoking cheap tobacco-less cigarettes. That's horrifying. Like, what's in them? Is it parsley or some shit? There's pizza and the cigarettes turning the goats gay! Too true. It's just marinara sauce and like a paper tube that you light on fire. Um, this was the closest Asriel had come to having a clear mind in months. His time was split half a dozen ways at Wasimo to U. Barely any of it was free time. Eventually his current troubles seemed to seep in through the silence. On his mind was not the slashed tires, exams, or his father's eviction situation, but instead Chris. Hey, has Chris been acting different? Asriel put his cigarette out on the pavement. Little buddy? Yeah, they've been more talkative, I think. Uh, but they've been around, man. Raising hell, screwing the whole system. But what? Asriel was taken aback. Chris could be obviously... Uh, Chris could obviously be a mischievous scamp, but he wouldn't really call that raising hell. Is it is it raising with a Z hell, or the normal raising? Because this would imply you're, like, getting rid of hell, which would be the opposite of raising hell. I'm not sure. I had the whole fucking system. Pizza Pants' eyes glazed over in approval. Right, so they have been around then. Pizza Pants is turning into a Disco Elysium character before our eyes here. Eh, uh, we've chilled. Pizza Pants nodded. Just the other day I gave them and their friends some bottles of spray paint. Encouraging delinquency, are we? Of course, but I think they may have needed it for a school project or something. He scratched the back of his head. I was too busy trying to patch things up with the X to ask questions. Hey, do you mind if I dump something serious on you? Uh, sure, but wouldn't you rather use a toilet? Pizza Pants gave him a big dumb grin. He managed to get a belated half ch chortle. Did we agree this was pronounced chortle? I always want to say chortle. In the same way that like you'd say choir or chaos, like a chortle, but maybe it's a chortle. Uh, did I mispronounce? I guess mischievous and mischievous. I've always sort of thought, thought that they were like... It was just two ways of saying the same word. I've never really thought about whether there was a correct way. That's kind of like... What's the other the weird one? It's like disoriented and disorientated. I, I hear people say both of them all the time. And they, they mean the same thing. Strange.
I'll say, I should say Thortle, yeah. Thorkle. I don't know what's going on with Chris, but I do remember them something before. But I do remember something being off before I left, but I was too focused on moving on. I barely stopped to consider them. Now they seem as well as they've ever been, but I just, I don't know. You know? Hey, just give them some space or something. If I've got a thing to say, they'll probably tell you when they're ready. You're not very good at this, are you? As you all said with a smirk. Look, that's either that, or you can just let a rift form between the two of you as you try to solve the other person. Worked for my pops and me. Pizza Pants said, a bitter tone making it in the end. Oh, damn. Isn't it morally suspect to expect him to be honest with me when I've kept such a big secret all these years? They were close to death, I think. It's hard to tell with them. Don't they deserve to know? Doesn't Noel? Come on, man. Would everyone believe us? Dark fountains, the end of days. They think we were baked. So Pizza Pants was in on it. That's really funny. <laughs> it's like a pre-Delta Rune, Delta Rune plot line with the, the Delta Warriors were Asgore, Des, Asriel, and Pizza Pants. That's fucked up and really funny. The fact that Asgore was part of it too is awesome. I want to play that prequel. That would be awesome, actually. Th that would be a sick take on a fan game where it's just like this completely played straight like um, prequel plotline with, with this cast of characters. And you get to see like Asgore interacting with like pizza pants and shit. It would be awesome. Gamma Rune. Yeah, true, true. Asgore would be such a fucking good tank, dude. Imagine, like, Asgore in his prime as your party member. She'd be a force to be reckoned with. We've never seen Asgore in a situation where he wasn't depressed and longing for death, basically. You don't know how powerful he truly is. Um, I miss it. Well... Some of it. We made all those great friends. It was fun when it wasn't frightening, Asriel trailed off. He was assaulted by memories of entering the school closet with Des when they'd seen, been sent to get some supplies. They arrived in a lush dark world under siege by forces loyal to the night. Pizza Pants only showed up later when he was sent to find them. Hey, Pizza Pants nudged Asriel. I remember many you. Uh, Ral say looked- Oh no! Wait, what is this? This is this is crazy lore we're bringing up here. This is nutty. Ralsei looked nothing like me, Asriel said. He looked just like you if you'd been a few years younger, cosplaying as a bag of colored marshmallows. He was so sad, always talking about how he couldn't beat the night, like he knew it. You know what this is reminding me of? It's reminding me of like, um, it's Homestuck again. It's like uh, pre-scratch and post-scratch, or, or actually, no, more accurately, it's like uh, the the alpha and the beta session. Or no, was that the scratch? I forget the terminology, you know, it's like the, the trolls failed and then the, 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 are they called the beta kids? The, the original four kids, they have to sort of pick up where they, they leave off. It's kind of that. This is just Homestuck again. But Homestuck is good sometimes. Homestuck is sometimes very good. Cause like they spawned into a dead session or some shit, like. Azriel still felt there was something off with that, though he couldn't put his finger on it. Nice kid, but yeah, he was a bit of a downer. He was wrong too. Death stopped it. I wonder what happened to him. All of them. Maybe that was pizza. Uh, nothing good, dude. We don't know that. No, I, I had the dialogue inverted, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess you're right. Pizza Pants shrugged. Azriel looked over in the direction of the bunker, where the final battle had happened. Before it was a dark world, Des, Noel, Chris, and he used to explore the bunker. Mostly they'd go there and mess around in the rusted Cold War relic, but one day Chris just refused to go back in. Asriel thought it was silly then, but now he was in full agreement. Just looking at his general, general direction brought him back to the darkness in there that had, made, that had been darker than dark. Um, close enough. Where is it? Wasn't Gaster on here? Oh, there it is. Close enough.
we're only partway through this Azzy Pants fic, and I want to read the author's full-length Deltarune prequel. This is kind of what it felt like, um... Well, run reading Let That Sink In. That That's another fic that sort of defines its own lore implicitly as it goes, and it makes you want to kind of, like, what's the full scope of this? Like, this this is a whole alternate universe you've made just to, just to scaffold Azzy Pants, like Azreal and Pizza Pants dating. Fascinating. But also, like, early, um... The early Courier new Deltarune Chapter 1 fanfics before... Uh, like, Chapter 1 fanfiction was weird because people had no idea what the fuck the game was or where it was going. And they had to just wildly speculate and set up their own lore and, and fixate on whatever plot points they thought were going to be important. Like, uh... Um, a lot of the early Courier stuff was about, like, um, the growing darkness and, like, shadows consuming hometown and, like... It was all very ghastly and strange and eldritch and, uh... It, it seems kind of weird to look back. It's like, well, the game hasn't really gone much in that direction so far, but, uh... It was like, back then you sort of had to make a take and roll with it. Because otherwise you had nothing to work with. Yeah. But it's, it's an interesting. It's interesting so far. I'm interested. What have we been doing? Asriel turned back to Pizza Pants. Pretending it all didn't happen hasn't helped us, and look what's become of my dad from keeping us under wraps. Hey, you took the fall for us. Stop them asking questions. It's what a father should do. He, left, he let out a long puff of smoke. So we, immediately we have Pizza Pants daddy issues. It's like the first thing you know about him in this canon. Very cool. There must have been something we could have done, Asriel emphasized, this by pounding his fist into his knee. Nah, there wasn't, has he? could have stayed with her. He almost winced as the words left his mouth. No, that's dumb. Yeah, it would have been fucking dumb. Pizza Pants nodded. I still have nightmares about it. Dark fountains exploding all around us. It was a miracle that she made it to the night. And where there went fountains, it was all darkness and chill. Asriel's fur, fur stood up straight just talking about it. And hands. Hands? What, like our hands? Asriel's pace quickened. There was a twinge in Pizza Pants' voice. Was he suggesting there was something more between them? Asriel had grabbed his hand and ran, but at the time he hadn't thought of Pizza Pants like that. He'd been dating Des after all, but now Pizza Pants was his best friend. And Asriel thought it was kind of adorable when he did all those, when he did all those little expressions that must have crushed his skull. <laughs> there were worse alternatives. I, I think he was talking about Gaster, Asriel, not, not like that shit. That. <laughs> Not that shit. He's just having an, uh, an LTSI moment. That That's what he's doing. Yeah, Umar's approaches was, was was good. Yeah, it just said, like, fuck the dark world. It, it's irrelevant. None of it ever happened. I don't care. Okay, the beta kids in Homestuck had a null session, and the void was the alpha kids. But I also forget who the beta kids and alpha kids were, respectively. And also what void, uh, what uh, void and null sessions were, respectively. So, oh well. Uh. Uh, no, all the hands. Pizza Pants squinted. I am. Um, what? Azrael's face lit up like the holidays house during winter. The hands. There was like two of them, but a thousand of them at the same time. And they were everywhere, and also only over deaths in the night. It was fucked, man. Like my mind was melted. That sounds like a hell of a boss fight. I hope we can do that in chapter seven, Toby. Take notes. I I didn't see any of that. I barely looked back. Well, shit. I just thought we never talked about them, cause you know, why would anyone want to? You didn't have a full night's sleep again until I. I didn't have a full night's sleep again until I broke into my pop's vodka. Pizza Pants had been a poster child for underage drinking during early high school. It had taken a lot of prodding and awkward conversations to get him to ease up. Those times were just funny memories. Ezra couldn't help but wonder uh, when that was. Wait, wasn't that when you got so when you were so drunk that Catty convinced you to shove a whole pizza in your pants? Ezra asked after a long moment. Uh, no, that was a time after that, when Braddy wanted to go to get Cat back at Catty. By having me shove pizza in my pants. Pizza Pants' voice briefly descended to the right corner 
oh no, Pizza Pants' face briefly descended to the right corner of his head before bouncing back in place. You can just do that. Uh, and on that note, uh, wanna go skip stones? I've been practicing. I gotta beat you. I hope you can back that up. Hmm. Sometimes I remember that Andrew named three main characters John, Jane, and Jake. Well, don't forget Jade and June from the epilogues. Um, yeah, classic, classic stuff. Yeah, it was rather hard to remember sometimes. Oh, and Jane? Oh, yeah, no, you mentioned Jane, yeah. Uh, who's the one from Hive Swap? What, what the fuck was her name again? I don't remember. Oh, Jude and Joey from High Swap, yeah. Um, actually, June is a plot point from Homestuck Beyond Canon, not the epilogues. Thank you for clarifying, Doc. Uh, where was I? Homestuck, be gone, be gone, spirits. Um, it's Pizza Pants talking about getting drunk and drunk and shoving pizza up his ass or something. Uh, oh, skipping stones, right? A normal platonic friendship thing to do, skipping stones. Um, as they walked past the nondescript parts of town, Azrael couldn't help think about that uh, stray gray hand thought. No, the stray gay hand thought. No, he did just say gay. Okay. <laughs> That stray gay hand thought. It hadn't come from absolutely nowhere, since he really did care for pizza pants, certainly more than anyone he'd been on a date with recently. But that was surely platonic, he thought. Although they passed the library the as they passed the library, the line between platonic and romantic. That would have been so clear earlier that day, now seemed to blur into an indistinguishable gruel. It's that platonic gruel. I'm always eating that shit. Homestock is the worst thing since my son. It's probably Andrew Hussey's quote. You should read Homestuck now that your brain is fully developed? I'd recommend it, honestly. Oh, reread it. Well, never mind. You know what you're getting into in that case. Hey, Mazzy? Pizza Pants asked as they walked. Yeah? Asriel's heart skipped a beat at Pizza Pants' voice. And he began to wonder if this was just a thing now. Damn, he's... So, like, Asriel has just implicitly crossed over into, like, the gay thoughts zone. And is now sort of just, like... It's like trying not to think about the pink elephant. You can't not do it. Like, once it's occurred to you, it just gets worse and worse indefinitely. So he's just sort of stunlocked himself, I think, into gay thoughts at this point. And that blue kid who works the desk at the library, a uh, birder. He won't stop talking to anyone who's close to you about how, how, you, how you haven't returned the book. I, I mean, I get it. No internet for a while would drive a lot of people loopy, but uh, looking for the book is a bit much, you know? It's capitalized. It's like the Bible. Must we still call it that? Hey, the one, uh, the one with the dragon fetish. Oh, no. Hey, you're the one with the dragon fetish. Pizza Pants flapped his hands like they were little wings. I like the art style. Asriel didn't deny it. Man, how long have you had it? Golly, wouldn't you know, it's been at least six, no, seven years. He almost felt self-conscious about it. That, that's a good flowyism. Don't ya? Ah, uh, shit, I thought I was one with the juvenile record. I'd like everyone to know, says Chant, I read Homestuck for the first time in 2022 entirely in one month. I did the same thing in 2019. I read it in two weeks. It was during the summer uh, vacation. I, I did nothing that summer for two weeks. Um, except read Homestuck. And hey, it worked. Yeah. It was it was good. I, I, I liked it. Um, 
Not long after Asriel and Pizza Pants had arrived at the lake by Flower King, the stones began to fly. Each took their turn lobbing rocks into the water, and it was more or less evenly matched with both only managing four skips at most. The air was filled with lightweight banter and congratulations. When it became clear that neither would clear four skips, Pizza Pants turned to Asriel. Hey man, can we talk? Shoot, Asriel tossed one last stone. It made only two skips. I'm saving up to go to Wasamo to you. I should uh, have enough for a handful of semesters soon. The warrior says they can put in a good word to land me a part-time job at the local Aces franchise. You know, to pay for the rest of it. Saying the last part stripped the luster from his eyes. It would be great to have you, Asriel said. Yeah, and I have a confession to make. Pizza Pants idly f spun a flat rock in his hand like a fidget spinner. <laughs> Sorry, like a fidget spinner. Oh, Asriel's pace quickened again. Um, I'm not normally this cool. Uh, when you're not around, that is. What are you talking about? You're one of the coolest cats I know. It's it's, it's him or Braddy. I mean, Caddy. Not, not a lot in competition. No, I, I don't want to talk about Flowey Pants chat. That one's, that one's best left alone. It never ends well. Flowey is somehow simultaneously underage and overage to an extent where he... <laughs> you can't ship him with any other Undertale character without starting a fight. Uh, it's just it's just not not good territory. Stream is back on. What do you mean? Did it go down? It's it's just been continuing the whole time. <laughs> what the fuck is Sans Sans is in my chat? Hey, just remember, don't be gay. Gay is misogynistic because it gives men power. So, like women instead. Liking women gives women power. Thank, thank you, Sans. That, that's very wise. The fuck, man. Lol. Lamau, even. That's the shit he starts telling uh, Frisk after, like, a 900 genocide loops. He just starts, like, making up bullshit. Yeah, also, why, why are you trying to ship Flowey with people? Just, just in general, like... <laughs> it's... Is, is the allure of I can fix him that strong? Like, I can fix the person who's, like, <laughs> whose ability to feel any kind of love was, like, surgically removed by a plot mechanic? I can fix him. You can't fix him. He's Flowey. You can't fix him. <laughs> okay, I say that. I say that. My I I spent most of 2015 reading fucking Save the Goat fanfics where they they literally fix him, but but not in the romantic way. Those were strictly uh, you know slash gen on uh, Ao3. Well, not no, not slash gen. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Ship Flowey X therapy. That'll that that's okay. That's okay. Asriel is fixable, sister. I have my doubts. I, I love me a save the goat fic. I really do. Like I, I can't hold that against me, but uh I I'm not sure if they're honestly realistic. A lot of I don't know. Like Asriel would be so fucked, post Undertale. Like so fucked. I don't know if there's enough therapy in the world for that kid. Like that's an exceptional situation. Like it would be, it would be really bad. One by one or growth spurt? Uh, well, one by one, obviously. I, I'm referring to, but um, did I read growth spurt? Maybe like way early, I would have read a bit of growth spurt, but I, I didn't follow it for long in that case. Dream reborn, obviously too. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, where was I? Uh, you're one of the coolest cats I know. As he am a nervous wreck, he let out a sigh. 
I get sweaty around attractive people. I play out every possible way a scenario could go wrong. Sometimes the only thing that gets me out of the door is that place I'm renting is in view of the place I grew up. Golly. But when you're around, I'm not. It's like I'm a... You're a fucking magnet and I'm a nail. And once I'm around you, I keep that magnetism for a bit. The only reason I'm sure I haven't already wasted my entire life is because I keep thinking maybe if I follow my best bud to school, I'll become a magnet or something. Fucking magnets, how do they work? Pizza Pence looked away, and Asriel knew this couldn't be easy for him. I... I don't know what to say. Asriel's hand shook from the mere... Uh, from the mere passage of blood. Which monsters have in Deltarune now, it's canon. Uh... How do you think I feel? I, I rehearsed that beforehand, like in a mirror. Somewhere in his queue of thoughts, Asriel might have considered that he was misinterpreting something. But that was well behind his current thought, sandwiched between the time he'd almost embarrassed himself in front of Des at the Sadie Hawkman's dance and his upcoming midterms. His current thought was, to put it simply, KISS HIM. It wasn't particularly long kiss, barely longer than a peck, but the autumn breeze seemed to pick up as her lips touched. Damn. Wait, is that on the bingo? I don't want to ruin the moment. Bingo can wait for a sec. This is, this is important. That was, uh, Pizza Pants began. Mm-hmm. Asriel was already going in for another kiss, but Pizza Pants planted a hand on his shoulder. That, uh, dude, cool with that. Uh, I was mostly straight not 15 minutes ago. <laughs> That's good. I was mostly straight not 15 <laughs> It's funny how quick that was. That was an interesting way of handling it. Is like, both of them were like, th they weren't like thinking of each other romantically all through college, but it was just like under the surface. And like, as soon as they thought about it even a little bit, they both just went like, oh yeah, it's just kind of gay. And they just started kissing just like mutually. It's really funny, actually. Like all it took was Enrique meeting after college, then all of like the uh, the subconscious ruminations like came to the surface at once, and they're like, "Oh yeah, right, <laughs> this is gay as fuck." It's a new take on Azzy Pants. I'm in favor. Relatable says chat had a moment with a friend like that when I was younger. It, it strikes me as weirdly plausible, honestly. Has the whole stream been an extremely long Azzy pant? Uh, this is the fourth fic, I think? Or just the third? I don't even remember. It They've been pretty long. And I've not been going very fast so far. This is the fourth, okay. Hey, cool with that! No one cares about your dead sis- I mean, I was multi straight not 15 minutes ago! Pizza Pants laughed. I'm so sorry, I'm not sure what I was thinking. I, I- I misread the situation. Let's just forget about it. Asriel could barely string along a coherent thought, given his mind was filled mostly with internal screaming, punctuated by the occasional- Golly, fuck. <laughs> not to mention that his face was redder than a pale human on the beach. Damn, roasted. I guess that confirms that monsters don't sunburn. That That's good for them, I guess. Nah, it's all good, dude, really. Let's just make it a bit slower, huh? Right, fast snails get seen, a slow snail gets lean. Uh, but a slow snail's very keen. <laughs> Asriel, what the fuck are you talking about? Asriel's face still burned as he came down from the verge of panic. So, so what what happens now? Nah, fuck if I know, man. I guess we date or something. Are you, are you, are you asking? Yeah, I guess I am. Pizza Pants seemed to surprise that this is Asriel. <laughs> it would be weird for me to say no now, so yeah, let's do it. QC's tomorrow after I... No, I reversed the dialogue again. It would be weird for me to say no now, so yeah, yeah, let's do it. QC's tomorrow after I get off my shift. That works. Asriel grinned, despite his worries and his guilt. He just couldn't help but feel a little giddy or hopeful even. Damn, this got wacky. This this was like so serious and melodramatic. It still is serious. It's not a, it's not taking itself like a joke, but it's uh, it's just like the tone shifted so rapidly from like, they're like these traumatized ex Delta warriors to like, oh shit, yeah, we, let's let's date, I guess. <laughs> this is this is cool. This is a silver lining, I guess, Azzy. Yeah. 
the stand that got me thinking. I should start kissing men to see if I'm homosexual. It's not bad advice, I don't know. It's a chat member. Uh, might work, I don't know. Pizza bounced through a pebble. It made a half-hearted first bounce, then sank with a plunk. He turned to Asriel, almost saying something several times, but never getting past opening his mouth. Yeah? Asriel raised his eyebrow. Man, how'd you get... Your snout's so soft. You used to eat, right? You used to eat, right? Wait, what? Pizza Pants' face twitched about uncomfortably, a light blush forming as the words left his mouth. I wash it? Duh, but with what? So, I gotta remember that. Pizza, <laughs> Pizza Pants mumbled. Ezreal couldn't tell if he was joking or not. <laughs> it's interesting. Usually the furry angle isn't leveraged very much in these. I'll take it. They threw stones, uh, a few more stones to wind down the evening. Asriel was about to suggest leaving when someone approached from up the road. Yo, it's Noel. Uh, has he? Noel called from behind them. Um, the pair turned to see Noel Holiday approaching with a purple monster, whose mop of hair was 20% cowlick by volume, walking beside her. Are they shipping it? They shipping it? They shipping it? They shipping it? Uh, Noel, long time now see. Um, not to be a stinker, but it's a bit late for you to be out, Asriel said as he and Pizza Pants made met them in the middle. Nah, fuck the rules. Okay, Susie's voice is, is subtly different than Pizza Pants's, but um, maybe on a good day it's subtly different. Right now they might sound kind of the same. Nah, fuck the rules. The purple monster gave a smirk, revealing her mountain range of teeth. Asi, this is Susie. Noelle blushed. Sup, dweeb? You're Chris's bro, right? Susie said. Yes, you're her new friend, I assume. Or their new friend, talking about Noelle. Asriel shook her hand. Her grip was shackle-like. Yep. He looked at him like uh, she was a shark and he was a blubbery seal. Damn, some some ADS cult uh, ACDS culture permeating. We got lots of seals on ACDS all day long. We have gay lore in chat. I learned I was gay when I was 12 and in hindsight when I was 4. I really liked looking at the muscular illustration in the anatomy book when I was 4. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. That's like gayer than gay. That's like if W.D. Gaster was experimenting in gayness. Impressive. Other chat member. I don't know, man. I just wanted to be a, a guy cat. No, a guy with a cat wife. That's interesting, too. Very cool. Pla. Anyway. <clears throat> Susie is here. <clears throat> a jolt came down his spine. Chris was right. She knew about hometown. No, home. I read that as like, homo town suck for a second. It's like, ho hometown homo suck. Um, hometown stuck. The forum role plays is troll Sona, the Mew Mew crossover, self insert, crack fic, <laughs> all of it. The wind chill seemed colder to him, more savage even. Uh, the, you could say the wind was staggering him. Uh, no, to answer your question. Uh, no, that's Noel. Um, no, to answer your question. Noelle stepped forward. I don't really have anyone to stop me now, with my dad still in the hospital and my mom getting arrested. Uh, wh what? Okay. Fascinating lore. M Maya Holiday was arrested. The revelation quickly made Asriel forget about Susie, knowing some mildly embarrassing things about him. Um, yeah, just this week. It was like a, a huge corruption scandal. Bribery, coercion, ballot tampering, the wakes. Pizza Pants filled his hands about as he explained. Wait, this is election trucking lore. Oh, I... S <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I see what this is. Ballot tampering. Oh dear. Wait, wouldn't it, in election trucking it would be uh, Sans getting arrested for ballot tampering? <laughs> this is so funny. Speaking of gay, I'm going to watch some wrestling. Good night, says chat member. Okay, that that's good. Thank you. Enjoy your wrestling. Yeah, Noel was tampering with the ballot, uh, but it was on Sans's behalf, though. But also, uh, <laughs> Mayor Holiday attempted assassination and did a whole bunch of other clandestine shit, so... Um, she also, every, everyone in election trucking should be arrested. Just everyone, the whole cast. Asgore was an accessory to murder. Uh, yeah. Wowzers, I, I'd say I'm shocked, but that explains a lot, actually. <laughs> And that wasn't even the start, and that's not even the start of it. I heard she was into some real serious stuff, like, uh, Pizza Pants winced and turned to Noel. Oh, uh, sorry, I, I should, you know, not in front of you. Don't be, I, I turned her in, she said flatly. Asriel had trouble gauging how she felt. Noel, he frowned. So, what are you two doing out here? Pizza Pants asked before Asriel could start a heart to heart with Noel. I could ask the same of you, Paint Man. Uh, I could ask the same of you, Paint Man. I think the difference between as uh, Susie and Pizza Pants' voice is going to be a half-hearted Brooklyn accent. Oh, this is the last song. We we've expended all the Toho jazz. Susie leaned against a tree and crossed her arm. Wait, who is Paint Man? Why, why is he Paint Man? Man, we're just shooting shit, skipping stones, you know, uh, stuff. I'm stuff, says Asriel. Wet piled down as P uh, Pizza Pants' face like a herd of frightened lemmings fleeing a documentary crew. <laughs> I want a sig. Pizza Pants, you can't give them cigarettes, they're in high school. Asriel's goody two-shoes sense is activated, overriding all that he'd been thinking of before. Nah, it's fine, they're all ages. <laughs> they're they're tobaccoless. Pizza Pants' expression was pleading. He clearly didn't want to discuss the sudden change in their relationship with a couple of teens. I'm not sure that's how it works, Asriel said. You heard the man, they're all- yeah, You heard the man, they're all ages. Susie smirked. Pizza Pants presented his box of Icy's flaming Hot All Ages tobacco-less cigarettes to the teens. They each took a dart without much hesitation. Susie tossed hers into a- Her bear trap of a mouth and swallowed the cigarette- Oh! <laughs> Noel took out her own novelty snowman lighter. No way Noel has a lighter. No fucking way. What do you mean? Noel, what did did Susie get you into this shit? What happened? There's a story here. Maybe uh, Noel's hard-boiled detective arc that led to her uh, arresting her own mom. She had to take up smoking to play the part. I don't fucking know. Chris is going to be pissed they aren't invited to the smoking hangout. Yeah, true. No, Chris is like in the, the bathroom at the dreamer's house toking up on a bong right now or something Chris is like free basing Maybe Noel just became a stoner to bond with Susie or something. It's like, you know Frightening things are okay as long as I have someone to comfort me she says as she like <laughs> takes a heroic dose of mushrooms with Susie in a forest somewhere. Like, I, I, I picture it. Oh, it's the sheltered Catholic girl who secretly smokes trope. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Chris is smoking the soul locked in a bong like the Dracula flow or some shit. We're smoking diegesis. Lighten up human souls in a glass pipe, blowing the angels' bubbles. I'm smoking fentanyl laced Icy's pizza. I see the angel. I read the script. I have read the Hussy Grams. I have seen the Undertale Steam page. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. That's what Chris is talking about in the bathroom. Just completely, like, blasted out of their mind on ayahuasca.
Coffin K getting up to some weird shit. Well, he's got to pass the time in the castle somehow. Chris was invited. Oh yeah, Chris is here. Or, or they're coming. It seems somewhat familiar to her. Asriel couldn't help but wonder when Noel had started smoking. Anyways, we're meeting up with Chris, Noel said. I don't think our mom would let that happen. I mean, it's awfully late. Asriel said after consulting his phone for the time. Asriel, you've been away for too long, buddy. They've come to an... They've uh, come to an understanding. Susie looked at the ground, and for a moment the blade back, yet still aggressive snark was gone, replaced by a soft seriousness, but only for a moment. Whatever, I'm not your parents, I guess. Well, I uh, suppose we should get going then. Don't want to hush the mood, Pizza Pants said. The pair headed up the road. They hadn't made it that far up the road when Susie called them. Nah, you should stay, she said. Uh, oh, that's not a bad idea. Noelle's eyes widened in realization. Of course it isn't. We're trying to convince Chris to do something, Susie said. And Azzy here might be able to help our case, Noelle nodded in agreement. I guess I'm done to chill if you are, says Pizza Pants. Uh, all right, but what are you trying to get them to do? We've, uh... Noelle shook her head. I mean, Chris has been going through some things recently, and they thought they should really tell someone, preferably an adult, and you're an adult. Technically, Susie added. If it will help Chris, then that's a wonderful idea, Asriel said. Sorry, I, I don't know why I said it like that. It was almost like a, a memory from past life infiltrated my mind and completely overwhelmed me for a second there. It was very strange. Asriel detached from the rest of the three and sat by the water, watching the moon play out on the, the water. For a moment, he thought he saw a massive yellow shape out a bit deeper, but he blinked and it was gone. It wasn't long after that that Noelle sat beside him. She watched the ripples too for a moment. I wonder what Pizza Pants and Susie are talking about in the background, by the way. Fascinating conversation. Such an interesting time to join the stream. This is an interesting fanfic. It's 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 pretty cool. Time for new music. Here we go. An old standby. This one is like plot heavy. And, and as he pants seems to be like a relatively minor component, but it, it's very interesting regardless. There's like occasional peaks of as he pants relevance between like this sort of like uh, speculative pseudo AU take on like Deltarune's future chapters. Fascinating. Remember when Chris filled a water balloon with red food coloring and tied it to their chest? She asked. Then belly flopped right into the water. Asriel was hit with a wave of nostalgia. No hesitation. They disappeared into a red s No, that's- no. They disappeared into a red smear. She closed her eyes like she was imagining it. I thought I'd lost them and I just kept crying. But then Chris came up behind you and plopped a water balloon onto your antlers. I felt like I was losing everyone for a while, and life didn't seem to be proving me wrong. My dad is sick, my mom's a criminal, and, you know, yes. Then in the middle of that, Chris came back to me, and I... Uh, are you okay, Noel? Not really, no, but I'll live. If you ever need to talk, just reach out. I'm, I'm assuming the internet around here gets working again. Asriel gave her a playful nudge. Damn. It's, it's weird that, like, I think Asriel and uh, Noel are implied to have some, like, past relationship. Like, they aren't strangers, so it's, I guess it's understandable they're talking like this, but they seem real close real quick. Thanks, Azzy. She sounded on the verge of tears. Asriel watched the water for a few minutes, Asriel letting Noel compose herself. Susie and Pizza Pants seemed enamored with something behind them, but Asriel didn't pay them much mind. Eventually, Noelle seemed uh, ready to pick up where she'd left off. Chris is a good person. I, I know I know that now, but for the longest time I thought they stopped caring. 
She looked off toward the woods. Now I just think they were struggling and nobody knew. Yeah, you're right. I was so busy trying to get out ready for college that I ignored them. I should have been there, she said. And I was too busy being afraid to help them. But I'm not going to let that happen again. No more pick being picked last. They deserve to have some someone there for them. And Susie and I will make sure of that, she blushed. That's super corny, huh? Noel Holiday, when did you get so brave? Asriel said, hint of awe in his voice. The Noel who had been afraid of Icy's pizza boxes was not the same one sitting next to him, who turned in her mother. That's such a weird plot point just to have, like, not explained. It's just part of the lore. It's just like she arrested her mother or turned her in. Like, what, what happened? How did that play out? It's like an elephant in the room kind of at this point. She seemed so determined. I, uh, I don't really know. A lot that's happened with me in a, a short amount of time. A lot has happened. You know, I, I expected to come back and everything to be like it was before. I was silly. Things change. I just didn't expect hometown to. I get that, she said. Maybe he was still feeling the buzz after kissing pizza pants. Reminder, this did happen like a minute ago. Or maybe it was just, uh, it was just braver by being near here. But he felt uh, sure that he had to tell Noelle about Des. How could he even go about telling her in a way that she'd believe? He'd have to mention as little as possible about Dark Worlds and the like. Or maybe he had to, maybe he could tell her the truth. And if she believed him, uh, could she even stand to be near him? He began speaking before he knew what he wanted to say. About Des, I, I know more about her disappearance than most people do. Asriel managed, despite the words feeling like gravel coming out. I think I know what happened to her too, Azzy. Nimua looked up at him, and there was something heavy in her eyes that came with knowing Gonzo shit. What? What does this even mean? But it came with knowing Gonzo shit. What, what, I don't, I don't, I'm actually just at a loss for what this, this expression means. My burger's finished cooking, so I'm gonna go eat that for a bit. Be back in 10, says Sans in chat. Thank you, Sans, for the update. Um, Sans's grub has come. <laughs> Too true. I've heard of gonzo journalism, but I don't really know what that means, so... Uh, I'm not totally sure. He refill. Um, he believed her. He'd seen it enough times in a mirror, and by the look of it, she might have. She might know even more than him. Oh, oh, Jinghees, where do I even begin? I learned about it a couple days ago now. Now that's a terrible place to start. Uh, uh oh. Um. Oh, it all started with some spam emails. Hey, you guys gotta check out this beetle. Susie yelled. It's roided up. Pizza Pants said. <laughs> we can talk about this later. Susie looked off towards Susie. Uh, no, sorry. Noelle looked off towards Susie. If that's not much trouble, I, uh, I want to see the beetle. They're kind of freaky. And you like freaky, no worries. Um, Asriel felt the weight of having to discuss this shit in the future. No, this shift. It, it said shit previously in narration, so... It was part for the course. Gonzo like crazy. Gonzo shit. Mm -hmm. the, the shit the newspapers won't print, if you know what I mean. The shit the establishment doesn't want you seeing. Uh, Asriel joined the other three. Sure enough, there was a beetle on its back, spinning like a top on the leaf litter. It seemed to keep going forever, an eternal insect breakdance. That would just be an NPC in hometown, like it would have dialogue. Give it a dart, Susie barked. What? Pizza Pants said. Give the fucker a cig, he's earned it. He turned a hand out of her torn jeans and gestured toward the beetle. I don't even know this, uh... Wait, what was the meme? 
I'm I, I'm scanning the, the copy pasta for slurs in my mind. I don't remember how it actually went. Uh, Pizza Pence lit a cigarette and tossed it onto the it onto the beetle, who caught it with its legs. It proceeded to rip fat clouds as it spun. <laughs> As the other three watched the wondrous beetle spin, I, I like this is important. This is I, I would stop talking about like my dead sister to watch this. Azrael happened to look up the road to see Chris walking quietly up to them. Chris put their finger to their lips. They were planning to sneak up on the group. Azrael nodded, and Chris slipped in between Noel and Susie. Cool beetle, they said. Noel and Pizza Pants were both a bit startled. Chris took you long enough. Susie punched them in the arm. Sorry, I had to finish my barbecue after dark game of handball with Jockington. They dusted off their sleeve. After dark Jockington handball. Okay. I hope that becomes a plot point in the future. Oh, there it is. No fucking idea what this cunt even is, but he's chuffing back a fat doll, and that's all that matters. Too true. <laughs> That beetle's probably, it's not, it's probably just another monster. Like, that beetle has a social insurance number. Since when have you had to play handball? Oh. Since when have you played handball with Jockington? Asriel asked. Since when's Jockington had hands? Pizza Pants, or Pete, and that's, I thought that was Chris. Since when has Jockington had hands? Pizza Pants said in the midst of lighting up another smoke. There's plenty of don't tell people, Chris said. Chris has a... Uh, you know who they're reminding me of here is, is Germ Knight in the Woods. I think Chris and Germ are like kind of the same character in different circumstances. Like in, in Germ's role, Chris would act similarly to Germ, I think. And Germ was the best character in that game, so... Hell yeah. Yeah, the beetle is just a very small Migos, but it's not even a beetle, guys. That's pretty much what Migosps do when left to their own devices, too, isn't it? Dance and shit. Yeah, like you've been hanging out with Noel again. It's good to see. Asriel smiled as a little warm feeling grew in his chest. We have triple truces, Chris said. Uh, Chris said this with the proper gravitas one might expect when discussing such an important pact. Oh yeah, Noel chuckled. So, what do you want to talk about? Chris asked the girls. Uh, why don't you two go over there? Susie turned to Asriel and Pizza Pants and gestured toward the southern tree line. You want semi-privacy? All right, Asriel said, a bit confused, but trusting whatever Noel and Susie's plan was. Pizza Pants went and sat at a picnic table, while Noel just sort of stood in the middle of the di in the middle distance. The two girls turned to Chris, who tilted their heads slightly. Chris, we need to more bring more people into this, Susie said. Undine's in. Chris' voice seemed even flatter than normal. She's just playing damage control at this point, and we need someone to be there with us. Susie pointed to nowhere in particular for emphasis. Emphasis. Why no? We almost died. Having some help wouldn't hurt. Oh, that's Noel. We almost died. Having some help wouldn't hurt, Noel said. We handled it, Chris said almost immediately. Azriel wasn't sure what they were talking about, but it seemed like, to him, this had come up before. Damn, they're, they're discussing this like the fucking, uh, like the Goonies or some shit. This is, this is good banter. This is like serious Delta Warrior problem solving. It's a vision of a future Delta Ruin where, like, all the characters know the plot and actually what the stakes are and they're like having to make decisions instead of just like fucking around after school. I don't know if that future is going to come to pass mind, but it's a vision of that future and it's kind of cool. It's, it's fun. It's kind of like they're the Yeek gang, but likable. Uh, uh, Listen, we've all been through th we've all been through it the past few days. Susie began. Asriel's phone buzzed. He fished it from his pocket. It was a text from Pizza Pants. He looked over at Pizza Pants sitting on one of the picnic tables, huddled over his phone. What are they talking about? Read the tech. Read the text. 
Why are you texting me? Asriel texted. I don't want to interrupt, Pizza Pants replied. Don't be an idiot, I'm right here. Come and whisper to me. Okay. Less than three. He's in. Remember, they're dating now, right? They started dating five minutes ago. They are, they are dating. This is the ship fit. Pizza Pants shimmied over to Asriel as Susie continued her speech to Chris. He leaned in toward Asriel. Shit, was that too much? No, it was cute, Asriel looked down. Uh, Asriel looked down, sorry. Cool, cool, huh? Uh, so, do you know what they're talking about? I don't know, man. I'm in the dark on this, too. I've got a really bad feeling, though. Asriel looked back over at the teens. Uh, who's saying, We've gotten this far because we haven't been alone. Other people have helped us and we've helped each other. So, we should tell them. We could use all the help we can get. Susie planted a hand on Chris's shoulders. Emphasis. This is a pretty different take on Susie. It's it's kind of... It's, it's a little bit strange, but I don't terribly mind it. Susie's now like the, the war room leader here. She's She's got like the plan. She's taking charge. Which I, I could... It doesn't seem totally out of character. It's just like... It would take quite a bit of uh, development to get there, I think. Interesting. Uh, really the best option. Chris said after a long pause. Susie looked over at Pizza Pants and Asriel. Uh, no, at the Pizza Pants and Asriel. Assessing them with a single yellow eye poking through her mess of hair. Yes, she said, giving Chris an unconvincing grin. Okay. Okay, I believe you, said Chris. You won't regret this, Chris, Noelle added. There better be some moss in this for me, they mumbled. Pizza Pants turned to Asriel. Moss? The single word dripped with confusion of a dozen questions. Chris likes eating moss, Asriel said. I've stopped trying to dissuade them from eating it. That just adds so many more questions. Hey, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, mind joining us in reality for a sec? Susie beckoned them over to one of, to one of the picnic tables. As Asriel and Pizza Pants filed onto the bench opposite the teens, the wind died down, the world became quiet. Asriel, for the first time that night, felt tired. 24 hours ago, he'd been in another state, and the and the hour time difference was beginning to show. He would soon wake up uh, with what the teens were about to tell him. Where do we even begin? Determination? Darkness? Chris asked the girls. Pizza Pants and Azure gave each other a shocked look. How about the beginning? So, uh, there was this closet in school. Damn, oh, that's a hell of a cliffhanger. That's the end. Holy shit. So I don't know if that's the beginning of an ongoing fic or if that's that's it. It's just a little taster. But uh, it feels like that could keep going on for about 100,000 words at this point. Like, this is like the start of a whole AU. What a fascinating take. Uh, and as as light as the the Azzy Pants elements were, they were very, they were nice. They were appealing. They were fresh. And I liked them. Chat says I would read 100,000 words of that. I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, that one is really nice. Uh, I most I was interested like in the plot, which is unusual, like out, outside of the Azzy Pants shenanigans. Very cool. It has pacing. It's got prose. It's got characterization. Can we read Blackout next? Um, maybe I can keep going. I I was kind of thinking in terms of like getting to six hours and calling it because I'm getting kind of tired, but uh. Maybe. Let me see. It, it was like it was always going to end with something not getting read, right? So it's just a question of how much. Okay, Blackout is 7,000 words. That's a pretty long one. Hmm. Okay, how about this? If, if I can go on another break and like eat a, a proper dinner and come back. I will read uh, one more. Perhaps Blackout. Or it... Yeah, Blackout or Empty Pizza Box. Because both of these are new. I'm not sure which. I'm curious. What, what's this one like?
Wait, this is just the whole bingo card. Wait, were you drafting the bingo card on this Google Doc before the stream? What is- what's- what's this shit? This is supposed to be very good. Alright, well I'm curious. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go back and uh, have dinner though, so... I may be like 10 minutes, but if, if you want to see the final fic, uh, you, you're gonna ha you have to wait for that, because I need a break to eat something. Okay, I'll be back eventually.
Okay, who's left? Who yet remains in chat? By the looks of it, mostly Blivy. <laughs> nice. Um, oh yeah, egg burgers are nice. I, I've had a couple burgers with eggs on them, and they're usually very good. Um, I find adding eggs to like most things makes them better. I, I, like eggs by themselves are kind of gross, honestly, but just like putting some uh, like egg yolk on an object just makes it taste better usually. It's like a condiment. Uh, yeah, so I, I had a whole ass roast beef dinner since I le left, so I'm feeling very um, revitalized now. And uh, I can probably get through this blackout fic, which, as you can see, has a rather high concept. Well, punch it in once more. And yeah, there we go. Uh, is that too big? That's a more comfortable size for me to read, I think. Okay. Will I do another stream for ones that aren't read? I mean, at some point, inevitably, it's just I I was sort of thinking of these streams as coming in a pair. Uh, as like the last one, then this one for Valentine's Day. Um, so I don't know, like probably eventually, but I just don't have plans for it. It probably won't be for a few months at least, is what I'll say. Uh, because realistically, like if I kept doing Azzy Pants streams, just whenever there was content, I would be doing them forever at this rate, because like the the rate of, of fic production has only increased since like half of the fics I've read today were made since the last Azzy Pants stream. So it would just become a feedback loop and it, I couldn't sustain it. Like there has to be an ending eventually, right? Um, Because boy, I, yeah, I just don't want to have this drag on for so long that I get sick of it. <laughs> That's my worry. So yeah, this fic was written with the goal of sniping every space on the bingo. All of them. A blackout. Apparently it's an old bingo card, but this is... Whatever. It'll, it'll probably still get a bingo, right? One can assume. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Why is it highlighted? That's kind of hard on my eyes, actually. Why is it like that? Wait, what? Guess I just have to deal with it, I, basically. Um, okay. Asriel was on the bus. Asriel had never liked buses in the first place. They were just cheap, bad cars. What? What are you... What, what is... Why is he coming out the gate with, like, the most insane statement I've ever seen in my whole life? Like, what, what does they mean they're cheap, bad cars? They're not cars, they're buses. They're, they're large, expensive cars. What is What does he mean by that? What does he mean? Bus hate isn't on the bingo card. That's just there for no reason. What is that? I don't even... That's... that's is that even anti-public transit? That's just like legitimately deranged. Like what is... They're cheap... That's just patently insane. That's, that's not a, an ideological statement at all. It's just wrong. I don't know what he's on about. It's like, I hate sand. Well, that made sense. There's reasons to hate sand. But cheap, bet you can't afford a bus, Azzy. What the fuck are you talking about? You know how much a bus costs? I don't. It's too much for you, you broke-ass college bum. I don't see your ass driving a bus. Anyway. <clears throat> But if there was anything that could have so completely ruined buses for him, uh, as it did, it was college. As you'll never want it to see a bus again. Uh, honestly, um, I usually took a bus to university, but I, I did obtain a car uh, about a year into my degree, and it was the worst fucking event 
um, like, well, not, not of my life, but you know what I mean? It was, it was like on almost all levels was a bad change because I could now drive to school, which theoretically took a shorter amount of time. And so I would get up later, I would put off leaving, I would be, I would be later in the schedule. But <clears throat> all the time I saved from driving instead of busing, every day, would be lost trying to find fucking parking, and then having to go to a further away parking spot outside the campus, and then having to walk to class, and then to get a fucking parking ticket on the way back, because I wasn't sure where I was allowed to park on the road. And it was like that every fucking day, but I was I was stuck, because I couldn't go back to going to an earlier schedule to get the bus anymore. I was addicted. To, to the personal transport. Um, like, a bus was literally faster, but I was just addicted to using a car, and so I didn't go back. It, it was... it was terrible. Like, parking is such a fucking pain in the ass. Am I fixed now? Um... I don't know. If, uh, if I have to go downtown, I'll say, <clears throat> the desire to not have to find a parking spot in, in downtown is greater than my desire to not take the bus, because uh, busing to downtown is like 40 minutes, and a car ride is like 20 minutes for me, but even so, I'll, I'll always take the bus downtown if I can. I just hate parking, dude. And the public transit in my city isn't even good. It's like bad. We have a really shitty public transit system here. Some Mickey Mouse shit, but it's, uh, I still prefer it half the time, even though I own a car. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Uh, nonetheless, not knowing how to ride a bike, not knowing how to drive or owning a car, and not being able to think of other means of transport, such as flying or catapult, Azriel was riding the bus on his trip back to hometown. <clears throat> Wait, planes exist. Hometown definitely didn't have an airport, and it's too late anyway. Is Azriel like a crazy person in this fic? I'm just like, why is this a train of thought? Like, if you don't own a car, obviously you're taking a bus on an interstate trip. America doesn't have fucking passenger rail. You're taking a bus. You're not flying to your hometown with like a thousand people in it on a on a helicopter. You're not cycling for a thousand miles. You're going to take a bus. What is your problem, Asriel? Like, actually. Asriel pulls another blunt out of his front pocket of his leather jacket. Oh, uh, no. Out of the front pocket of the leather jacket Zap bought him as a parting gift. Zap. What do you want to bet that's burger pants? pointedly ignores the death glitters of the bus driver. You're getting kicked off the bus if you're smoking, Asriel. You're not getting a glitter. The bus driver is going to stop and he's going to kick you out onto the road and then drive away. Asriel doesn't know how to use a bus. Maybe that's why he hates them, is because he keeps lighting up blunts and then getting kicked out, and then he doesn't know why it keeps happening, because he's just that dumb. That could be it, actually. Shouldn't that guy be looking at the road? Not like there's any cars in out here anyway. Oh, hey, is that an eagle? I was at this moment that Asriel, dreamer, smoking a fat blunt, turned to look out the window at an eagle. Saw it. A thin black vertical stripe reaching from the direction hometown was in all the way up into what looked like infinity. It doesn't spell anything. It's just capitalized. As an ADHD person, Asriel's ADHD. ADHD people don't smoke weed on the fucking bus. If you're doing that, that's your problem. Uh, where is my... Wasn't, wasn't there something on here? I'm pretty sure Zap is uh, Burger Pants' Pizza Pants' name. Oh wait, there's weed. That's important. There we Gaster cameo, sloppy kissing. Where the fuck is it? There it is. If it's not actually Zap, then I'll, uh... Uni trauma? Nah, not like in buses isn't trauma. You're a crybaby.
Uh, Asriel rubbed the window with the side of his fist to get rid of the, the line of grime. The grime remained undeterred, seeming smug in its apparent position on the other side of the window. Asriel returned to appreciating the fact that there was smoke in his lungs instead of oxygen. More than 29 minutes later, Asriel was out of weed. Even more concerningly, what Asriel had realized was a thin black vertical stripe reaching from the direction the hometown is in all the way up into what looked like infinity was becoming decreasingly thin. The of the bus was getting closer. The bus was definitely getting closer. Asriel knew this because he was 70, no, 65? Percent sure he was no longer high. Anyway, what Asriel was getting at was that the, you know, the thing was approaching relatively, might not, or may or might not be expanding, and was definitely already big. Right, that's what she said. How's your voice? Uh, it's holding in. I, I, I was going to stop after the last fic, but I, I went to have dinner, then I came back for one more bonus fic. Right now, I'm actually not doing too bad. Voice feels okay, but it's going to get... Uh, bad pretty quick, I'm pretty sure, if I read this. More than 14 minutes after the bus driver realized they were heading straight, I'm not going to say it, getting sh um, toward a rapidly encroaching black wall, turned around, failed to get away in time, therefore getting shrouded in darkness. This is what the international date li is this what the international dateline is like? And ashamedly went back to heading hometownward. Asriel stepped out onto the bus station. Wait, what? Oh, they're they're in the dark fountain. That's th what? Well, that's on the bingo. Lovely. More than four. Uh, no, wait. This we get rid of that. Chapter one. Dark, darker yet as he pants, sir. Okay. Despite the sky seemingly having a stroke, as his bus was only seven minutes late, dropping him off from college. And when that door opened, you had better believe it was just around the, around the left corner. Immediately shocking him on the shoulder with a sarcastic bro punch. Oh no, I. This is first person. The fuck. But not capitalized. Shocking him in the shoulder with a sarcastic bro punch the second he stepped out of the bus, followed by a... Hey. Uh. Bro, have you been? I was college. But he suplexed me straight into the... Damn... Asphalt. And I was out cold before I... What is this fic, dude? Why is it so weird? Why is it like this? There's underscores censoring the words? What, I, I, it hurts my eyes because of the highlight colors? Uh. Oh frick, that was Zap, is he still breathing? I think he's just unconscious. Why is the first thing I did after getting the hometown knocking my friend unconscious? What is wrong with me? No more ice, please. Oh good, Zap was just asleep. Why is he having a dream but not wanting ice? Is he too cold? No, he's a very reasonable temperature for a dog monster. Un un it's a controversial take i guess does ice symbolically represent asriel is that so this is written in like third person limited but the perspective character changes periodically hang on uh the, the perspective character changes between but sometimes it's first person when pizza pants is talking but third person when asriel is the perspective character even though he's not actually talking in first person that makes sense Asriel decided to stop this train of thought. The human bus driver leaned over. Hey, uh, your friend looks like he's bleeding. Is he... Oh, wait, don't monsters not have blood? What is this accent I'm supposed to be replicating here? Don't monsters not have blood. Yeah, that's probably right. So all those required biology courses weren't for nothing. 
Actually, sir, monsters don't have any bodily fluids at all, but some monsters, depending on species, can, depending on, on emotions and stimuli, secrete liquid anyway. Thus, most monsters can sweat, most with uh, eyes can cry, most monsters that have mouths can salivate, and my friend here is one of the rare few which release a red blood-like substance in response to pain and physical trauma. Seems legit. Uh, was like bodily fluids on here? No, that was the Umrizi Pants one. What, why is this on the card? Like, what scenario was this meant to cover? I don't want to, I don't want to think about it. Um. Hmm. Sweat. Piss, yeah. Monsters are weird. Would you mind stepping off the folding wrap so I can drive home and be with my family do whatever the hell is going on? He talks like a character from uh, from Ring, the adventure game. He talks like meme. That that's the direction they gave the voice actor. Is like they just wrote the text like this and told him to do whatever voice made sense. Actually, should I pull that up? I feel like I should pull that up. How do you spell his name? There's the... This is a random clip from the game. Enough, stupid dwarf. I have been the plaything of your lies for too long. This is a YouTube short. I know that there is a sword destined for me. Northrum. Where is it? Nothing. Uh, I must never heard of nothing. It is the good blacksmith who makes weapons and his apprentice knows. Oh, this is from the second one. That doesn't have the same voice. That's not okay. Never mind. It was a failed, failed bit. Uh... Asriel apologized profusely as he stepped over to the Folden Ramp and watched- It's like- the, that's like the Elden Ring. <laughs> the Folden Ramp. And watched the- the kind bus driver drive back into the distance. The bus driver. Asriel forgot to pay the bus driver. You have to do that before you get on the bus, Asriel! God, he's, he doesn't know how to use a bus. That's why he hates them. He keeps getting arrested and shit. They keep not letting him on and doesn't know what's happening. And they keep kicking him off because he smokes weed. He probably tried hijacking it once and driving it himself and also got arrested Then hates buses because of that. Asriel's actually like the dumbest man alive in this canon. Asriel returned to looking at the uh, at the bus that would not be returning to him before returning to Zap. The pool of not blood under Zap was getting somewhat noticeably wide. Was losing too much blood a bad thing for monsters or just humans? That must have been one one of the days Asriel's didn't show up to class. Wait, no, he remembers showing up that day. All right, that was the week he was spent in a drunken haze. That would do it. Anyway, he should probably get zapped to the hospital just to be safe. Asriel slung the dog monster, just keep saying it, over his shoulders and set in the direction of hometown hospital, hoping it was not closed on account of something being wrong with the sky. The sky. Whenever Asriel looked up into it, he could tell something was deeply wrong, as if he were gazing into the void. The void was gazing back into him, and the void already had its claws reaching toward him to rip his eyes out. Very specific. It was at this point that I regained consciousness, uh... I regained the consciousness which Azzy had stolen from me. Uh, hey, Az, why am I being carried by you? Is it supposed to be you making a move on me or am I being kidnapped? No, 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 not at all. I would never. You were bleeding out, so I was taking you to the hospital. Azriel does not know if Zap remembers getting a suplex, but hopes he doesn't. Wait, does wishing amnesia upon your friends make you a bad person? Mm, mm. Better go to r slash am I the asshole, Azriel, and... See what they have to say. I thought monsters didn't have blood. Actually, never mind. Are you feeling okay? Am I? The trail of dust behind us looks like it stopped a while ago. Uh, but I still can't remember why Azzy suplexed me. Did he become a pro wrestler in college? Has he forgotten how to greet people any other way than by introducing them to the floor? 
Am I supposed to be honored to have been knocked out? Wait, is suplexing legal in wrestling? I regret knowing literally nothing about wrestling. I climbed off his back and attempt to lift him off the ground and over my back. This was probably the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life, and that was saying something. What? Hey, Asriel, I'm buying us a pizza. Do you want some? Okay. Mission accomplished. After his peculiar outburst, Zap led Asriel to the local Ice Ease Pizza for some reason, instead of QC's, which was the only other place in town one could buy an edible pizza. The town seems quieter, quieter than I remember. And why did no one other than Pizza Pants show up? Oh. And why did no one other than Pizza Pants show up for this return? Did they have the wrong day? Asriel honestly appreciates losing the on entourage, but at the very least shouldn't Chris have shown up. Well, everyone else had assumed that you were dead because they couldn't contact you for like three months straight. So, um, cause you didn't tell anyone you were at college and Chris was the only one who knew and they couldn't actually convey that um, because the internet was down. So you were kind of out of luck, buddy. They, they, there's a grave for you in the cemetery. It's, it got bad. Uh, well, earlier today, uh, when all that darkness came out of the old bunker, uh, Officer Rendon gathered up half the town into a militia to see who was down there, and everyone who didn't hold themselves up somewhere secure. That's why... The two stepped into the building. Uh, sadly, there's no one to take our money for a pizza. Asriel put it on as sarcastically aghast of an expression as possible. Feeling? How could you? Man, nah, man, you gotta do it like this. I said... I said before uh, doing with my face what Asriel had obviously been trying to do with his own. Uh, turning to a smug grin after. I'm never gonna beat you at that, am I? You never are. Come here, I know where they keep the cooked pizza. They sell that here? <laughs> nah, the employees can't have it either. But there's one perfectly cooked pizza in the back room that always stays hot. The boss won't let me touch it. <laughs> That's really funny. What the fuck is this? It's a shit post. This is just like the Courier New Delta Rune Sky descriptions. Um, sure, I probably. <laughs> I don't quite remember. It's probably something about the the looming outer dark, reaching, scrawling hands across the meaningless babble of houses whose faces glared out like soulless eyes. That 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 kind of thing. How's my Courier improv? That it kind of worked. Um, he likes to say rhymed a lot. Outer dark, always need that. Um, comparing things to invalids, inscru uh, inscrutably. Yeah. Oh, and the best banger of all, the blackness dripped down the barrier like paint. That was like a, 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 a single line of yeek dialogue crept into one by one. I'm not sure where that came from. Sounds like when House of Leaves gets semi-coherent. That's probably what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> From what little I know of his taste in literature. Uh, okay, where was I? Azrael made a mental note that Zap calls someone here boss. But since security is home today... I wipe my legitimately obtained level 20 access keycard, revealing a- oh my god. Revealing a gilded marble pedestal adorned with one perfect crust- perfect stuffed crust pretzel crust alfredo sauce marinara sauce mozzarella and cheddar and provolone topped with pepperoni, peppers, pineapple, ham, bacon, sausage, sardine, spinach, chicken, mushrooms, and one plastic figurine of Icy's head. A beacon of light shined through the opaque ceiling to grace the surface of this beauty. Some Spongebob shit, straight up. Behold. That is a pizza. That, sh that sure is a pizza. Was Azrael going to be expected to eat it? I accidentally snickered under my breath. It sure is. Let me pull up some chairs. After the two acquired cheap disposable folding chairs, they sat down on either side of the pedestal as if it were a table. Azrael exhaled a sigh of relief despite himself. They were still friends. Great. Great, they're still friends. I popped the question. Uh, will you marry me? No. So, uh, how was college? 
Wait, uh, I should check the bingo card. That's the whole point of this fic. This is a different bingo card though. Uh, the Lady Pizza, they did it. Um, I don't know if bus driver is supposed to represent an original character. Maybe in a pinch. Uh, no one's puked yet. No. Uh, uh, no, nothing else. Uh, Asriel did not visibly flinch. Asriel realized that this was the last possible second he could turn back. But up to this point, he had never actually lied to his friend. That if he kept going on the path he was on, he would have to have a bad time. I mean, someday choose between keeping his own integrity and keeping his friend's trust. And even then, it was possible for Pizza Pants to find out on his own. Uh, what happened at college? After enough of a hesitation that Asriel feared Zap could have grown suspicious, Asriel spoke up. College was about what I expected. I got good grades, missed my folks, made a lot of friends, and now I'm a portion of the way through getting a degree. I don't know. Nothing really worth talking about. How have things been with you? Asriel didn't turn back and desperately tried to forget his missed opportunity to. Uh, really? You sure you didn't meet any, uh, chicks? Asriel continued to not visibly flinch. Do NBs count as chicks? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? I suppose it would probably depend on the uh, individual's preference. But, but really, how have you been? Is, is this some, like, just a single reference to, like, oh, he's dating Kara or something, and then, like, back to business? <laughs> It'll be never referenced again. Uh, but really, how have you been? Anything happened this past year? Asriel was desperate to change the subject. Asriel, if you, if you don't want to talk about college, and you spent the last three to six months at college. I got bad news for you, buddy, because that's all anyone is going to ask you about for the next week. Uh, eh, nothing much, really. You? I successfully deflected the question, not really wanting to explain to Azzy how I threw my life away and my dreams to become a corporate sales slave. Pizza Pants apparently had not noticed Azriel attempting to change the subject. Asriel had, on the other hand, noticed Pizza Pants' eye twitch the way it always does when he lies, as he said nothing much really happened the past year. And Asriel made another mental note, but decided to in the immediate not try and consent to nothing being said of how Zap has been. How's Chris? Have you heard from them? Zap idly reached to grab a slice before real realizing they'd forgotten to cut it. They seem to be doing pretty well. The past week especially, they got a new friend. They seem to have been more uh, confident, driven, almost... They also came to talk to me a total of eight times, given this past week a high account in the entire last year combined. It's seeming to be occurring to Azzy that I'm probably not the best person to ask about his brother. Sibling? Sibling. Hang on a minute while I grab the pizza cutter. Uh, hang on a minute while I grab the pizza cutter. So, Zap was working at- a no, that's still not narration. What is this fucking teal ass text? So Zap was working at Icy's now, why? Who would choose that life? Does he need the money now, and a job in theater would take too long to get? Was he paying for a sick relative? Even then, wouldn't anywhere else give better pay and have better conditions? The thing that made Asriel really worry was the fact that Zap was avoiding the subject. That couldn't possibly mean anything good. Fear me for a wheel the cutter of pizza. I declared in what could be interpreted as a sarcastic tone. I then said, It's pizza cutting time, and cutting the pizza all over the... Good. If you go for a cunning ham pun, a cutting ham, I'm gonna, I'm closing this tab, and I'm reading the other fic. Just a fair warning. I, I I'm not, not sure what's gonna happen, but, um, because there is ham on that pizza. I'm pretty sure. It was at this moment that, upon Pizza Pants cutting the pizza, the two friends each claimed a slice from the pedestal. A deep rumbling was heard by all. As real dreamer. Did you hear that? Shock word, Uckledly. That's actually, oh my god. How did someone remember my real name? I thought no one remembered my real name. How did someone manage to learn about that? You arched both blasphemers. Oh no. You have eaten icy sacred pizza. What? 
Both of you will die. And thy punishment is death. Asriel and Pizza Pants started running for the exit of the building that was now shaking violently. And to the one who calls himself Pizza Pants. We made it out of the building seconds before the roof caved in to see a colossal, terrifying, familiar figure rise from the rubble where the building had been. You're fired! It's Icy Prime. Great. So that was chapter one. Cool. Judgment! Crash! Prepare thyself! That's gonna be teleporting after them and doing combos for the rest of the fic. It's become a regular show fic. I was saying it's some Spongebob shit, like the fucking Master Krabby Patty in a golden box somewhere in the back. Like, that's straight, straight out of Spongebob, I'm sure. Um, Prepare thy nuts for a sound drubbing! And then he kicked a V1 in the nuts. That's, that's the plot of the game. It was 12.17 in the afternoon. The sky had become, had been usurped by a soul-sucking void, and me and my childish friend, I think you mean my childhood friend and I, Pizza Pants, were running from a stay-puffed grade icy kaiju, currently in the middle of destroying everything between them and it. Wait. It transitioned from first to third person mid-sentence. That's fascinating. It could be said that today was not the greatest of days. Oh yeah, I also got fired. Can't forget that part. Quick, in here. Having run halfway across town, Asriel pulled Zap into the conveniently placed convenience store. Hey. Do you, uh, do you mind if we take shelter here from the apocalypse for a bit? It would really help. Asriel put on a nervous smile, expected to be turned away. You'll have to ask the manager. Until then, I won't tell anyone you're here. Thanks. I followed up uh, my expression of gratitude with collapsing into a dignified pile on the floor as he sat down on the floor in a significantly more dignified way. None of it felt real. Hang on, hang on. We got Sans. He's here. Hello, Sans. Uh, still nothing else, I think. Nothing yet. Um, everything was so distant, unfamiliar. Have you ever heard of Jamais Vu? It's the counterpart to... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. Um, I had a very unique moment there. Um, I won't explain, never mind. It was not Jamais Vu I experienced, it was something else. I think there was a, it was a Vsauce video, right? There was a Vsauce video about Jamais Vu. Can someone confirm that for me? I need confirmation on, on the Vsauce. It's the counterpart to Deja Vu, where familiar things appear unknown. A commonly referenced example is when you say a word till it stops sounding like a word. The entire world felt like that right now. There is a Vsauce video, okay. So what happened there is that I think I referenced this concept. I had a, a, a sentence almost the exact same as this in uh, the old unpublished Gaster fanfic I wrote in 2016. Um, but it's been so long since I wrote it that I remembered that line as like having invented the concept of Jamais Vu and not having heard about it in a Vsauce video with 5 million other people. So for a second there I read that and I was like, wait a minute, did this, that, that's not public, right? This person doesn't have access to and is making the deepest cut reference of all time to my own unpublished fan fiction. And I had a moment of panic, of, of raw panic, <laughs> but it's okay. It was just Vsauce. Oh, that feeling. Is is there another name for that in the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows? Yeah, that is very uncanny. I had a Ratatouille childhood flashback. <laughs> Basically. Uh, no, that was not Jamie Vu. It was a different thing. It was like Baguette Vu. I don't know.
I, st I thought this was also called, by the way, Gestaltzerfall. When you st when you say a word so many times it starts sounding like a word. It's like a German Gestaltzerfall. Or I think that's what it is. When your sense of uh, reality breaks down. The entire world felt like that right now. The fact that I lost my job, that Azzy is home from college, that the sky broke and the titanic icy chased me across town. That I had no idea if any of the townspeople who went into the bunker survived. Shouldn't it all make me feel something? This is yeek monologuing. This is exactly the tone. This is what Alex would say if he was in the situation. Exactly. Grief, fear. Grief, fear, panic, regret, joy. I don't have a clue what the hell I should be feeling. But whatever it is, it's not there. I open my eyes. The distance between me and reality feels shorter than a minute ago. Asriel is spending his money to buy food from the janitor. He walked back over and spoke to me. Perfect. So, are you coming with me or not? Would he be offended if I admitted I hadn't heard a word he said? That's fine, I don't blame you. I'll be able to find Chris and Mom on my own out there. Oh, I should go with him in that case. Hoping the little buddy would be good. Welcome. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, good luck. We'll certainly need it. <laughs> Sans is just chilling. It was a perfect yeek monologue. As soon as I realized that, it all clicked into place. The power of the roaring shines within you. You leave the bunker. Susie follows you out. She looks angry. So, all this was for nothing then? Ralsei looks pale and is leaning on Susie for support. You need to get Noel. You can leave me behind. I would slow you down. That's how Ralsei speaks. Oh no, I'm not losing you too. Why? Why are they censored? Why? Are, why is hell censored? I don't get it. That's not in the bingo card. Is this a bit? Like what? I'm not. I'm not getting the the reference here. What do you mean? Don't do the voice. That's how Ralsei talks. They're Christian? <laughs> then just use a different swear word. Say fuck. I don't care. Bro is self-censoring like Scott Pilgrim. Hey, don't worry about the voice. He doesn't speak again. Um... Hell no, I'm not losing you too. Noel is in the school closet. You need to find Toriel. So this is your place, eh? Why'd you never invite me over? I was, I was feeling better now. Uh, my mom, it would also be weird. Anyway, Chris, are you home? I rub, I rub my ear, at which point had been... My ear, which had been pointing toward Azzy. Oh, is he screaming? Nothing, huh? Are your walls that thick, or... Uh... Asriel waited for a second. No, I don't think they're here. I suddenly remembered something that would have been helpful to recall earlier. I heard someone say uh, an organized shelter was getting put in place outside of the school. Isn't she a teacher or something? Yes, she would definitely help run something as important as a shelter. There, she's there, let's go. Asriel's, de Asriel's determination almost startled me. I followed him out of the door into the school building. Asriel and Pizza Pants stepped inside. The lights were on, casting beams through the thick dust in the air. Something smelled like printer rink and ruckus could be heard in the distance. As the two wordlessly headed in the direction of the scuffle. That doesn't sound good. As the two almost wordlessly headed toward the direction of the scuffle. Okay, that's kind of funny. As you'll notice how many people uh, could be heard in the rooms they passed. There were a thousand people in hometown. And this a few of them felt safe in their own homes. They found Toriel in the hallway that only led to the unused classroom. Ruckus and scuffle. My parents look at my YouTube video history, and if they find the squares in my Azzy pants, they'll take it away from my. They'll take away my iPad. <laughs> you you can read your gay ship fiction, son, as long as they don't take the Lord's name in vain. That's my parenting goals. Um. Is that crisp? But that skin. 
I saw a little buddy, and Azzy's mom, and the purple lizard girl, a miniature statue of Azzy? Weird. Has Ralsei been turned to stone? Is, or is that just a weird way of describing Ralsei? Weird. Anyway, they were all facing off against a hulking beast of a monster. They had a hole where their eyes could be, a gaping maw instead of a stomach, and a mighty chain emerging in place of that mouth's tongue. Oh, it's King. And to tie it all off, the chain ended in what seemed to be a blade that had yet another mouth on it. There's nothing wrong with being like that. It just makes fighting you a bad idea. <laughs> Nonetheless, everyone in front of me and Azzy seemed to be doing so. You tell King that killing you won't accomplish anything. You want a King voice? Sure it will. I will get the satisfaction of revenge before I die. The stone creeps up his arm all the way to his elbow. One of his fingers breaks off. Susie reminds the enemy. Remember what happened to Lancer? Is this worth it? Is this what you wanted? Do you have the right to talk about Lancer? Besides, none of it matters anymore. All that matters is which of us is leaving this room alive. Uh, we're getting battle narration? Like, narr okay, this is all shifted into narration bullet points for a page. That's not on the bingo cards, they just did that for fun. Still nothing new for the bingo card that I can see. No one's vomiting. And it's Megalovania now. Susie's will is changing. Susie's attack rises sharply. Toriel shoots a fireball at King without being prompted. Susie grimaces in the direction of Ralsei. We're supposed to wait for Chris's command. You will not tell me how to protect my child. King swings the chain toward you. Everyone dodges. What is this? The fuck am I reading? Asriel and Pizza Pants step into line with the rest of the party. How can we help you? I'm here for you, little buddy. The ultimate chapter 7 fanfic is Pizza Pants joins the party during the roaring and beats up King. He just like randomly appears from another room and joins your party. Hell yeah. King booms with laughter. Go home now. It is not safe here. Toriel punches King as hard as she can. <laughs> They're just having a fist fight. Another finger falls off. You tell Asriel and Pizza Pants to guard themselves. You encourage the party. The party's defense raises for this turn. You tell Susie to use Red Buster. King tries to crush the battle box. <laughs> Susie suffers scrapes and bruises. Spamton invests in NFTs. Wait, he didn't do that? At your command, Asriel and Pizza Pants feed Susie back to full. Toriel slaps King in the face. You check King. The stone has crept up to his shoulder. His eyes are blind with frenzied rage. Susie attacks. King does not flinch. King lets out a bestial roar, slowing your movements. He now fights as Horalu. The projectiles are too fast for you to dodge. You cut. You get a cut in your leg. You're smoking shit in a glass pipe. Pizza Pants gets a broken arm. Are you okay? What happened? A broken arm. That sounds bad. Bruh. We need a fan game of this made in scratch. Yeah, yeah, we do. Andrew, did you get into the mountain goats because of Courier New? Or, uh, Courier New, or did you get into Courier New with their allusions to the mountain goats? Uh, neither. I, I listened to that one song that was referenced, but didn't really listen to much of their discography. King Saul fell on his sword when it all went wrong, and Joseph sold his brother down the river for a song. Like, why does that guy sing like that? It's really weird, actually. He, he sings like he doesn't know how to sing, even though I'm sure he knows how to sing. It's like he had to practice for years to learn how to sing that weird and stilted. Fascinating band, I guess, but... Well, it's not a... It's like one guy, isn't it? It's like a band called the Mountain Goats, but it's one fucking guy. And that's, that's the band. It's like Disaster Piece or something. W one of those type of things. Things you do for love are gonna come back to you one by one. Hey guys, that's the title of the fanfic. Anyway. Uh, I'm fine. I've been in a fight before, but this guy hits hard. Pathetic. I'm not giving up yet. What is happening? Did the... Oh, it ended. I'm used to my playlist. Hey, let me just get the actual fucking playlist. Uh, wait. 
no, not, not, not that playlist, fuck. Undertale, uh, stream music, there it is. We can do Omori. The, I think this is an Omori lo-fi kind of vibe, personally. When do they kiss? I don't know, I don't know if they're gonna kiss in this. Legend of the Ten Elemental Masters? I don't know what that is. It sounds familiar, though. I really like how it disregards all rules regarding English prose. The sudden switch to battle narration was like taking the English language back out and sh out back and shooting it. Um, I think that was a taken from a whole quote about Homestuck, but also true of this. You tell everyone to do a basic attack, except for Toriel, who you tell to do dual heal. She listens. King clouds the air with too many spades to see. One million knives. King grabs the battle box and slams it back and forth between the walls of the room. King rips off his petrified arm and throws it as a projectile. <laughs> Fire giant moment. <laughs> then he throws his foot at you or something. King tries to attack. King... Did we win? We sure did. Toriel starts hugging Azzy as hard as it looked like she could. I gave them space. It's past tense? Or I guess, was it always past tense? I don't fucking know. This is amorphous. Oh, Eulalilia. Yeah, okay. I, f I know of Eulalilia, but I didn't know about the book. I, f I forgot about that part. I knew that he was working on this, like, endless game. He was just working on forever. It was like his personal dwarf fortress. And it was completely unclear what the game was or what the premise was. He was just like, whatever came to mind, he would just add to the game. One of those interesting things. I think, uh, who did a video on him? Was it Atrocity Guide? Um, it might, it, maybe it's Atrocity Guide? She's like a really good, um, down the rabbit hole-esque kind of channel. Very interesting videos. Yeah, yeah, that is hers. Okay, good. Uh... So, is this your dad or something? No. Is this your... Oh, talking to Chris. Azrael got the stupidest grin on his face. Yes, I am Chris's father. I am divorced. They are my child. Child, come to my side. You can do a really good Asgore impression. Wow. Uh, we got divorce. Nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to summarize this fic. It's, it's a shit post. It's just chaos. Like, we started off mid-roaring, and there's no one wanting to acknowledge it for a while. You stand next to Asriel. No. Asriel collapses with laughter. You can only stand there. Hang on a minute. I'll get the muffins I baked earlier. We all look terrible. So I take it there, your brother? You're, you're their brother. Never mind. That's correct. It's uh, nice to meet you. I'm Susie. Meeting under better circumstances, etc., etc. Asriel considered asking about whoever they were fighting, but decided not to. Asriel looked at the childlike statue of Asriel. Dwarf Fortress narration. What did I just say? Eurus looks at the statue of Eurus eating a block of cheese and realized something. Who was that? A friend. You clench your fist. It's like, it's like picturing the Arthur meme. I have returned. You may each take one. We each collect a muffin. Toriel takes first bite. Toriel opens her mouth. Empty quote. Empty st is an empty string. I can't pronounce that, Asriel. Toriel's eyes open wide. Chris runs to Toriel's side. Toriel is continuing to choke. Chris! Toriel is coughing up dust. Me! 
make sure Toriel coughs up out the snail shell. Make sure that Asriel stays straight. What the? She's joking, right? She was kidding. She's a pile of dust on the floor around an upside down white heart. Uh, why did did she say that's what is going on? Wait, what? I don't know. This this fic like oscillates between barely being coherent and complete insanity, just like complete incoherent rambling. Homophobic Toriel. That's for the bingo card. She had to. That was her last words in the fic before she died. She had to say homo, uh, like something homophobic. Um, and also character death. Where is it? Wasn't there character death? Or is that in the Umrizi pants? That must have been Umrizi pants, right? Oh, it's up here. Oh, there you go. So she instantly dies from eating a muffin. Cool. At this moment, Asriel Dreamer blacked out. Reality contorted upon itself. The world had reached a stalemate, and as things were, the Delta Warriors would never confront the Angel. The sound of a... a fuck. Retcon resonated through the universe, the entire world rather, and was heard by not a single soul. Um, there's, there's nothing on the bingo for Homestuck references. Little buddy, where'd you learn to make these? These muffins are delicious. Hey, did any of you feel something now? Nah, just you. Enjoy free food. Asriel shrugged and went back to eating. The four of us stood up, and Chris led to some closet. There was something important... That's dialogue. There was, uh, something important in here. Closey, Susie closed her eyes and grumbled, as if finding what to say. I'm not the person who usually explains all this, so don't get mad if I mess it up. In short, you can't come with us. Wait. Snail... Pidge killed Toriel with a snail shell? Is Pidge's cannon is on this one. You're filling up the wrong bingo card, dude. It's the wrong card. Rug. <laughs> Look at this shit. It's like a fucking Easter basket. What? B but I... Seriously, what's in there? That's for me and Chris. I think it wouldn't end well for either of you if you came with us. You saw us fighting there. We can handle ourselves. That unfortunately has nothing to do with it. What the heck is in that closet anyway? You know, the world is ending. Yeah? What's in there is the heart of that. And me and Chris need to go and face it, alone. It's like a prophecy or something. It has to happen that way. And you expect us to sit here and abandon you to save the whale alone? No, I expect you to both leave town and find shelter somewhere safe. Nowhere will be truly safe, but anywhere safer than right now. Uh, right here, right now. And to be honest, I don't think we're gonna s go in there to save the world. The world is too far gone. Then don't go. C Chris, you agree with us, right? You shake your head. Second person, third person, and first person. <laughs> At the same time. We need to go. I don't really understand it, but something bad would happen if we weren't to go, if we weren't going to head in. Anyway, there's someone in there we need to save, and we need to do it alone. I'm sorry. Asriel runs up and hugs Chris just as tight as he knows they're fine with. I'm so proud of you. You're acting all grown up. I looked away as he was crying. I, I hope I get to see you again. Thank you so much for being my sibling. Your arms remain limp at your sides. You don't want to scare them. You need to do this anyway. You pull yourself away from the embrace, reach toward your chest, and... Wait, why? Who's the blue? Who's blue text? We have, like, I want child.mp3 playing now, too. <laughs> Great. And there, you got it out again. You can do this pretty consistently now. You set the soul on the ground and point at it as if commanding it to stay. Shame there's no convenient containers on hand. Anyway, it drags itself around in a circle, presumably practicing obedience. Asriel is about to ask if you're okay. You hug him first. <laughs> so blue is just for like, uh, indirect third person 
narration about soulless Chris as opposed to soul Chris. That's fine. Th thank you. I suppose this is goodbye. Azrael shuts his eyes and tries not to think about losing Chris. The closet door opens itself as if waiting. This is a, a quote from an Undertale amalgamate, I think. I think. Like a, a memory head? I think the, the memory heads say that. The soul moves toward you. Against all odds, you feel ready. You pick up the soul and... Ellipsis. You step into the closet. It all fades to black. Azzy and me step outside the school in silence. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> now we just go back to like... Business as usual. This is like someone's revenge for I asked for a... Uh, like, and let that sink in. Asriel and Pizza Pants' dialogue were slightly shaded depending on who was speaking, and they made it really easy to do voices. So I was like, "Hey, fanfic writers, if you want it to be, it to be easy for me to read, uh, try color coding the dialogue." And like, someone thought that was a stupid idea and did this as a prank. That that's what it feels like right now. The amalgamate narration is, "Could this be goodbye?" Oh, maybe that's it. Eh, close enough. Oh boy. There's still a third of this left. Oh my god. We had left the school and were about halfway across the street when he felt an evil presence watching us. There you are! Oh no. Run. The pair proceeded to. The pair proceeded to, as they say, book it. You can't get away this time! Asriel was running through the forest, heading away from town, still being pursued, when a thought occurred to him. Hey. Yeah? Why was he talking to me while we were running for our lives? So, Susie was casting magic back there, right? Even though magic isn't real. That's what it looked like. I narrowly avoid tripping on a branch. The guy we're fighting was also doing magic things, even though magic isn't real. That's what common sense would tell you. Now what the heck you getting at? So either they have something we don't, or it's something to do with the world right now, and we might be able to use it. Ah, uh, lo you lost me. I almost ran into a tree because I was distracted by Azzy's aimless waffling. Get to the point. What if we try to cast magic to defeat Icy? I look behind me. Icy is continuing to gain on us, and we can't run forever. So, hypothetically, if magic was real, and uh, hypothetically, if we could use it, what do we even do? How would we defeat Icy using magic? Uh, we could summon a spirit to help us. Can magic do that? You seem to be expert here. Maybe? Right, so let me get this straight. Your plan is, we stop running away from the giant monster, we turn around, put our hands together, and hope that some magic spirit saves us. Y yes You will die by my hand. There is nothing you can do to escape. I mean, it sounds better than any of other, than any of our other option, so let's do it. So, uh, count of three. Sure, I'll count. One. I try to take a deep breath. My heart keeps racing anyway. Two. I can feel the adrenaline coursing through my veins. Wait, do monsters have adrenaline? Well, actually, monsters can secrete any bodily substance they need to, depending on emotional desire. Three. Me and Azzy stop running, skidding to a halt on the dry leaves. Azriel takes each of Pizza Pants' hands into his own. If they can do this... If they can do this at all, they're doing it as a union. That's gay. I try to direct my focus, my concentration, my will, into bringing anything, anything to help us. Azriel prays to the angel to send something to save Pizza Pants. <laughs> there's the colors mean there's six diegetic narrators. Yes. Wait, what is the- I don't- understand that message. This is Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh! level cognitive dissonance around magic. I, f I, I do think I watched that anime at some point, but I, do I don't remember Kaiba's opinions on magic. That's that, it's not a plot point that I recall from Yu-Gi-Oh! It's all read by the Disco Elysium voiceover guy. Sisyphus Prime. I'm not even attempting a Lenville Brown impression with my voice in this state. 
This is like if 17776 was specifically made to hurt your eyes. He just never believed anything that was happening in front of him. Oh, he spent the whole time <laughs> thinking that. Wow, it's weird that I keep hallucinating these giant monsters punching each other. That's how he spoke, right? It's kind of like that. He was always like, Gozo Boro, you were a bad father and you betrayed me. That's kind of how he, how he talked. Obelisk the Tormentor. That's him. Toe to tip, that's Bart. Uh, something happens. Asriel Dreamer and Pizza Pants each feel a deep, warm sensation from within their very cores spread to fill their entire bodies, merge into a single force, and rise into the air above them. The two open their eyes to look up to see what they've created. What is this? Fucking, is it, did they make a kernel sprite? What is this shit? Uh, oh, they summoned fucking Lizzie. Hey there, thanks for calling. That's a real pickle you found yourself in. Floating in the air above us is a human wearing an elaborate brown and white dress, absolutely covered with decals portraying me and Asriel's faces. Her hair held ribbons which held decals portraying me and Asriel's faces, again with the Dwarf Fortress narration. You found an elaborate emerald cabochon bearing pictures of cheese. It is a uh, you know, brilliant cut. Each facet bears a picture of cheese. It is surrounded in uh, an ivory rim. Uh, masterfully carved with images of cheese. Reaching critical mass. Uh, her backpack had more images of us on it, and her belt buckle was a heart with two images overlaid on top of it. And I weighed, uh, uh, wore thigh-high black fishnets and black combat boots and uh, three layers of black eyeliner and white foundation and a uh, MCR t-shirt with uh, Jared's way's face uh, on on it. Uh, you get the idea. It was the most frightening thing I'd ever seen, and that was saying something. Um, you're welcome. No problem. Just let me deal with that proverbial pickle for a sec. The strange creature pointed both of its palms at Icy's as if offering two simultaneous high fives. Azzy Pants Blast! A blinding, bright brown and white ray burst from the outstretched palms, annihilating Icy in a matter of seconds. Yes, go for That was good. Uh, so they summoned Lizzie to do the Biden blast. Oops, looks like that's all the time I'm allowed to be here. Stay safe, lovebirds, and remember... The creature inexplicably transformed into a pigeon that promptly flew away and was never seen again. Okay. And remember. Is that like, don't forget? Is this just like a more efficient way of saying don't forget? Like she cut herself off. What is that? Would you agree to never speak of this ever again? You know, I, I think I would. Now nah, we're not running for our lives. Uh, did we turn back? Susie told us not to. Asriel sighs. No, I'm, I'm ready to leave all of this behind. <laughs> just, just fuck the guess I'm out. Let's go to a hotel and like, I don't know, fuck or something. Just, <laughs> let's just go have a, just a sex scene that Andrew will have to cut out of the stream. Azzy and I watched, uh, walked silently through the rest of the forest till it broke out into the foothills that surround the hometown forest. My legs were killing me. We'd been running so much. Hey, is that a cave over there? You might be right. Let's go and see. Asriel and Pizza Pants approached the cave and found that it was actually a dilapidated structure built into the side of the hill. The door had fallen off and was only a single room deep. Room deep. Is this the bunker again, or is it something else? Toby Fox is sweating with these Delta Rune spoilers. It's been real quiet since this fanfic dropped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right, Blue is like, Azzy Pants Girl is just the Colonel Sprite prototyped with Azriel and Pizza Pants. It's the, uh, yeah. If, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, you reference, uh, they have fusion in that, right? If you're a Steven Universe fan, you reference the fusion. If you're a Homestuck fan, you, you, you talk some shit about Colonel Sprites. This is all newsletter spoilers, yeah, shit. 
And I just said that leaks were banned on my Discord server the other day. Damn it. Uh, the door had fallen off and it was only a single room deep. But seeing as horror, the sky visible... What? But seeing as twere the sky visible, the sun would be setting right now, and it could actually be seen looking by looking up that the rain clouds were rolling in, they needed the shelter. The two took off their shoes and stepped in. Why did you why are they taking their shoes off? Is this is this rural Japan? Like there it's it's a filthy bunker in a hill. You should keep your shoes on. There's gonna be like heroin needles in there. As pop. As pop. As pop. As pop. Damn. Several weeks later, the pigeon realized that it had forgotten to introduce itself, but the opportunity had passed. Devastating. Yeah, it is impossible. Like, at the best of times, I tend to insert random ad libs while reading, but in this case, you really couldn't tell if I'm making it up or not. I'm beginning to regret not snagging a blanket or something when he stopped by your place, I said as I gently placed myself upon the hard metal floor. Why did you take your shoes off? It's cold. Your feet are gonna get cold, you idiot. Asriel didn't want to think about um, the home he was. He wasn't sure when he would next be heading back. <laughs> what a sentence. So he distracted himself looking through the various things left on the countertop in the abandoned shack. Is this even the bunker or is this something else? Hey, do you think this is still edible? Asriel asked while holding up a can of beans and a bottle of alcohol. My stomach grumbled serendipitously. Okay. Absolutely. Cold canned beans turned out to be about as pleasant as one would think they would be. The alcohol, uh, the first bottle, the alcohol, the first... <laughs> this is, that's a stroke sentence. The alcohol of the first bottle I had ever drank, and honestly do not see the appeal. The two of us sat down on the floor. I should be thinking about sleep soon, I suppose. This is like, um, what is that reminding me of? This is like late Umris, when like the grammar started to break down in real time <laughs> as the fic got further and further in and like sentences stopped making sense. Why did you get the job working at Ices? Oh no, he figured that out. Uh, the pay was good? You and I both know it's not. It has this weird cult that barely makes money by selling mostly edible, mostly inedible pizza. And given that wherever we woke up just now, that cult may have had something to do with the end of the world. If you needed the money, you could have just gotten a job literally anywhere else. Why didn't you just go there? Uh, why did you go there? As he doesn't know about the job market, dude. Uh, I don't know where else there is to work in town. I don't think Asgore can afford to take on help. <laughs> Toriel died in front of both her children and we're glossing over that. Yeah, of course. It was, it was just for the bingo space. Um... Yeah, this is just an author. This wasn't in character. That's just the author typed that out loud. Um, my fists were clenched. I didn't want to talk about this right now. What was I going to say to him? No, Asriel. You could have gotten the job literally anywhere else. I snapped at him. Heck, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, heck. Oh, hell. Dang nabbit. Asriel was rent speechless. He had never seen the sight of Zap before. <laughs> It oscillates between, like, random points of melodrama and completely ignores others, like, at the same time. It's it's amazing. It just decides what it's about on a per-page basis and is about that and nothing else. You know I went to ICs? Because they don't have a background check. Because they don't... They don't give you an interview. Because they don't even need you to have a resume. 
That's why I went to Icy's. Because no one else would take me. Heck, I really shouldn't have said that either. What am I doing? Asriel opened his mouth to respond, but there was no words. You didn't know I killed six children, Azzy? I got role swapped with your dad from Undertale. The blood was on my hands before I could even realize I was sentient. Asriel, no, that, that was an ad lib for clarity. If anyone's tabbed out, that was an ad lib. Um, you don't know what it's like for things to be hard on you, but things to not be handed to you on a silver platter. Perfect Asriel with his perfect family and a perfect career. Lived a perfect life. Let that sink in kind of kind of vibes. We got Pizza Pants Envy. That's good. I don't know. Does this count as Child Prodigy? I'm not sure. Oh, they, they did drink alcohol. That's true. Uh, hasn't puked yet. Hasn't kissed yet. Gaster has not showed up. I think the bus driver is supposed to be... No, that was... um. No, that it, Lizzie isn't an OC. She's like a, a shared ACDS property at this point. Uh, in a pinch, the bus driver does count as an OC. Like, the, they had speaking lines and like a, a typing quirk and shit. By which you mean an accent, but really it's a typing quirk. Um, unfortunately, a blackout's not looking likely because two of the squares are just Pizza Pants being fat, and that hasn't been referenced yet, so... Have I seen the fanfic series Dream Come True? I have not. Generally, if it's not by Creator New, I haven't seen it. <laughs> that's, that's a rule of thumb. Uh, wh what about it, though? What's it like? Yeah, the, the fic that's fishing for a bingo specifically, I'll point out, has still not gotten a bingo. It's kind of slacking. He must puke. It's the only way. If he pukes, we get a bingo. If they kiss, we get a bingo. There, there's a couple outs here. The rain was thundering around the structure. If Pizza Pants were talking at normal volume, Asriel would be unable to hear him. Fortunately, Pizza Pants was not talking at normal volume. Did you enjoy college? It's funny for you to go to college and your dad saved up money for a year. For me to go to college, I'd have to go so far into crippling debt that I would be hanging off for the rest of my life if I ever afforded it at all. I desperately need to stop talking. Why was I still saying things? How do I stop? It's like I'm being written by some author who's sleep deprived. I don't think you realize exactly how lucky you down on my luck I was before I left. Before I left. Every time I couldn't afford something, every time I failed to obtain some luxury, you were there for me. Lending me money, giving me support. Did you realize, Azzy? Did you realize I was homeless back then? He was homeless? Oh boy. I guess it's not confirmed that he's not homeless in Delta Rune, strictly speaking. Yeah, true. This is a new patch of the bingo card, so it would be impressive to get a bingo on the new one. I guess to get a bingo without knowing the categories, you just have to make like the tropiest Azzy Pants fic possible. And I think we have enough Azzy Pants fics in existence at this point to, to to define tropes. Like, you could probably make a pretty good stab at it. Asriel froze, the proverbial blood drained from his face. But he said, Yeah, I said that I was a son of a rich family, just like you. And then I just kept forgetting my wallet, and I would never tell you my real name because I was shy and I didn't want you to meet my parents. I lied, Azzy. People do that sometimes. Azriel was at his limit. <laughs> That's it. I've really had it. I'm absolutely at my limit. Do you really think that I... Do you think that I wanted to be perfect? Azriel's voice was quiet, yet dripping with ice. He finally managed to shut me up. It's like gone into like ridiculous melodrama now in the bunker. <laughs> What? This has some kind of vibe, it's... I don't know, it's... Did, did Bojack Horseman do this sometimes, where you'd have some like ridiculous cartoon hijinks, and, and they'd just be sitting in the aftermath of this ridiculous like chase scene, and then start having this really like depressing conversation? I, <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling for like, what is this reminding me of? Maybe a Bojack kind of vibe? 
They're because they're sitting in like a bunker <laughs> with like the sky has turned black and shit. And Chris and Susie are like fighting the final boss and they're just like in a in a shack <laughs> in the woods talking about like socioeconomic in uh, inequality and shit. <laughs> it's amazing. You're tearing me apart, pizza pants! It's end of the world, so you may as well yell about your feelings, Kerr. Is that on TV tropes? Gangsters drinking tea behind them in this convo? I hope so. He can he can be their therapist. Revise his role from that one humorous ending. Therapist Gaster. I hope they just end up like fighting each other in the woods. And it becomes this like brutal nihilistic uh, kind of... Uh, I don't know enough about film, uh, the history of film to, does, to assign like a, a genre or movement to the aesthetic of two men beating each other to death in the woods um, with lots of implicit sexual tension. That's probably a genre. I'm picturing like the end of Stalker, you know, where they're just like dripping wet and like strangling each other or something. I, I think that happens in Stalker and it's just like pathetic <laughs> and desperate. That's what I want. I didn't really enjoy my life before college. Everything was familiar and none of it was me. But there's college, right? That's what it's all building up to. That's what you and I would dream of together about on those late nights. Lightning flashed and lightning flash and thunder shook the entire structure. College is the magical place where you get to choose your own person, choose to be your own person. I'll give you one guess what happened at college. I had finally calmed down. He was prompting me again. What could I say to keep from escalating the situation? You got a job where you can finally leave this stupid town behind? Asriel's cold glitter intensified. No. Without capitalizing it even, that's how cold it was. I got through about half a semester. It was unfamiliar, like nothing I'd ever seen before, but I got the ropes quickly enough. Asriel let it an eerie chuckle. Funny thing is, if I'd never met them, I probably wouldn't have I probably would have made it through college just fine. It would have been scary, but I would have done it. As he was shaking. I made a friend. The first real friend I've ever had, other than you. The name was Alec, and there were I in invested stability in them. What? Yeah, what? Alec? That's an original character, but we already counted the bus driver. It's always- I was so expecting it to be Kira that I'm, I'm caught off guard. Oh, it was supposed to be like- It's- it's like Alex, but not? Alec Yeek, maybe? Is that the- the idea? What well, I invested stability in them. I had nothing to lock onto, nothing made sense, and I found something that could be constant. I convinced myself that as long as they were there, everything was okay. I could keep going. I could see where this was going. And then one day they left me a note. I ran to the spot by the road where I knew they always hid when no one else was around. And I found a corpse on the pavement sitting under a bloody indented front of a bus. What the fuck? What is this turn? The, the bus... The, the the bus trauma came back around. It came back. It was a it was the bus. It was the bus. It was the most important element of the fic. The bus. I I can't stop saying it. Uh, pizza pants. Are you feeling repressed at the moment? Just saying. Now is the time to point that out. Uh, okay. Alec Yeek. <laughs> Just killed by a bot. That was around the point when I started doing drugs. Uh, no. <laughs> this is like... <laughs> this is gonna piss someone off, probably. This is what it feels like going from uh, Act 1 to Act 6 of Homestuck within like uh, 20 pages. It's like the, the sh stupid shit posts from like 8,000 pages ago that are now brought back and being interrogated in a highly dramatic lens. 
like a, just a completely grim, dead serious interrogation of like some shit post from the first chapter that you'd forgotten about. It's amazing. <laughs> this is what it feels like. It's so compressed though. It's like this happened like an hour ago. <laughs> it's come back. I hate it when the foreshadowing hits you like a bus. <laughs> Alec Yeek, Alex Yeek's twin brother. So this can all be canon to other fan fictions containing Alex Yeek. Um, I think Asriel mentioned randomly that they were non-binary. So we have like NB Alex Yeek is just in the story now. Standing in for Kara, I think. It's kind of the same role that Kara was playing in Rosa Raid's fic. Uh, like their their old fic that is the um that was Roserade right the one where they had to go and like uh go to back to Asriel's dorm because like Kara was in some sort of crisis. Wait, what? Okay, ch chat member, I saw your comment on Ludomancer's Undertale Deltarune video. Is that partially the reason you no longer make Undertale Deltarune videos? I, I don't no longer make them. I, the reason I haven't made one in a long time is because I've been working on an indie game. I've, I've had to take a hiatus from actually making videos mostly, but I do plan to have another one sometime in the spring though, so... There's, I've never officially stopped making them. <laughs> it's just that I haven't been able to for quite some time now. Because I'm apparently a full-time game developer. Yeah, that was Roses. Um. Oh boy. The stream gave me some weird ass dreams. I'm having some weird ass dreams right now. Yeah, that's true. I also can't make a new video until someone's found the peepus in the last one. I saw people... There's like a new push for it in the thread. The the peepus easter egg still has not been found in the gaster video, but there, there's renewed interest, and I think they might finally maybe be getting somewhere. I can't like give it away, but like... It's just like the amount of interest and like the... They're, they're being a little bit more systematic about it now. I don't know. I got a good feeling, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not confident still that they'll get it. I made it so hard to find. I guess it feels random though. Like, people have considered so many other angles that would be way more complex than what I've actually done at this point. It's like, if any of those I'd thought of, they would have gotten it. But it's like, they have a blind spot for the one thing that I've done. And there's just like, if you skip by it and you don't think of that one particular angle, then like, you can't anticipate like what people are going to think of. That's That's the difficulty of it. You think Sham could crack it? Well, proof's in the Peepus. What will happen if the Peepus is never found? Nothing. It'll just never be found. It's not a hard question. This is how it feels to be Toby Fox. Probably. It's like a good em exercise in empathy. I can't wait to expand my, um, my empathy with Toby Fox to, like, once I actually start uh, getting publishing builds of RAM with story content and seeing people like misinterpret it in weird ways that, that'll level up my ability to like get in Toby Fox's head and guess what he's thinking right because <laughs> I'll understand all the ways that you can misinterpret someone's meaning so I'll be able to like fully hone in on his intended uh, uh the gist of what he was trying to say that's how it works trust me it's how uh, that's how it's gonna work no it's not one percent opacity for one frame one of the hints I've given for the peepus Easter egg is that it lasts for at minimum 10 seconds consecutively on screen. It's it's present in the video. Just aggressively correct everyone. No more misunderstandings. That's the... Uh, hopefully I don't get to that point. That would be sad. Uh... That was the point when I started to do drugs. Alec had gotten me hooked on alcohol a while back, but I certainly started drinking a lot more when they, when they left. 
I guess I thought it would give me a connection to them. It only made me forget them faster. What do I say? I don't know, pizza pants. I don't fucking know. I don't know what you say. You're you're in a cabin at the end of the world. And your your best friend is trauma dumping on you. Um When everything fell apart, I could probably guess I started skipping you can probably guess I started skipping classes. Anyway, here I am. My friend died and I dropped out of college. I'm bordering on a weed addiction and bordering on alcohol addiction. You can get addicted to weed? I guess I guess you probably can a little bit. My sibling just went on a suicide mission into a closet. It's and not in a metaphorical way, he's literally a, a closet. Uh, my dad is nowhere to be seen, so he was probably killed. Because, oh yeah, the world is ending, and uh, I'm, I'm frankly too lazy to go check. He, he probably died. I, we can just assume that he's dead now. And uh, am I forgetting anything? No, I think that's it. So, yes, Pizza Pants. I, I know what it's like for things to not to be hard for me. It became increasingly apparent to me that the beans were, in fact, not still edible. Suffice to say that I had lost my lunch. I think we made it. I think that's a bingo. Yay! Oh, it's a psychological addiction. Yeah, 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 okay. Andrew, does it hurt that there will never be a game theory based on RAM? Um, no, if, if someone wants to make a, a video on RAM, then anyone, you, you don't have to be MatPat to do that. <laughs> Anyone's allowed to do that if, if, if there's enough lore to theorize about. I don't know if there will be, but yeah. If this were any visual media, the entire top half of his face would be shrouded in shadow. <laughs> Doing the Asgore thing, yeah, yeah. I've seen your dad do that, Azzy. After Pizza Pants experienced expired edibles, the scent hit Asriel, and he similarly experienced them. Uh, well, they're, they're both puking, it's fine. Um, great. When I was done coughing and the burning of my nose started to subside, I spoke up. Bobo buddies. What? what? Bobo buddies? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll be a hobo buddy. This is like a Kim Kitsuragi and a Harry Dubois conversation. <laughs> I gave him one of my signature grins. We both lay down and tried to sleep. The cold doesn't help. Strangely enough, when Azzy scoots closer to me, I don't protest. That's right, this is normal because I'm not gay. Come on, Zap! No one believes you if you say it like that. That makes you sound gay. Whatever, I jumped off to sleep. Sorry, Tails, if it looks like gay to the viewers. That's another bingo. Nice. Of course. Of course, it is a vomit bingo. This was the new future Gaster wanted to create. Uh, this is, like, pretty much not Azzy Pants at all so far. There's been, like, no ship fuel. <laughs> Nothing's happened. <laughs> yeah, now they just kiss for, like, a whole page. What I presumed to be morning had come, and Azriel's chest felt... Who's talking? It's green, which is Azriel, and it's in first person, but it's saying Azriel's name in first uh, third person. <laughs> What the fuck? Asriel's chest felt later than it had in a long time. Wait, did I just use a first person pronoun? Fuck off! Frick it, Asriel decided to stop writing in the third person. Anyway, Zap was still snoring, so I got up and stepped out to explore the surroundings of our camp. The shoes we had left outside the door were unsurprisingly soaked and went squelch. You fucking idiots! Why did you take them off? I'm so pissed off at them. I'm so angry that they took off their shoes and left them to get wet now. I'm so irrationally angry about that. And went squelch every time. Because I hate wet shoes. I legit, I hate them. I have like an, an unnatural sensitivity to wet shoes. It was a, It's a thing, okay? And, and if characters in the story have wet shoes, that pisses me off. Because I have to think about them having wet shoes the whole time. And for no reason, they did this. They did this. But it was probably better than walking barefoot. Probably. But not better than being barefoot in a filthy bunker. 
For whatever reason, the sky darkened. Uh, the darkened sky still casts shadows, so I can see the mottled wavering patchwork of space between the leaves cast upon the forest floor. Hey, I think this is something over there. The wind rustled elegantly through the leaves. Hey, over there. I heard someone calling out, so I came to investigate. It was some human I didn't recognize who was being accompanied by a convenience store guy. A human you don't recognize? Wait, who? It's someone from Asriel's college? Who the fuck is it? Ha! Huh, uh, Asriel! I didn't know you came back from college! Anyway, wh where were you? When, when, uh... With, were you with anyone when you got evacuated? I, uh, Pizza Pants came with me. Good! I can mark him off the list of missing persons then. If we keep up this pace, then we might make a dent in my list by nightfall. Uh, rather, well, you know what I mean. So, so Mayor Kalloween has us all running search parties to find as many survivors and evacuees as we can, and ask them to come to the shelter we've set up outside the dangerous areas. Additionally, we're running a rather short-handed supply, so uh, any help you could provide would be appreciated. Who is this? You once broke a window in my college dorm so I could put my wet shoes on the roof to dry. I... I find it hard to believe that was the optimal solution, but I, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do it. You were drunk? <laughs> okay. Wait, did they say Halloween and I didn't notice? missed that. I was like, oh yeah, Halloween holiday, that's her name. I, I didn't even notice. I was just like, yeah, that's Mayor Holiday, checks out, and my, I moved on. Fuck, that's good. I've internalized that completely as just being her name now. <laughs> yeah, fuck your, your Cupid, fuck your Carol, fuck your Christine. Uh, it's Halloween, okay? It's just Halloween. Would you take the two of us? Absolutely! As long as you have hands to work with, you make the difference. Jockington is just like sitting on the side of the road starving to death because they want to take him in. Doesn't have hands. I thought about it. Here's where you ran off to, I exclaimed. So you woke up. That came off harsher than I meant it to. Who's this? I pretend not to notice Azzy's tone. These people are offering us a job. We don't really have anything to give you in exchange, but we would really appreciate your help. I steeled myself. I'm going. I think I can make a difference and help people. This is my character arc now. Adlib. <laughs> I looked at Zap, hoping he would agree too. What the heck, why not? Uh, I'll come with. Uh, if you don't mind, that is. I do not. Oh, thanks. We appreciate it. The two started walking away, but the skeleton stopped and turned to say something. By the way. Yeah? Yeah. Well, both of your flies have been down this whole time. <laughs> That's a call back to Resurade's fic again? I looked down. He was correct. I looked up again. The search party vanished. I gained a thoughtful expression and looked directly at Pizza Pants. You know, he's right. What? <laughs> what is that ending? This truly was a flies down all along. That is not implied gex. Get the fuck out of here. You, you don't accidentally have gex in a shack and then be reminded because your fly is down. But I don't think that's how it would work personally. I disagree. You must have amnesia. You forgot that we fucked. You forgot that there's Gex. Would that even give another bingo? No. Because Pizza Pants isn't fat enough. He need that dumpy. You, 
I'm sorry, chat. You'll, you'll need to imply the gex harder than that if you want me to cross off the bingo square. That's the end of the fic, by the way. Um, the original ending was a lot longer than this, but it wasn't as good of a story and would amount to two entire chapters of incoherent, bar barely sequential noise exclusively for the sake of finishing off the bingo card. I decided this was better. Cool. Thanks for reading. Wow. Or so I thought. It turns out when I posted my fic on the Discord server, Pidge took such a liking to it. Oh. Oh, did they now? That <laughs> and was so bothered by leaving the card and finish that wrote a 7,000 word extension to it. No fucking way. What do you mean? What do you mean there's a 7,000 word pidge fic that just is in canon of this? What the fuck do you mean? No one's fully in character and it only loosely compile complies with the original writing style. What was the original writing style? The original writing style didn't comply with itself. I think of it like one of the Umrus endings, an optional extra bit for those desperate for more. Here you go. What the fuck is this? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not reading this. No, 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 no. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, they mean the writing style becomes too consistent. It writes rather quickly, apparently. Um, anyway, uh, okay, yeah, we need to do art, because this is like the f stupid, this is going to be an eight-hour Azzy Pant stream, that's ridiculous. That's just silly, oh my god, okay. What now? I have to go through a lot of art for this. It's been compiled, I believe, but there's still going to be a lot. Oh boy. Yeah, here we go. Wait, how old are these messages? No, these are still... Fairly... Okay, this is the most up-to-date. Got it. Okay! Oh, Yasumi, oh, Yasumi, I know that it's hard to do. Oh, yes. Anyway, uh, sorry, got distracted. Um... Okay. Uh, oh, these are gonna open fucking Firefox. Okay, uh, hang on, hang on. That works. The beauty of a monitor share. Uh, yeah, that looks good. All right, so this one is... This one is... Uh, a collage by Soda. It's just a nice collage. Lots of different Azipant doing Azipant things. Wonderful. My friends thought I was weird for watching an Adulterun gay yaoi fanfic stream. And I'm starting to agree. <laughs> gay yaoi, my favorite kind of yaoi. I long for the days when there was just fluffy romance instead of whatever that was. No, it was like this since the start. It was it was always like this. There was Roy's fic immediately, which was fucked up beyond belief. Uh, and then like let that sink in was like a a work of psychological horror. If you read to the end, yeah, it, it's always been like this. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's so much more art. This is just the beginning. Okay. So that's by Soda. Then we got. Oh, we had. This is a draw over of. It keeps opening it in the other tab. Um, it's a draw over of a photo of Vinny and Germa, I believe. Where I think Pizza Pants is Germa and Asriel's Vinny. It's the same poses. It's it's a really weird fucking photo. I don't know if it's if it's photoshopped or not. That's very good. That's, that's by Smash Mania. Oh, and Blue NSL's fic was like weird licking. They were like licking each other in the forest. Um, but it wasn't even that bad compared to Roy's, I'd say. Roy's was like an um, American psycho thing that was built around getting the end to be like the line from Kitchen. It was, it was fucked. I don't even remember what happens in that one. It was weird. 
it's a real photo, the angles makes them look like cardboard, but why are they in front of a fucking dumpster? Why are they standing in front of a dumpster? <laughs> These are Mel's designs, by the way. Or uh, Asriel is, at least. That, that's Mel's Asriel design. Uh, okay. There's so much art. Lava Cake. Uh, has do doodled an Umrizi pants for us. Look at that. Aren't they cute? There's Umi on the left, Lizzie on the right. They're wonderful little blurbos. Uh, another one. Also by Lava Cake. Um... Lizzie's got that, like, fucking Saroba outfit here. Bit of a different take. It doesn't look like it's made of toilet paper quite as much. Very cute, very gay. Yep, 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 yep. Um, okay, a cactus one. Cactus drew this. Uh, Chris, uh, I think I want to kiss Asriel. This is an anomalous, like, Undertale version? Where, where Burger Pants in canon would know Asriel as like a historical figure who died in childhood. And also Chris wouldn't exist. Fascinating to picture the, the context behind this. Really fascinating. The timelines are merging. The very fabric wavers and relations shift and obscure. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Soda posts uh, say pizza to drugs. Oh, this is a good one. Once again by Soda. Say pizza to drugs, say no to yes. This is a parody of um some actual Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles poster, I think. I don't know why it's like that, but it's excellent. There's your uh, pizza pants foot content for the stream, I guess, if you were if you're looking for that. And Asriel, of course, looks very good in that dress. Uh, and that was uh, a six, and we're on to seven. There's uh, 22 arts to look at. 22. Okay, this is uh, another soda collage, I believe. This is a collage of Asriel's emo phase. <laughs> it's wonderful. You're the only one who gets it. Um, am I? I mean, I am. Or is that also pizza? This is who I am, Mom. He's... He's wearing, like, the... Uh, something about the way he's drawn here just reminds me of fucking, like, the coffin of Andy and Laylee. <laughs> He's got the vibe, right? Uh, he's got like the hyper death eyeliner and shit, but uh, something about it. He's playing ska <laughs> and crying. <laughs> he goes into the bathroom and cries to ska music. What a disaster. And this is, of course, just a rehash of them developing the god of hyper death with Kira, but it's Chris instead now. Uh, you love to see it. <laughs> That's a really good Asriel, though. Like, th this guy here. <laughs> the purple highlight. Fucking sick. I think the song is called Remember to be Patient. Okay, we have Lava Cake, another Lizzie, Lava Cake Lizzie. Not to be confused with the glizzy, it's a lizzy. Just being kind of kawaii, I guess. That is very cute. We're on to a blue NSL Umrizi Pants Pony Kiss. This one sounds promising. Wait, did you animate this? Damn. I didn't realize you made that. 
That's fucking sick. We got we got our brony content. We 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 need to make them ponies. It's the only frontier left, okay? We've made our gay fandom gajinkas and we've made them kiss each other. They need to be horses now too. They need to be horses wearing dresses and shit. And also be gay and kiss. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're going. That's what it's all about. Hell yeah. Okay. Um what now? Soda posts sweatpants. Delicious. This is just a study in weird pizza pants expressions, I guess. Pizza pants doing a frisk cosplay? <laughs> Asriel cosplaying sans? Oh, Jesus Christ. Please tell him to stop doing that. I don't like it. Pizza Pants already kind of has a Sans cosplay going on there. Nice. Okay, halfway through. Oh, we have one of Walter's patented humanifications of Azzy Pants. They keep doing this for uh, Night in the Woods previously. And here we have humanified Azzy Pants. Not, not too far off, I'd guess. I think as long as Pizza Pants has enough zits, you can probably... It's close enough. Asriel's wearing a skirt, just because he feels like it. Why not? We've circled back to humans now. <laughs> uh, who... What What other personified fandom ships exist that we could ship Umrizi Pants? girls with like i know there's definitely others but like how far afield do we have to go to find one of those are they from hetalia or some shit like what are we working with at that point you were cooking about a ram one a, a ram gajinka oh dear all right well i'll i'll, I'll wait to see what, what comes of that uh, Blue NSL. This is Umrissa in Crisis. That was Walter. This is Blue, Blue NSL. <laughs> this is after being called cringe by Lizzie or something, I assume. Oh, here's the next one. Uh, this I love this one, personally. This is by Sleepy Fox. Check the fuck out of this. Boom. <laughs> Now that's Azzy Pants, holy shit. Yeah, it's uh, Sloopy Fox posts occasionally, but when they do, it's always very impressive, I think. Uh, those two got a bit of sugar in the tank, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pizza Pants appears to be wearing like a fucking wedding gown or something. Sure. But, uh, yeah, damn. That one's spicy. That one's sensual. As he has, like, a, a Horton Hears a Who-ass Muppet hand. Like a Grinch hand. Kinda love that, actually. Uh... Oh, and we- and then now we have 10 million Azzy Pants cross stitches, because, of course, of course we do. These are by Ness, aka, th th uh, uh, yeah, Thunder Cat called Thunder Seven. They're in chat somewhere. Um, there you are. Okay. Asriel cross stitch. Gotta have it. Pizza pants cross stitch. Gotta have it. Uh. God of Hyperdeath, uh, hashtag size difference and pizza, <laughs> pizza pants cross stitch. <laughs> because, of course, the, uh, the, you know, the, the Hyperdeath one probably wasn't originally Azzy Pants, but with the context of the pizza pants uh, cross stitch, it becomes Azzy Pants and can be reused for stream art. You love to see it. Uh, okay, here is, um, 
John Mulligan, uh, a, a newer server member, has a an Umi. I mean, it's pretty funny that there's this huge gap of importance between them. It's kind of like if you shipped Anakin Skywalker and, like, Admiral Akbar or something, people usually keep in the same weight class, you know? What is this quote from? I don't recognize it. Yeah, okay. John Mulligan, I, I said their name. Okay. We have uh, another Walter one. This is just a Lizzie. It doesn't have to be humanified because Lizzie is human. I, I like that Lizzie a lot, actually. They look like a... kind of bedraggled and slightly pathetic in a way that the other art doesn't often capture. It's, <laughs> they, they look like they stayed up all night writing fan fiction, which they do every night, and put on the same clothes that they wore yesterday. It's a joke specifically for Regan. Oh, okay. Chat likes seeing adult Asriel interpretations and where they lie on the bear to twink spectrum. I know, there's a... I'm not going to bring up the Megas XLR pick again. I'm not doing it, chat. But yeah, there's like two classes. You either have like God of Hyperdeath looking boy band Asriel or it's like Asgore 2. I love this. <laughs> Those are the two, the two you can choose from. I skipped a lot. Well, I'm going. I may have skipped a lot in the. These last few, I've just been scrolling down. They're all like all uh, chronologically consecutive in the chat. But I'll go back down to the master list, in a second. Don't worry. Uh, cactus posts bite of Azzy pants. Oh fuck me! Yeah, that's. <laughs> Is that the bite of eighty seven? Uh, no, it's the bite of 20x10. It's the nip of the 90s. Th this is, um, I'll remind everyone, well, not, not Braddy. Well, no, actually, no, yeah, Braddy, it is still LTSI canon. It's LTSI canon on two different levels, disturbingly. Uh, it's best not to think about it. Yeah, why does this shirt just say ass? <laughs> just says ass. That's probably some deep FNAF reference that I don't get. That happened on my first date. That also happened on my first date, Sag. Foxy ass! Foxy ass! As he seems content, that is unfortunately also LTSI canon. Uh, if you know, you know. Um, the Bapple Boy posts an Umrizi Pants Valentine. This was the author of that last fic, by the way. This is the this is the mind we're dealing with. You're gross and I'm shitty, but I'm gay and you're pretty. So if you'd ever be so kind to be my umris Valentine. Exactly. <clears throat> this is the shit that should be carved into like a, a a cave in the Mojave Desert and left for historians to make sense of in a thousand years. It would be a great cave painting. Beautiful. Lizzie's expression. <laughs> it's okay. It's not having a face, but frowning anyway. Happy Valentine's Day, you queers, says chat. Very true. It's not Valentine's Day yet, but you know. In principle. Uh, Della post as he pant ship art. Uh, here we go. Shalorp. Oh my god. I th I've seen this before. Yeah, this pizza pants fucks me up. He looks like a totem pole. He looks like a Simpsons character who got like a... Like a facelift went wrong. He's amazing. It's, it's such a good pizza. <laughs> it's like a 3D render of a pizza pants that you rotated. And he's so three-dimensional. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> his head is like a cylinder. That's fucked up. Beautiful. Asriel's looking kinda... I don't know, he's got like a... Is that a mullet? I don't know, he's got some sort of hair. Interesting. <laughs> Pizza. I can't look at him without cracking up. Like he's, he's fucked up looking. He looks like Long Noel. That's what it's reminding me of. You all remember Long Noel? 
chance of gaster increases with longer Noel face. That's what he looks like. Yeah, he, he couldn't swallow a large rat. He could unhinge his head 90 degrees back like a toilet and just drop a rat down his throat. What a guy. Easily one of the best DR memes ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're getting near to the end. 18. Oh, no, wait, there's more than 22. Because the cross stitch were grouped together. And the next four are grouped together as one entry. These are Valentine's Day cards. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember seeing these earlier. You are the pizza pants to my Asriel. <laughs> Keep these out at your, like, middle school class and get bullied for the rest of your life, I dare you. I dare someone. It'd be a funny, funny idea. Y you can be old enough to use Discord and still a middle schooler, right? I'm pretty sure you can, yeah. Someone can do that. Or maybe that's just an elementary school thing. I can't fucking remember. That used- that was, like, a thing and when you're young enough. Y'all just, like, habitually give everyone in the class a Valentine's Day card. It's like- it's like a- an obligation. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the trauma with the- you gave the kid a Star Wars card and they're like, why do you like Star Wars so much? <laughs> yeah, experience that same trauma that Regan felt, but with Azzy pants, so much, much worse. Let me tell you about Umrith with Riz. <laughs> she was like drooling. God, these are funny. Um, there's two more of these. I'd let you throw up on me. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that Azriel's slogan now? Why, it's been, <laughs> since when was that even an Azzy Pants thing? Throwing up on each other. That was a new Brizzy Pants thing. Azriel threw up and let that sink in. It wasn't Burger Pants. If that's what you're into, Azzy, fuck it. Nothing I can do about that. Uh... <laughs> I didn't see this one! Let's take ibuprofen together. <laughs> it's not even a Valentine's Day card. That's just an invitation to take prescription drugs. You want to take 40 Benadryls? Yeah, that's about right. G great. Cool. Let's take ibuprofen. What would that even do? That's just like a, a, a lightweight painkiller, isn't it? That'll cure your headache. What happens if you overdose on ibuprofen? Why are you doing that, Burger Pants? Doesn't that just, like, damage your liver? And not get you high? It, th that's just a suicide pact, Burger Pants. I don't think you're offering to get high, you just want to kill yourself. Cool, that's a cool a a Valentine's card, though. Very topical. Um, using this, but very obviously taping over it with Molly. What, you mean the Delta Dune theorist, Molly Stars? You mean that, right? Um, there's still more. Rose also does the card. Oh, this one's great. <laughs> I saw this this morning. Your dark eyes remind me of the dark abyss of inherent depravity lodged in my soul. Whenever I look into them, I'm reminded of how much of a detestable creature I am. How I am a martyred sacrifice for the civilized society. My charred soul prated around society to remind everyone of the price that is paid by my unique brilliance and ambition, of my talents and taste. Still this feeling, chilling reflection within your visage does not deter me. In fact, it pulls me deeper, like an addiction, a vice, which, which I have many. I am a crucible built out of sin and depravity, scum, a writhing maggot between the heel of society's mocking gaze. We are alike in that way, two freaks destined for revilement and abandonment. For us, I see two options, to either flail helplessly against the tide of destiny and civility, attempt to climb the waterfall of this corrupt world and try to carve out an ill-fitting place amongst the sheep that kick us down to the canyon of filth, or to stand together, stand as monuments to sin, but stand tall despite it. We must embrace passionately, not out of obligation to the systems that kick us down, but in defiance of them. Sorry, I trailed off. What I wanted to say is that, uh, you make me want to kill you and then myself. Nice. Nice. What's scarier? Do you want to overdose on ibuprofen? Or whatever the fuck this is. 
She moves a pixel to the left, too. She's encroaching. That's scary. Oh, boy. Thank you, Roserade. Thank you. Okay, now we're getting into stuff made after the stream started. Uh, this is... Oh, wait. I saw this already, actually. And that was Walter's um, Lizzie. And Lilac Weathers. Not sure where to post this, so it goes here. Oh, my God. You're going to... End off the art by making me read the fucking Rick and Morty copy pasta in the birdie voice. All right, let's go. To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand Umrith. The humor is extremely subtle, and without a solid grasp of theoretical physics, most of the jokes will go over the typical viewer's head. There's also Birdie's nihilistic outlook, which is definitely woven into his characterization. His personal philosophy draws heavily from Nardania, Voltaire literature, for instance. The fans understand this stuff. They have the intellectual capacity to truly appreciate the depths of these jokes. They realize they are not just funny, they say something deep about life. As a consequence, people who dislike Umris truly are idiots. They of course, of course they wouldn't appreciate, for instance, the humor in there is existential catchphrase. Beautiful. How long until I notice? Notice what? This is just the appetizer of the art? Oh wait, the rest is in arts and crafts? Wait, no one linked this one. There's a new one here. Wait, there's probably more art after this too. Uh, wait, this one's awesome though. This is by Cedar Spring 147. Check this out. It's a sick ass collage. Burger Pants is blank space. Uh, it's it's aw. It's, it's, I'm flashbang. There's, there's too much. Uh, it, was a, it was a breakdancing beetle <laughs> smoking a dart. Fucking hell yeah. This is footage of the author, the, the artist melting. Very cool. I'm sorry that you're made of uh, dough and that you melt under high heat. That's unfortunate. Um, this the, Yeah, this is the Pocky scene, but instead they're like slurping on a piece of pizza like absolute degenerate. What a dream boat. <laughs> pizza Pants could make this face if he wanted to. You know he could. I've seen his cheekbones change places before. The beetle's down here. It's, it's... And, uh... Is that a bouquet of golden flowers, Azzy? How fucking on the nose can you get? Oh, and he has the tattoos as well. Or whatever the fucking tattoo is on fur. He's like, he dyes it. I think this is a unique Azriel design. Or at least a somewhat unique Azriel design. It's, it's, it's nice. I like it. A beautiful Cedar Spring. Okay, now I look in arts and crafts, because apparently there's more of this shit. Uh, I, okay, no, that's, uh, that's Hollow Knight, that's Sonic the Hedgehog, that is Pizza Tower. Um, where does the stream art start? No, I've seen that, I've seen that. This was the, um, the Tomota edit from that. The first fic, I believe. <laughs> the, no, the second one, actually. Nah, it went. Very good. Uh, Izzy meets Lizzie by Doc. Yo. Oh yeah, this is Izzy and Lizzie. It was hypothesis. Th this is uh, the Izzy. Izzy Pendleton, the protagonist of ACDS stuck. And and Lizzie, whatever the fuck her name is. Um, I believe this is some guy named Weird. Like his name is Weird. That's a weird name. Beautiful. Lizzie is canonically in trickster mode in this photograph. Fuck off. Um, this is stream art, apparently. Yeah, good work. We finally finished cleaning that vomit. Only took about one month. Well, at least we won't have, uh, we won't have to clean anymore. Uh-oh. She was very, very wrong. Yeah, this was a callback. I think the last stream had a fic where the batter and sands were like cleaning something. They were janitors. And of course, um, there was a lot of vomit last stream too. Weird Umris Al Yankovic. Or Vic. Or Yank Yankovic. Or uh, something like that. Outsin came in clutch. Alright, what we got? What even is happening here? Oh, this is... 
uh, as he goes to a bar once, gets hammered, is convinced to catfish his best friend on Grinder. That's what you can expect if you go to the campus bar, basically. <laughs> what a, uh, all of Outsin's designs, I, I'm sure it's it's intentional partially. They look like middle-aged people. They're they're all just like kind of haggard. They look like th they should be on fucking red letter media. <laughs> What is this pizza pants, by the way? Why does he look like that? Holy shit. Oh, this was the photo we got while, while uh, fucking drunk texting. <laughs> pizza pants on Grinder. was... <laughs> Damn. It's not much of a gun show, but... He's not bad. He looks like Front Row Joe. He looks like the Cheshire Cat. He sure is wearing pizza pants. We have an illustration of Umi and Lizzie really awkwardly meeting in the university library. They both look 57 years old. I, I thought this was like at a retirement home at first. They have like grandma energy. Maybe it's just Lizzie's uh, frilly collar here. Like they have massive grandma energy though. They, they look like Miss Frizzle. Perfect. Oh yeah, it does kind of look like Rugrats. You're not even wrong. It's kind of Rugrats-y. I never made that connection. An Oats and Tomota. Beautiful. Missing the blunt though, and uh, this is uh, Asgore's college years when, yeah, he wore like that, the flower crown and like his feet are bare right now, but they had to be censored out of the, out of the photograph. I could picture it. And his beard would have been like even longer. I know the aesthetic. I, I, some of my grandparents were, were big hippies back in the day. There's some old photos <laughs> of them wearing like these weird kind of like robe things. <laughs> it's unclear what they're supposed to be. They're like moo moos or something. All lesbians look like Miss Frizzle, according to chat. All right. What the frizz? No way! Something on a sound wave! Etc. Um, okay, Skeletal Bozo has just a a clusterfuck of pizza pants faces. You love to see it. This is like um the, the pizza pants help tail fight. This is what it's gonna look like. Th this is the IT version of pizza pants. That is okay. That's not stream. Uh, yo. Strangely hot Umi. My hey pigeon. That in, in their own words, this is like a damn. That that's some kind of aesthetic. She's pulling off some kind of look there with the, the pixelated birdly tattoo, and it kind of looks like she's crying, but it's just cigarette smoke and the bags under her eyes. Beautiful. Hey pigeon. I, I don't recognize that artist before. Uh, She looks like a uh, shell from Portal, a little bit. Maybe I, not not that much. I don't know. Huh? Oh, it's the first thing you've posted. Well, it's nice. That's the the second pigeon themed user of ACDS. Please, nobody fix her. Is the first reply in the Discord server. <laughs> I can fix her. Uh, what the fuck is this? This is DJ Narwhal has drawn art of Tomota and that is Sweet Bro, I believe. No, that's Hella Jeff. I always get them mixed up. Hella Jeff and wait, no, they're it's Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff, but they've been reskinned. Just look at it. Fuck it. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Okay, how do we do this? Let's do this thing. I forgot that the whole time Pizza Pants is wearing a Zelda shirt and cargo pants. Wait, what is the... <laughs> is this like a- is this like a joke where you- it's like, look, the color palette's a pride flag, but it's just pointing at nothing and makes no sense. <laughs> it's kind of- <laughs> kind of a good gag, I guess. What are you looking at? Uh, come on. It's the best part of Homestuck. This is high class. <clears throat> We're making this happen!
Or is it just referencing the sexuality of sweet bl uh, hella pizza Jeff's foot? It's it's pizza Jeff's foot specifically is uh, is is, a, is a, a bisexual I think, and like a uh, sweet Tomota's um, elbow is 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 gay. That that's how it works. Straight and gay elbow. Uh, I've spent too long analyzing this. Moving on. Dio Burando. Oh, it's a, it's a brand Dio Brando. You get it with with brands. <laughs> That's by, by Asterism. Bye bye, Jojo. It's not Goku. It's Dio. Oh my God. Check out this Umi by Horchata. Right, there's no polite way of saying that name. Horchata. Damn. That that's a a hell of a stylish Umi. That's got charisma. She almost looks like she has her life together a little bit. She's really projecting some intense aura right now. She looks like an Evangelion character. Fucking sick. Uh, let's check the first... Oh, this was fan art. I missed it. Oops. The two hot umis should kiss. Y you shipping it, yeah. This is the new- we have like fandom gajinka self-cest now. Is it time to stop? Is there a point when it, you acknowledge that it's time to stop, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but also this. One more thing. Shady Oak. What is this? Noel, you must exit the frame. I must add this to my cringe compilation. What is even happening here? There's someone dancing a story of Undertale, and... Oh! Oh, I, I didn't know what's happening! This is the very beginning! This is, um, this is like Caddy twerking, the story of Undertale, and, uh, at, uh Toriel's Naruto running in with, um, the, the death kanji from Sekiro that Sekiro invented, the symbol that Sekiro invented that means death. It means she's about to execute a perilous attack, either a sweeping or thrust attack, or perhaps a suplex onto Caddy. Excellent. High concept, but I eventually got the joke. Whew. Okay, fuck me. This was an eight hour long live stream. Eight and a- it's like eight or is twenty. It took forty minutes to do the art. This is fucked up. Oh, I need to sleep or something. I need to fall over. Uh... I'm gonna be so tired after this. I can already tell. Like once the adrenaline wears off, I'm just gonna fall over. Oh my god. Yeah. So that's the end of Azzy Pants for a little while now. It may one day return, but um, I'm sorry to any fix that didn't make it in this time. But I, it's always been a, a restriction. I can only read so much. I I can only have so much stamina, <laughs> and there's only so much time to do Azzy Pants with. Um, So, for now, we're gonna have to call it. Thank you to everyone who contributed. Azzy Pants remains stronger than fucking ever on the server. It's crazy at this point to think. It's really just not going anywhere. Uh, and I hope you all enjoyed. I'll be back next week with something. Something. I'll figure it out. And, uh, yeah. See you later.